lead attorney here. Hope you guys are doing well, man. Listen. Oh my God. Oh, struggle streaming already. How are y'all doing? Man, y'all know. Can y'all hear me? Do I got my sound good? Let me check now. Let me do a sound check. I think I'm good. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Guys, listen. Y'all know who we talking about today. Y'all know who we are talking about today. Chinga, Mina no mas. Oh, you know who we are talking about today. One, Fanny Willis. And one, Nathan Wade. And they are fighting, guys. They are fighting for their future, fighting for their careers, fighting for their jobs. This woman in particular is fighting for her job. Nathan already got $700,000. He, you know, he 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 dicked her down and got seven hundred thousand dollars. I mean, he's he's kind of good. Somebody write Nathan in the damn chat. He's kind of. I don't really care either way. <laughs> he already got the sex. We saw that from the 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 cell phone towers, all that data over there thirty five times. Oh my God, what were you doing there? At 12.38 in the morning. What were you doing over there at 3.30 in La Madrugada? What were you doing there? It's like Kwame Brown. What were you doing there, Stephen A. Smith, at them schools? What were you doing at them schools, Stephen A. Smith? What were you doing at the high schools? <laughs> oh, man. And so uh, it is going down today. Now, this woman right here, Fannie Willis, has presented new evidence, new motions, fighting for her life, fighting not to be disqualified. She doesn't want to be disqued, DQ'd. And our man, Nathan Way, now he already hit and he got $700,000, but you know, Shout out to Nathan. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to keep milking. Just keep, keep milking her. All right. Shout out to Fanny. We, 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 we milking her, right? 52 year old udders. We're, we're milking them. That's, that's really what Nathan's been doing. He, he's not had to put a ring on it. He's not had to marry her. She, he's already married. <laughs> He's a baby. I would like to marry. I, I'll file a divorce. How long has your divorce been pending? Two, three years. This man ain't trying to get married. He ain't trying to get divorced. Listen, ladies, and I will tell you if you don't know who I am, mucho gusto. I am the lead attorney, a 20 year attorney right down the street from Nathan Wade, right down the street from Fanny Willis. Nathan Wade, Fanny Willis, that's her name, right? I'm right here. I've been doing all these types of work, all these cases down here in Atlanta, Fulton County. I've done all types of law, but my specialty is divorce law. I know all about marriages and all about divorces. If you are dating a man and he's telling you that he's trying to get divorced, but he's an attorney, and his divorce has taken three years, and there's no movement on it at all. Mm -mm -mm. You just giving up the ass. That's all you're doing. He's ne this man is never gonna get divorced. <laughs> he doesn't care. Why would he get divorced and marry Fanny? He's getting the seven hundred thousand dollars for free. Now let me stop it right here. Let me stop it right here, man. <laughs> We got my co-host doing double duty. Shout out to AV to the seventh power. Where you at? Bam! Oh my God. God. 
I was like, where is she? You know, you can't keep track of these damn light skins. Boy, these light skins, they tell you they're coming over and, you know, they over Tony House. You don't know where they at. And in my head, I was like, where is she? I ain't sent her the link. I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me go on and send AV to the seventh power of the league. Uh, uh, <laughs> black people. All right. Uh, I'm going to post it right here, guys. This is only for, uh, this is only for AV. Uh, only for AV. I'm going to post it in here so she can hit the link and come on up, take her rightful position. So, and, and man, she done gifted 50 subs. I better see 50. Thank you, AV, to the seventh power. I know that much. And I doubt that I will see it because y'all got my likes all messed up. My likes need to be in accordance with the participants in the chat. I need to maintain a 50% ratio. I got 4,000 participants in the chat. What's a 50% ratio? I need 2,000 likes. Y'all got me at 1,000. See, y'all playing with a black man. <laughs> Why you got to mention you're black? You're playing the race card. Listen, do you, you see who we talking about, all right? You see who we talking about. We playing that race card. <laughs> Oh, my God. So until y'all get my likes in accordance with the, uh, <laughs> until y'all get my likes in accordance with the, what do you call it? With the, uh, with the participants in the chat, I am going to give uh, everyone who gave, everyone who received AV's special Mm, gifts to flex their power a little bit. See, if you a member, membership has privileges. All right. And you are not locked out of the chat. And so much of that is because of AV to the seventh power. So shout out to AV to the seventh power. Man, somebody put AV in the damn chat. Now, y'all been, y'all hit me up. Y'all like, oh, lead. We, we bless you, but what about AV? We want to bless AV too. First of all, let me do this. Let me give a, hold on, let me give a big shout out to the past sponsors of the stream. Now, this has been going on a whole series. So I got to shout out my man, Thane. Thane has been the series sponsor. But look at Shane Lopez. Me and I, Shane. My man blessed, blessed the whole community. He was the stream sponsor last stream. I always say, guys, the stream sponsor is the person who gives the biggest super chats. How much did she give? How much did Shane give? 1250 dollars God, I, I gotta. Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much, Shane. Somebody write Shane and Thane in the damn house, man. Shane and Thane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shane and Thane. All right. Thank you so much. And look who we got here in the back. Look who we got here in the back. We got the queen. We got the AV. Oh, oh my. Is it Pantene? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, my God. Now, let me, um, it is so wild to have my stream sponsor be my co-host. I had to get your attention. I'm like, I, is there a link coming? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. And you sent me the day, Steve, shout out. Like, you know, I'm Russian. Just came back from Publix. I got them 12 Mardi Gras rings. Who know about the Mardi Gras wings? Oh, my God. And they're, they're not fried either. Shit, in my situation, I could probably eat fried food, no problem. But they're, they're, they're baked. And they got the little basil and whatever herbs they put on them. <laughs> Are my lips still greasy? <laughs> oh, my God. There's too many white people to chat to be joking like this. But those Mardi Gras chicken wings are good as hell. All right. Let me put uh, AV to the seventh power. And while I'm putting you as a stream sponsor, let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah, you guys can find me here on YouTube at AV to the seventh power. You can also find me at AV7Official on Instagram. There you go. And everybody has been asking for her cash app. So I'm going to put that 
in the banner below. <laughs> Y'all been blessing, been blessing AV as she has blessed us all the time on, <laughs> excuse me, on this channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what are we talking about today, guys? What are we reviewing? And thank you to everybody in the back. But again, this is only for uh, AV right now. Me and AV are going to get into it. So shout out to everybody in the back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to y'all, man. Really appreciate y'all coming up. And please come up uh, once we drop the link. Um, What are we talking about today? We're talking about these people right here. Now, they are fighting for their lives. Fighting for their lives. You got your girl Fanny over here right down the street. And you got Nathan. Now, Fanny, it has come out. Two people have come out today to run against her in the elections. They're trying to knock her off. Uh, one is a, I believe, is a woman, and she's coming at Fannie. And another one is a man, a man who had uh, ran against Fannie previously for uh, a Superior Court judge. Y'all know Nathan is a Superior Court judge. Let me explain to you how it happens in Atlanta down here. You got superior court judges. They're the highest, pretty much on the state level. Highest superior court judges. Judge McAfee, you the, the judge who's presiding over all this shenanigans, he is a superior court judge. So he's the highest kind of on the state level. You got the Supreme Court, of course, but on the state level for trial judges, he's the highest. Superior court. Then you got state court. Then you got juvenile court then you got probate court then at the bottom you've got municipal court now nathan is a municipal court judge he was at the bottom he's at the bottom but he was trying to get to the top so nathan ran multiple times to get the superior court judgeship he couldn't get it Fanny as well, she ran for a Superior Court judge. Fanny wanted the position of the judge in this case. Fanny wanted his job. So she also ran for a Superior Court judge, didn't get it. Those are elected positions you got to fight. It's hard to get them. Because once you got them, I mean, you can stay in there for a long time. And a lot of people think it's easy money. I do not think it's easy money. Who thinks that this judge has an easy job? I would never want this judge's job. But at any rate, one of the people that is coming for uh, Fanny ran against her, I believe, in that for, for, for judgeship, and then supported also Paul Howard, who was trying to be the DA. At any rate, this is what we are talking about today, guys. And there's been some new filings in the case, new filings yesterday and new filings today. So we are going to go over, oh, camera went, uh, went out of focus. So we are going to go over what these new filings are. We're going to break them all down to you. Let me see if we can get the first one queued up right here. Uh, where are we at? Yeah, there's a few that have come out. There's a lot yeah. to catch up on. There is, guys. This is uh, breaking news here. So first, we got <laughs> in the Superior Court. Mm, I don't like this view. Hold up. Let me put up another view. Let me change it right quick because I, I need y'all to see my little highlighter. Bam. All right. What do we got in the Superior Court of Fulton County, state of Georgia? Guys, this is where I was born and raised. I practiced here my entire life. All right. You guys are in the right place. State of Georgia, a.k.a. Fannie Willis, a.k.a. Nathan Wade versus Donald J. Trump. All right. Somebody write Trump in the dang chat. Somebody write Trump in the chat. All right. We got Donald Trump in the house. <laughs> uh, so this is what we're talking about, guys. And we are going to go all over it. What is this? And this was filed on the 5th. What's today? Today is the 8th. Today's the eighth. Okay, so this was not. Um, this is this has not been filed a long time, and we are going to jump all in it. What does it say now? The state supplemental brief 
following a hearing on March 1st concerning the standard of proof and legal standard for disqualification of an elected district attorney. What does this mean? It means that, hey, man, we want to give you some help, Judge. You've already closed the evidence. But now Donald Trump's team and all these indictees, they're submitting more evidence. They're submitting more affidavits, more witnesses. Fine. Well, we're not just going to stand here and let them submit everything. We're going to submit some stuff ourselves. And we are going to explain to you how you should view this case. And so that's what they are going to do right here. So let's jump right into it man we got some we got some we got a lot of trump people in the house a lot of non-trumpers in the house uh shout out to uh renee renee says never trumper shout out to america in danger says trump maga 2024 shout out to my man cng says fuck donald trump god damn wow (laughs) my man little gaming channel said i will not write donald trump (laughs) (laughs) And and speaking of speaking of the little gaming channel, man, let me show our brother some respect right here. Bam! There we go. What does the little gaming channel say? Thank you so much, little gaming channel. <laughs> God. He says, "Why buy the cow? Why pay for the cow when you can get the milk for free, ladies?" This is what they used to tell y'all in the 50s and the 60s. You got to marry these men now. Or sometimes they'll just, they'll just milk you. That's what that's what AV and, and, and the lead are doing to Fanny. AV's got one udder. I got the other. And we're just taking turns. All right. Is that how you? That's a big udder. <laughs> I mean, like, oh. we talk about double E's over here. So I'm just getting prepared. All right, prepare for the double D's, the udders, double D. This is what we're doing. And this is what my man, little gaming channel is saying, man. Come on. Nathan was really running it up. He was running up the score on this black woman, on, on Fanny, on Fanny Willis. He was getting serviced. We'll mm-hmm. say it like that. Mm-hmm. And he was also getting hundreds of thousands of dollars and all he had to do is take her on a cruise and then on top of that supposedly she paid him back she i mean in cash (laughs) in cash Mm -hmm. how is that not a win i mean nate the way he's high value to me he killing the game he's trying to be like the little gaming channel y'all know the little gaming channel High value man out there in California. Excellent content creator. Excellent man. Uh, if one of the mods could drop the link to my man's channel in the chat. Little Gaming Channel. I am subscribed to him. Uh, awesome content creator. Y'all go check him out and subscribe to you, boy. He has been so instrumental in the success of this channel. Not only has he sponsored entire streams, he has sponsored entire series, guys. Whole series. And every now and then he'll hit the link and come up and bless us. So thank you so much, Little Gaming Channel. Somebody write TLGC in the dang chat. TLGC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what do we got going on? Thank you so much, Little Gaming Channel. I'm going to read all the super chats, but when someone blessed me like AV, someone blessed me like the Little Gaming Channel, I like to jump right back into the content, right? So what do we got here? Let's take a look. Let's take a gander. All right. So the state is saying, hey, 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 judge, everybody else is submitting things to you. We want to submit something to you as well. So what is what does Fanny say? She says, wait a minute now. At the March 1st hearing concerning defendant's motion to disqualify me, the court posed several questions to the parties concerning the standard of proof required for the disqualification and the legal standard to be applied by the court. Now, now this is what this all means. So it's important. It's important to understand what the legal, what the, what the standard of proof is. You know, do you remember uh, what standard of proof is or how to define it back from your law school days, Amy? Yeah. yeah. And there's like different levels of it. There's like beyond a reasonable doubt. There's preponderance of the evidence of 
the um, preponderance of, oh my God, I'm having a brain fart right now. Yeah, preponderance of the evidence. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of like, this is an interesting filing from Fanny because this should have been probably filed at the beginning. I think it's mm. interesting that it's coming out now, but it's kind of like, hey, the evidentiary standard that is required, I guarantee you, and I haven't read this yet, that she's going to say that it hasn't been met. Mm. And they're putting it in front of the judge right now as he's going through a murder, tri murder trial trying to think about how this is going to play out. So oh, it's interesting timing. Yes. So the the standard of proof, guys, really, okay, guys, here's the thing. You're sitting in a in a trial, like the judge, just like A.V. said, the judge is in a murder trial. And so you're on the jury. You are a juror. You are tasked with the obligation to decide if something is true or not true. So that's the whole point. When you hear standard of proof, just think, is it true or not true? You have to make a decision. Now, what guide are you going to use to make a decision if, if something is true? You can say, well, if something is 50, if, if, I, if I'm on the fence, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think maybe 51% is probably true. Then in a lot of cases, that's all you need. It's true. If you think something is 51% true, then that truth has been established. Now, that's what's called the preponderance of the evidence. It's just a little more likely than not that it's true. You haven't seen any hardcore evidence. You haven't seen any videotapes. You haven't seen any fingerprints. You haven't seen any DNA. But you just think based on your experience, your life, uh, listening to all the witnesses, that's probably true. Fine. That's enough. But civil cases are kind of like, there's, there's other ones, but this is a pretty low standard, something if something is 51%, mm -hmm. right? Um, what's another level? Clear and convincing evidence. Right. Now, if something is clear and convincing evidence, that's more than 50%, 51%. Maybe that's 75%. You got to know more. Like, eh, I might need to see a photograph. I, I might not need to see a video. I might not need to see DNA. But I need I need something. It can't just be I'm listening to everybody. So that's clear and convincing. And then you have the highest standard of proof here in Georgia, really all across the nation. These are in, in criminal cases. This is beyond a reasonable doubt. So you can't really have any reasonable doubts as to whether it's something are true or not. If you're saying it's true, then you must have been shown something or many things very, very strong to, to kind of know in your heart that it's true. Now, it doesn't have to be an absolute truth, but you got to know. It's like, hey, man, I've seen the DNA. I've seen the videotapes. I've seen the fingerprints. I'm, I'm, I'm certain beyond a reasonable doubt. Not an absolute certainty, but beyond a reasonable doubt. And so, guys, this is what this whole thing is about. The court, the judge wanted to know, well, shit, you know, I have to decide, excuse me, also I'm trying not, I'm trying to stop cursing, <laughs> but I've been trying for two years. Um, the court, is, the judge, the whole, the whole case is, dang, man, what should the standard of proof be? What should I, as the judge, use to decide if there's a conflict or not? If there's an actual conflict, if there is a appearance of a conflict, Let's say I'm trying to decide if there's a conflict or not. And I've heard evidence. We heard um, Yardy. She spoke. We heard Terrence. Terrence spoke. We heard Nathan. He spoke. We heard Fanny. She spoke. Fanny's dad. Fanny's dad. Yes. So we've heard witnesses. But have we, have we heard anything that gets us to the 51%? Have we heard anything that gets us to the 75%? Have we heard anything that gets us to the 90%? And what standard should we use to decide if there's a conflict? Should we use the 90%? Should we use the 75%? Should we use the 51%? This is what the judge has to decide. Which one should we use? So the judge was asking the attorneys, the judge was like, y'all tell me. Mm -hmm. Y'all are getting paid the big bucks. Y'all are doing this research. Y'all tell me what standard should, should I use? 
Trump's was like, no, you should use a very little standard, a very low standard. If you just happen to have a little hunch that there's an appearance of an impropriety, boom, you got to disqualify him. Trump's people, the NDITs want it low. They want it low. They want to say, you need to see almost nothing to say that there's an apparent conflict. So just anything. And you've heard enough. You heard from Yardy. You saw Terrence's ass up there lying. He was damn backsliding and pussy popping so much. I mean, that right there alone should be enough to disqualify Fanny. What is Fanny saying? Fanny's saying the opposite. Fanny's saying, no, Judge, you need to see a high level of proof. You need to see DNA. Did you get into evidence the condoms that Nathan and I were using to have sex? <laughs> oh, you did? Well, it's probably because we weren't using them. <laughs> All right. All right either. Like this, did you see any videotapes, Judge? Was there any semen specimens, Judge? How do you know we were having sex? You didn't see any hardcore proof. Was there any DNA? Was there any videotape? Right? Where is the videotape, Judge? So now you see where, where the conflict is. You see where the legal battle is. Fanny wants to say, you need to see hardcore proof that me and this dude were doing it. Trump and his people are saying, no, you barely need to see anything. And the judge is like, I don't know. I don't know which one to use. All right? So that's that's what this that's what this document is about. So Fanny goes on. Fanning says, Fanny, Fanny says, the binding case law in Georgia is clear. Hello. A trial court is not authorized to disqualify an elected district attorney absent a showing by a high standard of proof that such an elected district attorney either has an actual conflict of interest or has engaged in forensic misconduct. That is an interesting phrase, forensic misconduct. Let's go down here and see what they mean. This brief will not examine the legal standards surrounding... <laughs> yeah, this came up in one of the closing arguments for um, one of the attorneys. I think actually Boots bought this up. Forensic misconduct. Yeah. And they're saying right here, no attorney in Georgia has ever been disqualified for prosecuting any case on the grounds of forensic, forensic misconduct. In this case, should not be the first. Okay. So what are they saying right here? I should have read this beforehand, but this is exactly what they're saying. Fanny's saying you need a high standard of proof. Fanny's saying you need DNA. You need videotape. You need semen specimens. You need to know it, right? So she's saying, Judge, you 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 haven't seen enough evidence, you haven't heard enough evidence to get you to the point where you can say, with a with a high standard of proof, that there's an actual conflict, right? Uh, she goes on. Fanny says, as a threshold matter, the elected district attorney is not merely any prosecuting attorney. She is a constitutional officer, and there is only one such officer in each judicial district. Under our Constitution, a district attorney is constitutionally mandated to represent the state in all criminal cases in the superior court of such district attorney circuit. So what is she saying? She's saying, I'm the goddamn queen, number one. All Does right, it say cleaned one. up? Hmm? Does it say cleaned up in parentheses? It sure does. I've never seen that before. Cleaned up. <laughs> Interesting. What is she saying? She's saying, uh, I'm not just some regular anybody. All right. Let's get this straight, number one. I'm the queen. There's only one of me. Only one in each judicial circuit in the state. And to be honest, out of all the judicial circuits in the state, I'm number one of all them. I'm in Fulton County. So I am one of one of many. I'm the top. I'm the queen. All right. So let's get my position straight first. 
If you are gonna, if you are gonna take down the number one person in the state, the number one person, do you think you should have to have a high burden? Should it be hard to take down the number one person in the state, or should it just be easy? <laughs> you could just throw them all number one, just throw them away, right? That's what that's that's what she's trying to imply with this first shot, saying, "Hey, first of all, spell my name right, goddamn it, recognize." I'm the goddamn queen. All right. She says, here, the district attorney seeks only to do exactly that, perform her solemn duties as mandated by the Georgia Constitution to subserve public justice in a case of great public importance. Absolutely. You're going against Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Now, Trump and the other defendants asked this court to impose a novel hair trigger standard for the disqualification of an ele- man. <laughs> hair trigger. Hair trigger. I've right? never that? heard that ever. Hair. You never heard trigger. Hair trigger. Mm-hmm. No. No, that's just a super common phrase. It means like it's something. It's, it's very easy to to pull a to pull a to pull a trigger. It's, it's very. It requires very little pressure. Just boom. It's interesting. Yeah, and so what? What they're what Jafani's saying is, wait a minute. Now, I'm the number one person in the state of Georgia, and Donald Trump just thinks you should be able to move me, remove me just like that, take me out of position just like that, disqualify me just like that. Mm. Their trigger just boom. What kind of sense does that make? Somebody said Pantene trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Pantene trigger. That was a good one. So. Um, Fanny says you should not allow this easy novel hair trigger standard says no such standard exists under our law. The true legal standard set forth by our appellate courts and confirmed by statutory language is much higher and requires proof of an actual palpable conflict of interest with a substantial basis in fact the standard is high for a reason the public's interest in seeking justice is in no way served by a low standard that would allow trial courts broad dis- broad authority to invalidate the public's choice in their elected district attorney selected by the people to carry out essential constitutional duties. Interesting. She's saying, wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute. People voted for me. People voted for me. The citizens of this great state of Georgia voted for me and they voted for me to do a job. What sense would it make for the people in this county, the people of this state to vote the queen to do a job and then to be able to remove me out of cases just like that. How does that make sense? It's an interesting point. I mean, just broadly, it shouldn't be that easy to remove someone who's been elected. So for example, the president, the president has been selected by the people of the nation. Should it be easy or should it be hard to remove a president, right? Because it's a very important position. Now, if you're working the register at Popeye's Chicken, maybe it's easy to fire you. (laughs) If you're working down at churches, you're working down at the plant, at the mill, maybe you're easily replaceable. But if you're Donald Trump, if you're George Bush, should you be easily replaceable? If you're Ronald Reagan, should somebody just be able to throw you out of office just like that? Fanny's saying, I'm Ronald Reagan, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm George Bush. I'm the queen of the state. You should not be able just to toss me aside anytime you want. Get me off of the case because the people of this great state of Georgia have put me in this position in the first place and nothing is more important than the will of the people. They should have let me write this shit. <laughs> Right, that's what she's saying. Right? So 
she 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 she's trying to make this argument and y'all y'all can say if it's good or not y'all y'all decide but she's trying to make this argument like man y'all really shouldn't be i mean can you even remove a queen is it this easy should it be easy medium or hard right that's exactly right easy medium or hard and so fanny is saying it shouldn't be easy in fact it shouldn't even be min- medium fanny's saying it should be hard now we're going to hear what steve sadow has to say cuz steve filed a motion today i think steve's going to say it should be easy mm-hmm. but we're going to listen and you know nathan knows that fanny you know she could be easy sometimes all right <laughs> But she's hearing rumors about a gorilla grip. About the gorilla grip. All right. And I can see if you're 22 or 23, you want to play hardball. If you're 53, man, you really kind of need to be passing it out. Like, why are you holding it? Why are you saving it? All right. So Nathan, 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 he he racked up on this. Okay, but let's go. So she says, uh, all criminal defendants. This is what Fanny's saying. All criminal defendants have certain rights that must be protected by our system of justice. But among them is neither the right to be tried by a prosecutor of his choosing. Uh Uh-oh. So she's saying, hold up now. Donald Trump doesn't get to decide who prosecutes him. This is, you ain't picking and choosing. All right. Nathan can decide who he wants to sling the penis to. He was slinging it to Sonia and Sonia got him a job making five hundred fifty dollars an hour. Did that earn earn multiple, multiple thousands of dollars and didn't have one piece of paper to show for it. They asked him, wait, you got paid all of this, all of this money for the investigation? He said, yeah. They were like, "Okay, well, where's the investigation report? Ninja was like, oh, it's in my head. (laughs) It's, it's in here. My it's here. It's in my head. <laughs> so you you were you were having sex with Sonia and you got all this money. And now you're having sex with Fanny and you got all this money. Right? Nathan knows how to pick and choose. Nathan was not having sex with the foot locker chick. She ain't got no money. He was not having sex with the woman down there working the cash register. At the goddamn Sizzler. She ain't got no money. He was having sex with Sonya because Sonya controlled the money. He was having sex with Fanny. Fanny controlled the money. Nathan was picking and choosing. Fanny saying, if you are a defendant, though, you don't have that right. You can't decide if if, if Nathan is going to prosecute you, if I'm going gonna to prosecute you, if someone else is going to prosecute you. You're a defendant. You have to take the prosecutor that you are you are given. All right. It's not it's not how you want it. All right. Um, Fanny goes on. She says inappropriate or improper disqualification of a district attorney elected by the people of this country and constitutionally mandated to represent the state in all criminal cases has severe consequences, both for the people's faith in their constitutional right uh, and for the people's confidence in our system of justice. For the reasons set forth below, I, Fannie J. Willis, want defendants' motions to dismiss the indictment and disqualify me I want these motions denied. I want them denied. All right. This is our first point. And y'all decide if her first point is good or not. Do you want to pick this up, baby? Yeah. So point number one is the defendants bear the burden of proving their claims by a high standard of evidence, which is ne- which necessarily must be more than a preponderance of the evidence. Which okay, she so is- jumping right there. What is she saying right there? Yeah. So what she's saying right there, guys, remember how we talked about easy, medium, and hard? Like Leed said, the Trump indictees want things to be easy. So the preponderance of the evidence, right? The medium one is clear and convincing. She's saying it should be high. That's what we typically reserve for criminal cases. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll start it off. Um, she's citing a case here. It says, it is the burden of a party seeking to disqualify counsel to prove that the extraordinary remedy of disqualification is warranted. So let's make- stop right there. Let's stop right mm-hmm. there. So what she's saying, all right, guys, disqualification is extreme. It's extreme. All right. It's extraordinary. So you don't just walk up and and, and request something extraordinary easily. Right. Well, I think we can agree that Michael Jordan was an extraordinary basketball player. It's not a lot of them. LeBron James, extraordinary. Not a lot of him. Tyreek Hill, an extraordinary football player. Not a lot of him. All right. It's not a lot. So when you can't, it's, it shouldn't be easy. If something is extraordinary, like the disqualification of a, of a prosecutor, you need to bring it. All right. Mm-hmm. That's what they're saying. All right. Let's go. Um, she then says in McGlynn, the Georgia Court of Appeals recognized that a court considering a defendant's motion to disqualify an elected district attorney and her office based off of alleged misconduct must hold those who allege such misconduct to a high standard of proof. Mm. Emphasis added. At the hearing in this case, the defendants urged the court to adopt a preponderance of the evidence standard, but under McGlynn, that cannot be the correct standard of proof. While not squarely addressed in the context of disqualification, Georgia appellate courts have often categorized a clear and convincing showing of actual malice as a high standard of proof. Interesting. So this is what we talked about as one of the standards of proof, guys. Y'all remember we talked about, like A.V. said, easy, medium, and hard. Mm -hmm. Easy is preponderance of the evidence. Uh, Medium is clear and convincing. High is um, beyond a reasonable doubt. So Fanny's saying at least it should be medium, clear, and convincing, maybe 75%, not the 51%, which is... um, Preponderance. Thank you. (laughs) Preponderance Mm -hmm. of the evidence. Preponderance of the evidence around 51%. Just, uh, I think so, bam, that's it. No. A judge shouldn't be like, oh, well, Terrence did lie on the stand a lot, so I'm going to go and give it to Fanny. No, 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 that's not how it works. You got to have something much more concrete. All right. Uh, Let's keep it going. Go ahead, A.V. All right. It says, moreover, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals has regularly and explicitly recognized that preponderance of the evidence is not a high standard of proof. Okay, it's a 2019 case. She brought up Talbert, 2016, a few others. The state maintains that the defendants have not established an actual conflict of interest, even by the preponderance of of the evidence. Even so, based on these cases, specifically the holding in McGlynn, the trial courts must hold defendants seeking disqualification of a prosecutor to a high standard of proof. The court should hold the defendants to something higher than a preponderance of the evidence. So this is what Lead was saying, guys, at least medium. That's her first argument. Yeah. So her first argument is like, let's go on and set it up right now. Was Terrence lying his ass off? Yes. But that's not enough to show that Nathan and I were doing something that would cause an actual conflict. Was there cell phone t- cell phone t- tower data? Yes. But that maybe she's saying that, that that all this stuff doesn't even meet the preponderance of the evidence. But even if it did, you should still require more, still require more proof. Right. Yeah. Um, number two, the defendants asked the court to adopt a legal standard that is not recognized under Georgia law. And they rely on cases that are either cited in a misleading way are inapplicable or actually support my position. Oh my God. Fanny. <laughs> She's saying it doesn't apply. Doesn't These apply. don't fit. You must and it supports it. me. Exactly. You want to read this one too? Yeah, absolutely. And real quick, just a thought that came to mind. Somebody said it in the chat and I thought it was a really good point. Somebody mm-hmm. was saying she wants the standard to be high, but apparently the standard for Rico, for hitting everybody with Rico, mm. Rico's a little easy. Okay. <laughs> A little easy. That's exactly right. That's exactly That's really right. You point. want you want the standard to be high for this, but you know, to for, for Nathan to get up in between them thighs. Oh, <laughs> you don't need a wedding ring, you don't need dinners, you don't need a trip to Aruba. 
everything that black man gave you, you gave it right back to him, and then you gave him the ass. You seem a little easy. (laughs) All right, so which one is it, Fanny? All right, let's go. You want to pick it up here? Yep. The defendants rely on numerous cases in support of their motion that are either cited in a misleading way, are inapplicable, or support the state's position. The defendants can point to no appellate case because there is no case where an elected district attorney in Georgia was properly disqualified solely based on the appearance of a conflict of interest or other appearance of impropriety. She's saying this has never happened before. Yeah, this is exactly right. She's saying that the defendants, she's saying that Donald Trump can't point to a case to show this court what the legal standard is because there's never been a case. Now, this type of situation is what we call in the law a case of first impression. Mm-hmm. This is our first impression of, of, of any situation like this. YouTubers know that the word impression means kind of like a contact or YouTube is showing you a thumbnail. And you can have a video with millions of impressions. I've got a video with damn near 50 million impressions. Wow. So 50 million people have been shown that thumbnail. Fanny's saying this is the very first one. This is the very first showing of such an of such a situation where a prosecutor is being cu- accused of something like this. Mm-hmm. So if if there's no other cases, no other precedents to follow, the judge kind of has to make it up, and that's why it's so hard. It's much easier for me to get on get in my car and drive down 75, 85 because it's a paved highway. But 400 years ago, jungle, maybe not a jungle in Georgia, but damn near. Yeah, a forest, right? I had you 400 years ago, you had to walk through it. There's vines and mosquitoes. Into the thick of it, pioneering. Exactly. (laughs) And that's what this judge is doing. This judge is pioneering because there's no paved highway. There's no way this judge can say, oh, well, this happened before. I'm going to do it. So this is a case of first impression. The judge is the one with the machete. Trying to chop it down and figure out the path. All right. Uh, Keep going. Okay. Yep. Indeed, if such a case existed, it would be, it would have undoubtedly have been brought to the court's attention by the defendants months ago. Mm. Instead, the defendants cobbled together flowery, Mm. righteous quotations from inapplicable cases that may sound inciting at first, enticing at first. That entirely misstate the the law in Georgia. In doing so, the defendants asked the court to adopt a novel legal standard for the disqualification of an elected constitutional officer that has never before been recognized in Georgia, and that is contrary to decades of case law. Exactly. So she's like, listen, guys, we need to go slow here. This has never been done before. And what the state, what the what the defendants, what Donald Trump has asked you to do is something that um, has never been done in the history of the state, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just pause right here and shout out our man, Taylor by Nature. Yeah, shout out is. to Taylor by Nature. God. Oh, my God. Shout out to Taylor by Nature. High value man through and through. What does he say? Shame, guilt, insult, and the need to be right. Let me say it correctly. This is my man, KS, <laughs> right? Shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuel. Somebody put KS in the dang chat, man. Really miss uh, our brother, Kevin Samuels, you know, it's really one of the reasons why uh, AV is my co-host, if I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, Kevin loved AV, loved AV, was one of uh, AV's biggest fans. And um, I talked a lot with Kevin on the phone. He was a, he was a, a telephone person and he would call me multiple times a week <laughs> and we would talk about all sorts of things. Uh, really miss that brother. But one thing that I want everybody to know is how big of a fan Kevin was of our AV. Somebody put KS and AV in the dang chat. 
So shout out to Kevin, shout out to his family as well. And shout out to Taylor by nature. Um, we need more high value men like Kevin, like Taylor by nature. It's not enough. This is what you see all these, all these black women talking about. Oh, there's not enough men to marry. We want <laughs> men to marry. There's not enough. I know. I know. It's hard to find a good man. But um, there are out there. There are good men out there, and Taylor by nature is one of them. Y'all have seen the amount of love, the, the amount of support, encouragement that he shows AV, that he shows me, that he shows the channel, that he shows you guys. He's helping sponsor this content that, that all 10,000 of you guys are watching. So shout out to Taylor by nature. Thank you so much, brother. He's come up. He's expressed his, his, his opinions, his, his wisdom. His experience on these matters just gives excellent commentary. So somebody write TBN in the dang chat. <laughs> TBN, thank you so, so much, Taylor by Nature. Shout out to Taylor by Nature. Shout out to TLGC. Also, shout out to the AB. And I know I'm going to, uh, I got a lot more uh, super chats to, to give, like shout out to Kay Woolard gifting five memberships. Thank you so much. A lot of people I'm going to shout out. Uh, oh, let me just get this one right here too. Joe Ethereal. Joe. Joe. Shout out to Joe Ethereal gifting 20 of y'all a voice. If y'all get a gifted membership, please tell the person thank you. And don't just say thank you. Name the person. The names must be named. We're in the South. We're in Atlanta. All right. In the South, we have manners. We were raised properly. We call it home training. Show everybody that you got good home training. If you received a membership from Joe Ethereal, if you received a membership from Kay Willard, tell them thank you. They didn't have to do it, but they did. And they did it out of love. If you received a membership from Kiana Shaw, tell her thank you. Lord knows if you received a membership from AV, Tell this light-skinned woman, thank you. <laughs> Don't look her in the eye. Don't you look down, boy. Don't look her in the eye. <laughs> Is that too south? <laughs> Sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> Go in through the back door. Don't come in the front. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. We're in the south, guys. <laughs> right, so shout, shout out to everybody gifted memberships. We're going to get right back to it. But hold up now. Bam! Hey! How do you say this? How would you try to say this? So I think this was high value man. High HVM on deck here. Yeah. I'm trying to say his name. I don't. I don't want. I want to put some respect on your name. Somebody just write high value man on deck. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Thank you so so much. Somebody write HVM on deck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all see the brother right there, Sharp. Sharp in the suit and tie. That's what Kevin always used to preach. Image. Mm -hmm. uh, talked with Kevin on the phone so many times. Hung out with Kevin. Never saw that man in a polo shirt. Never saw him in shorts. He was all about that suit. Guys, let me tell you something. It is very hard to rock a suit in the dead of summer in Georgia. It is hard. If you go to Lenox Mall wearing this suit and this 103 in Atlanta... <laughs> You sacrificing for the image, but Kevin never had a problem with it. Always represent. And you got our man right here, HVM on deck. Same type of concept, same type of ideas. Y'all see him sharp in the suit and tie. So shout out to my man, HVM on deck. I, <laughs> I see you. I see you wearing that blue suit there, though, boy. <laughs> 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 if there was someone who was not a fan of blue suits, it was our boy Kevin. Boy. Oh my god! Blue suits. <laughs> we might have to tell this story, guys. If you can go on Kevin's channel right now, and there was oh one day he god. went on a tangent, and I think somebody left him a super chat and was just like, "What's better, suit blue or black?" He said, "Black." <laughs> blue sucks. He looked. At, <laughs> he looked in the camera and said, "Blue sucks. It's boring." <laughs> And I sent it to Lean, and we were crying. I was dying laughing. He was like, "Blue sucks," and I thought it was funny because Lean is always wearing a blue. Always blue. <laughs> I I got so many blue suits, guys. I love blue. 
like I would only wear a black <laughs> suit to a funeral if I'm gonna be honest. I mean, like a black black suit. That's that's really the only time I wear it. Now I got gray suits, and Kevin wear a lot of gray suits, but he loved those black suits from Tom Ford. But at any rate, shout out to my brother here in the blue suit and blue tie. All right. <laughs> shout out to HVM on deck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Shout out to HVM. Let's get back into it, guys. And I'm going to read the rest of the Super Chats, too. Um, did you have any cash apps or Super Chats? Uh, yeah, I have a few. I will pull them up now. I'm going to start with... The first one, shout out to Eddie, who sends $10. He says, keep bringing that great content. Thank you so much, Eddie. Really sweet of you. Thank you. Definitely going to keep the content coming. Shout out to Stacy, who sends $25. She says, have a great weekend. You too, Stacy. Thank you. That was super sweet and generous of you. Shout out to Darren. He sends $25. He says, AV to the seventh power. You're the woe man. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Well, okay. Thank you, Darren. That was really nice of you as well. Thank you. $25 is very generous. This one's pretty, um, this one's bigger. Shout out to Jim who sends five fifty dollars and six cents. He says, happy Friday, AV. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Jim. Happy well, Friday to yeah. you. I hope you have a great weekend. Super, super generous of you. And again, guys, like every single penny you guys send to us is super important. And Jim, that was very, very generous. I know you don't have to do that. Uh, so even wishing a, a happy week, uh, you know, a good weekend and a happy Friday is fantastic. So thank you. Shout out to Bethy. She sends fifty dollars. Wow, Jim, Bethy, laying it down. Thank yeah. you, Beth. Uh, Beth sends uh, fifty, and she says, "Look at you making TLA wait TGIF <laughs> from an <laughs> NYC lawyer." Thank you, Beth. And if you're oh, practicing. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, Beth, if you're practicing in NYC, I hope you're doing well. You enjoy what you do. And I hope it's warm up there this weekend. New York mm. has been pretty cold lately, so I hope it warms up for you. But thank you again, Beth. $50 again. Very, very generous. And then the last one I have is, of course, from Sin G. Shout out he to says, 1914. He says, Melania needs Big Buck Chuck. F. Donald Cuck. <laughs> Wow. All right. All right. Sin. My man Sin and my man Sin bless me on the Cash App as well. Yeah. Put in 1920. Shout out to Sin. Shout out to all the Sigmas. My man Sin says, Dub love to Zetas and FTD 2024 maggots. Oh, shoot. Sin is hardcore Somebody today. Somebody is not a fan. Somebody is not a fan. FTD 2024 and maggots. Wow. All right. This is interesting. Let me see. Um, let's just do a quick. I'm, I'm not going to do a big poll here, but if you are for Trump, say Trump. If you are for Biden, say Biden. Let's see who we got in the house. If you're oh. for Trump. Say we've never done this before. I wouldn't like yeah. to see what the dynamics are. Ten thousand people in here. If you are for Trump, say Trump. If you are for Biden, say Biden. Let us now, know, guys. Um, I see one. It's easy just to count the Bidens. <laughs> I see one Biden fan. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Hell no. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all are crazy. I don't even know if I can find it, man. They destroy the damn uh, I know the chat's moving so fast. It is. Y'all damn destroyed it. Y'all are hilarious, man. I don't know. I don't know what I would do without y'all. Oh my God. Guess who we got in the chat? We got Fanny. Fanny! <laughs> We got Fanny in the chat. Fanny's like Biden all the way. <laughs> Shout out to Fanny Willis. <laughs> Y'all are too crazy. Man. You really are. Y'all have Shout so much Fanny. fun. Fanny is like, please do not <laughs> disqualify me. So we got Fanny in the house. <laughs> Somebody write Fanny, man. <laughs> Shout out. Y'all are, <laughs> <y'all> are something else. <laughs> All right. Um, and thank you as well. Uh, shout out to Jim. Jim also blessed me with $50 on the cash app. Says, Fanny forgot who her zaddy is. 
She's getting reminded of who really runs the show in Fulton County. Mm. All right. Yeah. I mean, God, if you come for Donald Trump, man, you got to um, you you got to bring it because bring it. these people got money. These people got power. They got political will. They're not going to back down. They are not. Um, so thank you so much, Jim. And again, we got HVM. Wow. What does he say? He says, yeah, man, Kevin was on that BS with the blue suits. <laughs> but I rock them all day. Also rock a black suit with a black turtleneck, but it Ooh. depends on the event. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin would rock a lot of those uh, black sweaters from Tom Ford. Seen him a lot in those. Maybe a, a turtleneck, though. I can't remember him being in a turtleneck too it's much. It's like those like cardigans. Oh, it's like um yeah. cashmere type of sweaters. They were really fitted. Those look mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, Kevin was big into the black and the grays, man. But I mean, blue, God, you could do so much with a gray blue. Gray as well, but black. If you see me in a black suit, someone's passed away. <laughs> so I, I, I'm never wearing a black suit. Blue I mean, suits you. Blue looks nice on you. Yeah, uh, black is just, I don't know. Black looks good too, but it's just, it kind of not my style. So thank you so, so much, HVM. Shout out to all the high value men and high value women. Shout out to all the people in the chat who really take care of image. It is, and I'm listening, man, I will be the first to admit that it is easy to, if you're going to go to Publix, throw on some Nikes and some jogging pants and a hoodie, put the hood up and go. I get it. I get it. That's easy to do. And we've all done it. Kevin ain't do that shit. <laughs> Kevin was not on that tip, man. He was always about appearance, always about style. And you do feel a little better when, when you're looking official. Absolutely right about that. And you carry yourself a little different. You carry yourself different when you're in a three-piece suit versus when you're in some Nikes and a hoodie and some jogging pants, mm -hmm. right? So shout out to my man, High value man on deck. And again, somebody write HVM, HVM. Super, super generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. High value man on deck. Thank you, brother. All right, let's get back into it, man. High value man on deck. Blessing us so much. When y'all do us like this, I like to get back right into the content. I am going to keep reading some of the super chats, but when y'all bless me like this, we got to get right back in it. All right, what does Fanny say? She says, the cases relied on by Donald Trump and the other defendants can be divided into five categories. Number one, cases that do not concern disqualification at all, but that the defendants use as a source of flowery she and likes righteous language. language. Number two, Cases where criminal defense attorneys were disqualified on the basis of divided loyalty in violation of the Georgia Rules of Professional Conduct. Number three, cases where a prosecutor, golly, this is not a good sentence. They should have broken this mm -hmm. up somehow or, you know, done something, some bullet points or something. Anyway, number three, cases where a prosecutor had an actual personal interest in the outcome of the prosecution. Number four, a single case one time where a defendant was denied a fundamentally fair trial where the DA had previously represented the victim, Jesus. And number five, cases where no actual conflict of interest was shown and disqualification was not proper. The first category of cases is the largest the court should categorically disregard them in the context of this motion. They say nothing at all about disqualification of an elected district attorney. So the, uh, wow. So she's just saying, okay, for the first, the first type of cases, which are cases that don't concern disqualification, well, I'm not even going to address those. Those are just gone. So then she goes on. Cases involving criminal uh, defense attorneys disqualified on the basis of divided loyalty. The second category of cases concerns criminal defense attorneys who were disqualified. These cases simply do not apply to disqualification of a constitutional officer whose loyalty lies with seeking justice. Okay, I see what she's saying. 
She's saying, listen, guys, the, the second, all right, here's the thing. When you are an attorney and you're making briefs and motions, you got to cite to other cases. You got to say, judge, they did it in this case. They did it in that case. You have to cite to precedent. You can't just say, oh, I think they should do this or I think they should do that. You have to show them what's happened in the past. Right. And you have to say, judge, this happened in the past. This happened in the past. And because it happened in the past, it should keep happening. Now, it's a tough call in cases like this where nothing has happened in the past. This is the first time that this has ever happened. So that's the issue. So Fannie's saying, well, wait a minute now. They're saying, Trump, Donald Trump and the other attorneys are saying that you should look at these types of cases. What's the problem with these types of cases? These types of cases concern criminal defense attorneys. What's the problem with a criminal defense attorney or why is it different? Criminal defense attorneys represent a person. They represent a single client. I am the queen. I don't represent a single person. I represent the entire state. I represent everybody. Everybody in my judicial circuit, I represent them. So y'all aren't even, we're not even in the same ballpark. You're comparing apples to oranges is what she's saying. This is These cases that defendants are using is apples and oranges. These, pe these people down here, they're representing little bitty people, you know, one person at a time. I'm the queen. I represent everybody simultaneously. You know what's so interesting about that? Mm. At the same time, that's a fair point. It's a fair argument. But she also said herself, a case like this has never been tried in the state of Florida. I mean, Florida, Georgia, right? So mm -hmm. at the same time, you've never had an opportunity or not even an opportunity. Um, you never had this in front of a court before where there's impropri improprieties by a district attorney. Mm. So the judge still has to determine that. Like we use the analogy of pioneering it. She's saying you can't use this stuff based off of this five, these five categories because it doesn't fit. But at the same time, the court's never seen it. Court's never seen it, right? So you got to argue something, 100%. Big shout out to excessively pigmented. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's got sunglasses on. Wow. He's and a nose. And like he went all out. There's a mustache. What is this? Is he calling this Donald Trump? Is that what I, Donald Trump? I, I'm missing the joke. <laughs> Shout out to my man. Uh, y'all know who this is, man. This is Air <laughs> Attorney. Always comes all oh, bad. Y'all should you should you should send the super chat of one dollar and show them the lights get a turdy. That is oh, hilarious. Hilarious. This is the number one troll on YouTube, guys. Number one troll, hands down. But uh, I have talked to this brother. Y'all really don't know how strong of a brother this is, how powerful of a brother this is. The sacrifice is what he's gone through. Man, somebody please type EPT in the dang chat. EPT. No comment, no question, just the pure love of the game. Excessively pigmented tea bag. Now, is this supposed to be Donald Trump? Because if it's not, I'm missing. I don't. I don't know who we're talking about. I don't, I'm missing the. Um, I'm missing the reference. I just what? think it's funny because he really <laughs> works on, it, like the picture. You know, last time he said, "What was it, Amber? Um, Ashley, attorney." <laughs> <laughs> and like he literally right. took your face, put it on Ashley's body, and blended the skin together. Yes, like, yes. He's good at Photoshop. Apparently. He really is good at Photoshop. Oh, dude. Oh, okay. oh my god. And that's said a dollar, but golly, y'all check this out. It is the light skinned attorney. <laughs> locked in so fast. <laughs> Oh, let me hit it again. <laughs> Guys, the light skin to turn hell no. <laughs> Guys, that's me on Leeds' body. <laughs> oh my god, when I first saw this, I can't I lost my shit, man. <laughs> oh man. We use the old office and everything. Right. Shout out. This is such a throwback. <laughs> it's definitely a throwback. And it's no. like the picture from like one of my very first videos. Is it really? Do you recognize yeah. that picture? I know oh, that picture. Wow. 
he went to he went to throw back for both of us. This man yeah. knows that they have Photoshop. Yeah. Simple as sound should watch out. <laughs> This is the number one troll on all of YouTube, guys. Thank y'all so much for shouting him out. Somebody write TLA in the <laughs> day chat. Look at that. TLA. <laughs> Somebody said, AV, you look good in blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Damn lungs collapsing. <laughs> Don't okay. oh my god, be careful there. Be careful. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I got me sweating up in here, man. God. Wipe me down. Oh okay, yeah, wipe me down. <laughs> B O O S I E Rolls Royce on E, but all drinks on me. Wipe me down. <laughs> I don't know how it goes. Oh my god, y'all are hilarious. <sighs> the light skinned attorney. <laughs> Logged yeah. out so quick and got into that account. Oh, that actually did make my <laughs> like my lungs were fucking up. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. All right. Shout out to the light skinned attorney, man. Thank y'all for shouting him out. I'm gonna put him up here in the dang sponsor too, man. Got to, got to, and I'm gonna put um uh, put y'all co-sponsors as well as our man. Um oh you can give it, you can give him mine, make him the sponsor sponsor. Yeah. That is for the creativity. High value man on deck as well. Um, we got AV to the seventh power and uh high value man on deck. I think he's in for two. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> and <clears throat> I actually think I did hurt myself laughing. Are you okay? Oh, that was fucked up, man. He had me laughing so hard. And uh <laughs> the Light skin. <laughs> Light skin no, I think he's he's in now. He just dropped oh another one. Did he really? Oh, that he got the area. <laughs> <laughs> the areola attorney. It's too sweet for I'm gonna pull that up in a second. If y'all guys listen, if y'all get these uh memberships <laughs> that uh that uh that my man uh Amber attorney slash the light skin attorney slash what is it? Uh, Al Pacino would? He had everything. Oh my he had gosh. absolutely everything. Absolutely yeah. everything. Thank you so, so much. Now the aerial, aerial lead, <laughs> aerial attorney, right? <laughs> a quarter or better. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. We need a quarter or better. So shout out. Y'all bless me so much. If y'all get one of these uh, memberships from the aerial lead, aerial <laughs> attorney, Please tell my man thank you. So shout, shout out. Y'all are amazing. I know, and I got, I know, guys, a lot of super chats. I'm going to get through them. But when y'all bless me like this, man, we got to get back into the contest. So shout out to the light skin attorney. Hilarious. All right. So again, right back in it, guys. we <laughs> 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 pulling right back in. <laughs> He's doing that. Does he have multiple screens? Oh my God. What does he say? He says, Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't give Amber credit. I did this ages <laughs> ago. <laughs> Please, guys, somebody write the light skin attorney <laughs> in the damn chat. Y'all see it right here. You damn light skin, man. I can't point them out right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God, you have no idea uh, what this means to me. I, I really enjoyed the conversation that we had just to meet strong men like you. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's a rare occurrence. It's not something that, that you get the opportunity to experience every day. Uh, shout out to the light skinned attorney. Huge supporter of me, the number one troll on all of YouTube. Y'all, y'all are seeing them. Nine thousand people in the chat. Y'all are shouting them out. Y'all really don't know the strength of this man. So thank you so much, please, guys. To be honest, I don't ever ask y'all for anything. I do ask y'all, hey man, look at my likes, but I, you know, I don't ask y'all for anything monetary. You can go back since the beginning of the, of the channel. I've been on three years. Never asked you for a penny. I don't ask y'all for anything, but please, 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 please thank the light skin attorney. Somebody write the light skin attorney in the house, the new sponsor. 
the there new we go. sponsor. Uh, and again, shout out to AV and shout out to the high value man on deck. But we got our man, the new sponsor here. So let me put him in the rightful place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The lights get attorney. Hilarious. Hilarious. Y'all are awesome. So let me go on and make my man the sponsor. And then we're going to get right back in it. Um, <clears throat> and do you have any that you want to shout out while we are doing this? Um, I am all caught up. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Lights Get Attorney. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you all for shouting him out. Thank you. Uh, and guys, just know that when you when when y'all see on the replay, everybody's saying TLA. They're not saying the lead attorney. They're saying <laughs> the light skinned attorney. That is exactly right. Shout out to the light skinned attorney. Uh, <clears throat> y'all are killing it, killing it, killing it. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get back to it because y'all are blessing me so much. Says. Um, Okay, so now she's pointing out again, the cases that Donald Trump and his attorneys are citing are cases where criminal defense attorneys were disqualified, not cases where you had a DA qualified or uh, disqualified, right? Um, do you want to pick it up right here, A.V.? Sure. Um, beginning with Regist. I would say Regis. Yeah, mm -hmm. Regis v. State. The Georgia Supreme Court upheld the disqualification of a criminal defense attorney who had previously been directly involved in the defendant's prosecution, including a filing an application for search warrants against the defendant. The court held that the circumstances implicated at least four ethics rules. Sounds a little familiar. Specifically <laughs> prohibited, uh, rule 1.7 specifically prohibited the attorney's representation of Regis because the representation created a significant risk that the that the lawyer's duties to a former client were material and materially and adversely affecting the representation of this client. And because the representation includes the assertion of a claim by one client against the other client in the same proceeding, the conflict could not be waived. Moreover, rule 1.9 also prohibited the representation a lawyer who formerly represented a client in a matter um, cannot thereafter represent another person in the same same or substantially related matter if the person's interests are materially adverse to the interests of another formal client. These rules simply do not apply to the circumstances alleged in the defendant's motion. <clears throat> yeah, so what they're saying is they're listing all the specific facts of this Regis case and just saying, mm -hmm. hey, man, I am not a, a criminal defense attorney. Yep. I don't represent a client, an individual, <clears throat> a particular person. I represent everybody. I represent everybody. So I don't even know why they're using this case because this case does not apply to me. All right, you want to keep going? <laughs> yeah, and, and real quick as a side note, I also just want to mention this is the reason why this sounds familiar. As you guys remember Ashley Merchant at the Senate hearing, at the very end, there was a senator that was kind of duking it out with her he was fighting with her because of something similar. He's mm -hmm. saying, hey, the case that you put in this brief, it doesn't necessarily apply. Tell me why it applies. Mm -hmm. I find it very interesting that we see Fanny using a similar type of argument style here. A hundred percent. You are absolutely right. Okay. So it says the remaining cases in the second category follow the same logic as Regis. In Edwards, a criminal defense attorney was properly disqualified where he had previously represented the mother of the victim in the case, and neither Edwards nor, nor the victim's mother gave informed consent to, to the conflict created by the defense attorney's divided loyalties, as required by Rule 1.1. In Brown v. State, defense attorneys were disqualified where members of their firms had previously been employed as prosecutors and were substantially involved in earlier cases of, scrolling down, the defendant's prosecutions. Finally, in Reeves, 1998 case, a defendant's conviction was reversed where, one, his criminal defense attorney had accepted a job offer with the same district attorney's office that was prosecuting the defendant. 
Two, the record did not establish that the defense attorney had disclosed that fact to the defendant. And three, the defendant asserted on the appeal that the disclosure to his attorney's future employment would have affected his decision making. And four, the defense attorneys waived a jury trial, calling no defense witnesses and failed to have the bench trial transcribed. And Reeves, when while Reeves refers to an appearance of impropriety, it is not factually distinct from the present motion. Um, was decided under former former ethics rules that do not apply here. It is non-binding physical precedent. So Fanny's yeah. she's basically saying all of these cases that fall in the second bucket that talk about attorney loyalty, it does not apply to me. It does not apply because these are defense attorneys, like TLA said, and I am a DA. How does this fit? How does it fit? And if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. All right. Mm -hmm. Um this this motion is not really written in a way that's uh, interesting to me, to be honest. It's, it's basically saying, let me see if I can find something good in here, because I don't want to, that last sentence that AV read was written so poorly. Yeah, I could, had a hard time reading it. I was like, how does this make sense? Yeah, uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can find anything good in here. The third category, the third category of cases consists where the prosecutor has acquired a personal interest in the outcome. Mm. Yeah, what they're basically saying, guys, is that, okay, let me see. Disqualification was appropriate based on actual <laughs> actual conflict. What they're basically doing is just shooting holes in the defendant's um, cases that they cited. Now, here it looks like they're going to make some of their own arguments. Fanny's going to make some arguments for herself. So this uh, should be um, a little bit more interesting. What does Fannie say? Fannie says multiple Georgia Supreme Court cases clearly established that Georgia trial courts are not authorized to disqualify me, an elected district attorney, absent an actual conflict of interest. An appearance, con a con an appearance of a conflict of interest is insufficient. Now, guys, this is interesting. Hmm. This is very interesting what she's saying right here. Let's stop for a second. Because it's typically been said that you need an actual conflict or the appearance of a conflict. Fanny's saying, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, you need to go 100% of the way. 99% won't do. Shout out to Big Bethel, AME. Says, an appearance of a conflict is not enough. You have to find actual conflict. And how can you find the actual conflict without a high standard of proof? You need to see the, the best evidence, right? <clears throat> what does Fanny say? Fanny says, there are two generally recognized grounds for disqualification of a prosecuting attorney. The first ground is based on a conflict of interest. The second ground has been described as forensic misconduct. Under our laws here in Georgia, conflicts of interest have only been found where a prosecutor previously has represented a defendant with respect to the offense charge, consulted with the defendant in a private in a professional capacity, or where the prosecutor has acquired a personal stake in the outcome. No other disqualifying conflict has ever been recognized under our law. Moreover, the Georgia Supreme Court again reiterated less than a month ago an actual conflict of interest is required for disqualification of a prosecutor. It cites uh, the Lee case right here, says the trial court did not abuse its discretion by failing to disqualify an ADA absent an actual conflict. So this is interesting. They're saying you need a conflict, not just a, a an appearance. So this is, you know, this is the first time I think that this has been argued. Um, in, since the beginning of this case, because it's all the judge even was, was talking about uh, an actual or an appearance. <clears throat> but Fanny is saying, no, you need the actual conflict, not an appearance here. So she's arguing that you need an appearance. Sha la 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 la. And um, all right, guys, I'll just be honest. I'm getting, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a little bored with this. This is not. <laughs> Let's, let's move. There's been other filings. Yeah, uh, we got grandpa's filing. We got boots. You know, Fanny's here. I th I agree with lead. I mean, 
it's it's kind of like the last one she filed where it was just like, hey, it was based off of technicality. Here she's looking at flowery language. The evidence is not enough. All of that stuff. So I, yeah. I totally agree. We're going to jump down to the very end. We're going to jump down to the good part. What does Fanny say? Fanny says, for the reasons set forth above, this is her point. This court should not disqualify me <laughs> from prosecuting Donald Trump where the evidence before the court fails to demonstrate an actual conflict of interest. Uh, to whatever extent Donald Trump alleges that I received a benefit arising out of this prosecution, Donald Trump and the other indictees have made no allegations and offered no evidence that the DA has any improper, direct, and material personal stake or interest in the outcome sufficient to authorize disqualification. Defendants' suggestions concerning what constitutes and improper personal stake or interest are both unsupported by law and entirely unworkable. Application of that, of the actual legal standard reiterated by Georgia courts and by statute set forth above leaves only, leads only to one authorized outcome. Here is the dismount. This is Fanny's point. <clears throat> the indictment against Donald Trump and the other indictees should not be dismissed. And I, the Fulton County District Attorney, should not be disqualified. That's what she's saying. That's what she believes. Looks like uh, she didn't fire um, Adam. <laughs> Adam's still working on the case. Adam's still there. All right, so we went over some of this, guys. So it was, it was some of it was was dry, right? So if it's dry, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. I, I, I want mine wet. I want a little bit wet. So mm -hmm. you know, but what do y'all think about this? Do you think that she should be disqualified? Put D if you think Fanny should be disqualified. Put S if you think she should stay. D if you think she should be disqualified. S if you think Fanny should stay. Um, and while we're going to, there are two more documents that we are going to review, hopefully some are a little bit wetter, right? <laughs> while we are pulling those up, shout out to LT, shout out to Thank LT. You. Thank you so much, LT Harris. Super generous of you. What is LT? Oh, I'm looking at the, um, it's so, it's a lot of S's. Y'all are looking about 50, 50. In wow. fact, let me make a poll. Let me make a poll because this is a lot closer than I thought. How do you make a poll on this thing? So you go to YouTube. Oh, I see it right yeah. here. Okay, so um, should Fanny and Nathan be disqualified? Uh, yes or no? Here we yes, go, guys. No. And um, let me put maybe. Yes, no, maybe. All right, start it up. Let's see, guys, because honestly, there are a lot more S's than I anticipated. So should Fanny and Nathan be disqualified? Yes, no, or maybe you want to hear a little bit more. You want to hear a little bit chat. more? Vote in the chat. Yeah, so y'all voted up. And while y'all are doing that, again, let me thank so much LT Harris. Super <coughs> generous of you, brother. Oof. What does he say? LT says, you have amazing content at all times. And now with an evenly yoked co-host, all right, it <laughs> kicks the stream up to 1,000. You moved me to purchase your course for my son wow. as he starts his YouTube journey. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much, LT, on both fronts. And congratulations on getting that course. Amazing courses says, thank you both for the detailed information. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And please, guys, somebody write LT in the chat. LT Harris, super generous of you. Excellent man, excellent father, investing in his son's education. And uh, a lot of times we'll send our kids to school and just hope that they pick up with what, what they need, right? Now, I don't have any kids and I can't talk about homeschool and this or that, but I do believe that parents should invest in their children's education. And you see our man L.T. Harris going above and beyond the, the county curriculum 
and saying, hey, man, let's 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 really give this a, a, a shot. See, see, see if you could be a YouTuber like the lead. All right. <laughs> YouTube. I was just talking to a, a friend of mine who was a YouTuber. The amount of, of opportunity, I won't say money because it goes beyond money. The amount of opportunity that you can find on YouTube is incredible. So shout out to LT. Y'all are shouting him out as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, LT, for the Super Chat, for supporting us and for shouting out AV and also for buying the course. Guys, you are able to purchase these uh, live streaming courses for uh, your family members, for your friends, even for YouTubers who you think oh, they might need a little help. Go on and buy them the course. There is a um, discount code. The discount code, if anybody is interested, is the word Fanny. All right. <laughs> it is the word Fanny. And if y'all are looking for the link to the description of the, uh, if y'all are looking for a link to the code, uh, sorry, a link to the course, it is in the description box. Let me put it right here. Uh, first thing in the description box, guys. Also, if you want to see how much money I make, you can click on the link and it shows you how much money the lead attorney makes live streaming. Hopefully that will inspire some of y'all. So thank you so much. And shout out to Attila the Han gifted 10 memberships. Wow. Y'all are blessing each other, man. Thank you. Attila the Han, that's a hard, mm -hmm. that's a hardcore name, you know? So thank you for being the positive Attila the Han. And blessing everybody in here. Guys, if you got one of the memberships from Attila the Hunt, please, please tell him thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Attila. Shout out to my man, LT. All right. Uh, and I know I got some more super chats. Let me get the, back to those. But when y'all bless me like my man LT did, I like to get right into the content. Let's bring up another, um, another filing that just happened today, guys. AV uh, sent me this, and this is by Boots, I believe. We're going to bring it up here. I have not seen it. I don't know if AV has seen it or not. So, this Yeah, so this is relatively short, and it's in response to what we just read that Fanny sent. So Fanny's saying, hey, these cases, you can't use them. Boots is like, yes, we can, <laughs> and here's why. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here is Boots right here in typical Boots. <laughs> you know, going to be state of Georgia versus Donald J. Trump. He didn't put Mayor Rudy Giuliani. He didn't put Michael Romans. He didn't write any of the other defendants. No, nope, it's just me. What is Fanny saying? Fanny is saying, I am the number one. I am the queen. Ain't nobody else is me. Right. And that is what you see Donald Trump doing, too. Donald Trump did not list all of his other indictees right here like everybody else does. He just put himself. Fair enough. What does he say? This is President Trump's initial reply to state supplemental post-hearing brief. All right. And so this is talking about whether Fannie and Nathan should be disqualified. Listen up, guys. We have President Trump speaking. OK. What does Trump say? President Trump's initial reply to Fannie's supplemental brief addresses only the argument for on forensic misconduct. In footnote one on page two of its brief, Fanny says that the evidence presented does not even come close to establishing that I, Fanny Willis, that my statements were part of a calculated plan evincing a design to president to prejudice the defendants in the minds of potential jurors. Sha la la la. This is quoting some case in 1988. All right. Trump's attorney Boot says, but Williams does not set that as the sole test or standard for all types of forensic misconduct. What Williams actually says is one of the primary examples of forensic misconduct consists of the improper expression by the prosecuting attorney of his personal belief in the defendant's guilt. In determining whether an improper statement of the prosecutor as to the defendant's guilt requires dis dis disqualification, the courts have taken into consideration whether such remarks were part of a calculated plan evincing a design to prejudice the defendant in the minds of the jurors 
or whether such remarks were inadvertent, albeit improper, utterances. Our case implicates a far more appalling and unforgivable mm. type of forensic misconduct, deliberately there we stoking go. racial and religious prejudice against defendant counsel and defendants testifying under oath untruthfully and committing fraud upon the tribunal in a prosecution of the president of the United States and other defendants. It involves one elected district attorney Willis's wonton playing both the race card and the religious card mm. up there in her extrajudicial Martin Luther King holiday church speech in Big Bethel, a calculated plan to prejudice defense counsel and the defendants in the minds of potential Fulton County jurors. And number two, elected district attorney Fannie Willis and her then lover she hired, Ooh. special assistant district attorney one Nathan Wade, testifying falsely in a hearing before the court on a material factual issue, i.e., whether their personal relationship, quote unquote, began before Nathan Wade was hired. While the state claims that no prosecutor has ever been disqualified in Georgia for forensic misconduct, no prosecutor in Georgia, elected or otherwise, has engaged in misconduct like Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade have heretofore. Mm -hmm. elected district attorney, constitutional officer, notwithstanding the remedy must fit the misconduct. The punishment must fit the crime. This court must not permit Fannie and or Nathan to continue to prosecute this case where they have flouted and violated our Georgia rules of professional conduct. To do otherwise will be viewed by the public and within the criminal justice system as an open license for prosecutors to engage in flagrant and egregious misconduct without repercussion or appropriate sanctions by the very court before which the misconduct occurred. Dismissal and disqualification are the appropriate remedies. Boots. There we go, Boots. That's it. That's all you had to say. One page. That's 17 it. 17 pages. One page. You see the difference. One page. So what's the point here, guys? The point is, in Fanny's thing, Fanny was like, oh, you know, no one's ever been disqualified for forensic misconduct, so we're not even going to worry about it. Boots is like, hold on, pimp. You, you, you're not just going to address this in one footnote and move on. Because it's true that no prosecuting attorney has been disqualified in Georgia for forensic misconduct. That's true. But there's always a first time. There's always a first time. Maybe this is the first time. Maybe the first time should be you. Mm -hmm. Fanny, maybe the first time should be you, Nathan. Why? Why? What did they do? Well, Fanny got up in front of the pulpit in Big Bethel AME. It's a famous black church down here. And according to Boots, she started lying. According to Boots, she started playing the race car. Oh, he's a black man. He's a black man. They're, they're attacking Nathan because he's a black man. She started playing the religious card. Talking about what God wants. God and wanted her to prosecute them. That's God wanted Fanny to prosecute President Donald Trump. Sounds like the religious card to me. 
Steve Sadow says. Steve Sadow says that's the religious card. When you say God wanted you to prosecute the president. You're saying that at Big Bethel, full of black people. What do attorneys in Fulton County know? That the jury boxes are always filled with black people. You as a prosecutor should not be seeking a win in these cases. Let lead fight for a win. Let Steve Sadow fight for a win. Defense attorneys, we can fight to win. Prosecutors should never fight to win a case. Prosecutors should fight for justice. Justice. In our criminal defense attorney, and our criminal defense, let's say, jurisprudence, in every state in the nation, there is this concept that it is better for 100 guilty people to go free than it is for one innocent person to go to prison. A hundred versus one. It's better to let go of a hundred criminals than it is to incarcerate one innocent man. A hundred to one. So if if you are representing the hundred, it's better that you win your cases. Try to win by any means necessary. But if you are the prosecutor, you should never try to win your case. You should always only seek justice. It's not a win or lose type of proposition. So why are you here in Big Bethel talking about you have a 95% win rate. What the fuck is your problem? Why are you telling all of these black people that God ordained you to prosecute this case? Why are you putting God in it at all? And why are you talking to all these black people in Fulton County knowing that that jury box is going to be full of black people in, in Fulton County? Jeez. The whole damn thing was televised. Nationally, too. It makes Georgia look bad. You're trying to influence the jury. That's mm-hmm. what Steve is saying. Mm-hmm. You're using the race card and the religious card to influence the potential jurors of this case. That is improper. That's what he's saying. All right, so do y'all, um, are y'all picking it up? Yeah. What I'm putting now, y'all, yeah, y'all getting it? Those are such great points, Lead. And here's the other thing. I'm thinking about the closing arguments. And with Boots, he stood on his square. Everything he said last Friday was reflected right here again. And mm. he's like, no, 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 Fanny, you got this in the footnote. You had half of it. Let me show you what the entire paragraph said. And let's go through that again. And instead of saying how it doesn't fit, I'm going to tell you how it does fit. It Mm -hmm. it doesn't fit because it does fit because of the church speech, right? It does fit because of lying. It does fit because of fraud. But here's the other thing. He did that beautifully in two and a half pages. You can tell Adam, the kid that was struggling, the fired post-it kid, wrote that other 17-page brief that we just read. You can tell. You can see the difference, right? Sometimes you don't need all of this stuff to con- like to have a really good argument. So that's why Boots is so good, right? He didn't, he actually didn't even go into her arguments about the five categories of cases that don't fit. He didn't even touch that. Mm-mm. We didn't need get to. through it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't need to. 100%. So yeah, if Boots is making some strong arguments here. Um, yeah. And so we, Let's keep it going. Or did we, did we read it all? Did we get it all of it? Yeah, we finished it. The only one we have left is Grandpa, because he came out swinging too. Man. Grandpa saw um, Fanny's brief, mm-hmm. and Grandpa put out, and you guys know, Bram- Grandpa and Boots probably had the best closing arguments. Yeah. Grandpa also responded to that 17-page brief that um, Fanny put out. 
I haven't read this one yet, but judging on how he argues, I also believe this one might be good. Yeah, so let's take a look at this one as well. Uh, let me bring it up here. This actually makes me miss being an attorney, man. Oh. Like, oh, <laughs> there we go, nostalgia. I miss I miss making these arguments. I really do. I really do. I I couldn't get behind uh, Fanny <laughs> Paul. I, mean, I couldn't get behind. I That's couldn't. Tough. I couldn't finish her damn thing. To be honest, she was yeah. born as hell. But I like I like Steve Sadow's, um I liked his arguments. I would have liked to to argue those. That's that's, that's nice. Steve did a great job on that. Yeah. All right, let's take a look here. Let's take a look. All righty, shout out to Betty Spaghetti gifting five TLA memberships. Thank you so much, the beautiful Betty Spaghetti. Betty. All right, let's see what uh, Grandpa has to say. It says in the Superior Court of Fulton County, state of Georgia where the lead attorney has practiced his entire life, state of Georgia, versus Jeffrey B. Clark. Jeffrey B. Clark's reply to the state supplemental post-hearing brief. Now comes Jeffrey Bosett Clark, defendant in the above entitled matter, and submits this reply to the state's supplemental post-hearing brief. Fanny argued in that brief, number one, that the standard of proof should be higher than a preponderance of the evidence. Number two, that an actual conflict of interest must be shown. Number three, that Fanny herself must have been shown uh, to have a personal financial interest in the conviction. And number four, that the defendant's evidence is insufficient to meet these standards for the reasons set forth below the state's arguments are without merit. Argument and citation of authority. Before turning to the merits of the state supplemental brief, it is necessary to observe that the district attorney, Fannie Willis, has ratified the perjury of Nathan Way. <laughs> So he says, hold up now, before we get into it, let's say, number one, <laughs> that Fanny has proven that Nathan lied. So before mm -hmm. we get into all this bullshit, time Go out. Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa's like, time out for a second, Judge. You see this shit over here? Fanny Willis just proved that Nathan lied in court. <laughs> I was like, damn, this shit ain't have nothing to do with what you're talking about. <laughs> it got way... <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. Because this has nothing to do at all with what the brief is about. He's supposed to be writing a brief about the legal standard, supposed to be writing a brief about conflict. He's like, hold up now. This ninja done lied in court and Fanny just- Let's go back away. there. Let's go back. He's wagging the finger. He's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little interesting right here. He's like, um, before we get into that, let's talk about this. All right, so- <laughs> this is so funny alright so what is what does grandpa say grandpa says Nathan Wade obviously lied under oh this is like when you argue with like your girlfriend or your wife and y'all talking about one thing and then she bring up a whole nother thing from two years ago and you're like wait a minute no let's talk about this so now y'all are running down that rabbit hole of two years ago right remember no, that time you forgot to buy the eggs exactly <laughs> exactly man somebody write women in the damn chat boy they will have you arguing about shit that happened two years ago that ain't got no relevance all right so grandpa has pulled out the woman card and now we talking about some damn perjury in an actual conflict versus uh uh and he says we're talking proof. about the citation of authority he he's actually going to combat what um fanny was saying about them not using right cases that's what the title says here yeah sorry so let's go first of all uh grandpa says <laughs> nathan wade obviously lied under oath in his testimony on February 15, 2024, when he was obviously attempting <laughs> to explain his false interrogatory responses in his divorce case. Mm -hmm. We are now 20 days past that testimony. In that intervening period, 
the district attorney, Fannie, has said and done nothing whatsoever to either disavow Nathan's perjured testimony or require him to correct it. This is a spectacular breach before all the world of her duty as district attorney to faithfully and impartially and without fear, favor, or affection discharge her duties as district attorney per OCGH section (laughs) 15-18-2 and of the duties of candor to the tribunal under rule of professional conduct 3.3. The reason for this state of affairs is obvious. It is in the district attorney's Fannie Willis's personal individual interest that Mr. Nathan Way's perjury go uncorrected. Miss Fannie Willis has ratified <laughs> Mr. Nathan Way's perjury by not repudiating it as her duties require. This district attorney's professional judgment has not been merely impaired by her conflicts of interest. It has been corrupted beyond redemption. That's fair I've ever read in my life. Oh my God. Oh my God, Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa said, time out. First of all, fuck all of these people. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. Corrupted beyond redemption, boy. (laughs) Grandpa said, you're rotten to the core. You're rotten to the core. All right. Then he's like, number one, standard of proof. what we were talking about. <laughs> said, Let me get it off. Oh my God. Grandpa was like, okay, okay, let's get back to what we were supposed to be talking about. I had to, I had to, I had to get that shit off my chest. But oh, now let's man. go, <laughs> let's go back. Oh my God. Grandpa is something else. He said corrupted <laughs> beyond redemption. Number one, standard of proof. <laughs> All right. So now what we're supposed to be talking about mm-hmm. says, uh, <laughs> The state argues that a preponderance of the evidence standard is too low for for the disqualification of Fannie. At the hearing, Mr. Clark identified six separate categories of disqualifying conflicts of interest, only one of which is subject to any conflict in evidence. Who is Mr. Clark? Is that uh, the attorney? That's That's his client. That's his client. So that's grandpa's client, Mr. Clark. That's grandpa's client. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's weird that he would say that like that. Why would he say that his client identified six separate categories? His client didn't testify, did he? I don't believe so. That is weirdly written, but. That is weird that grandpa wrote it like that. At any rate. Mm, the one category subject to a conflict in the evidence is the extent of the financial benefits received by Fannie from Nathan. The evidence that Nathan furnished Fannie with expensive travel and entertainment are credit card statements of undisputed authenticity. The contrary evidence relies entirely on a story about totally undocumented cash reimbursements that magically (laughs) netted to zero. It relies entirely on the testimony of Nathan Wade, an obvious perjurer and liar, and Miss Willis, a witness with a motive to lie, whose testimony (laughs) on the topic strains credulity and whose credibility on other material issues has been impeached. Considering issues of credibility, the evidence is sufficient under any standard of proof to find that Fannie received prohibited gifts 
and Dick from Nathan Wade and has a disqualifying financial conflict of interest in the investigation and prosecution of Donald J. Trump. We expect the other defendants will be rebutting the state's argument on this point in greater detail. Moreover, importantly, for purposes of this reply brief, the state makes no attempt to rebut any of the other grounds of disqualification offered by Mr. Claw. The district attorney's personal and political ambitions, mm. the complementary pattern of deceit and concealment of the relationship and the money. Mm-hmm. The speech at the church, Big Bethel, the, the, the motion for a protective order filed in Nathan's divorce, and the conduct of the state's defense of the motion to disqualify. These conflicts all rest on undisputed facts. Even if the standard of proof were metaphys- were metaphysical certitude. <laughs> Grandpa is talking like he's from the 1880s. Metaphysical certitude? <laughs> Come on, Grandpa, man. It's 2024. All right. Grandpa, this Shakespeare here. All right. Even if the standard of proof were metaphysical certitude, it would be met as to these five types of conflict of interest. Actual conflicts. And remember, guys, there was this whole thing about whether you needed an actual conflict or an appearance of a conflict. Appearance versus actual, right? Actual conflict. The state argues that an actual conflict of interest is required rather than an appearance of impropriety and that the required interest must be financial and that it must be in conviction. There are compound errors in these arguments. You want to pick it up here? Yes. First, Mr. Clark's argument at the hearing assumed that the actual conflict standard applied. The state never even attempts to answer the argument that the evidence shows a half dozen actual conflicts of interest, five of which rest on undisputed facts. Mm. Second, The state attempts to disentangle what it claims are in opposite authorities relied upon by the defendants, but in doing so itself conflates the standards for disqualification of prosecutors with those for post-conviction relief based on a claim of ineffective assistance by conflicted defense counsel under the Sixth Amendment. Uh, Lamb was a case of the latter type in which the defendant who raised no objection at trial was required to show that the conflict adversely affect his lawyer's performance by depriving him of the undivided loyalty of counsel. While criminal defendants are not entitled to pick their prosecutor, they are entitled to unconflicted, disinterested prosecutor who does not operate in violation of their statutory oath of impartiality of the rules of professional conduct, right? He cites another case. So in Young, the court held um, the requirement of a disinterested prosecutor is consistent with that trend since a scheme injecting a personal interest, financial and otherwise, into the enforcement process may be may bring irrelevant or impersonable facts into the prosecutorial decision. As evidence for this trend, the court, the court in footnote 19 cited the Brotherhood case, um, 1969. Yeah, grandpa's go, he's reaching for the proposition that the the proposition that the appointment of interested prosecutor was a due process violation. Moreover, courts have an independent interest in ensuring that criminal trials are conducted within the ethical standards of the profession and that the legal proceedings appear to to fair to those who observe them. Unlike- Um, Let me jump in here. So what she's saying, what he's saying is Fanny said that you don't get the right to choose your prosecutor. And grandpa's like, yeah, you don't get to choose your prosecutor. But you do have the right to have a a fair prosecutor, an impartial prosecutor, and a prosecutor who is not conflicted, Mm -hmm. right? Prosecutor is not conflicted. 
Let me jump in here for a second, though. I see y'all are asking to come on in. Y'all have uh -oh. got my likes looking right. Thank you so much. I always like to have the likes in proportion to the uh, to the members who are participating in the chat. So y'all, I like to keep them at like 50 50 percent. All right. So let me bring y'all in now that y'all are cooperating with my likes. <laughs> come on in, guys. Come Welcome. on in. All right. Welcome back. Everybody, come on in. <laughs> and uh, when you come in, put yes, Nathan and Fanny should be disqualified or put no, that they should not be disqualified. Put yes, if you think Fanny should be disqualified. Put no, if you think that Fanny and Nathan should not be disqualified. That poll but, looks good too. 4,000 votes. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any uh, cash apps that you want to shout out? I do. I saw one come in, uh, $25. This one comes from Natalie, AKA the legal goods wife. She says blessings to you. Thank you so much, Natalie. That was very, very sweet. And when I got this, I actually went and subscribed to the legal good. Shout out to the legal good. <laughs> shout out to the legal goods wife. That and was really nice. Yes. And shout out to legal good. Y'all go check him out. Attorney. We need more attorneys in this space. Um, so shout out to the legal good. If one of the mods could drop the legal goods channel in the chat. Also, let me shout out to my man, Nasho Nabo. Y'all know Nasho. God. Shout out to Nasho Nabo. Man, Nasho been riding with your boy for the longest. Supporting me, supporting these streams, supporting you. Uh, 9,000 people in here, and Nasho is supporting the content so generously. We're all in here chatting and commenting and supporting, but there are a few of y'all that go way above and beyond. Clearly, Nasho Nabo is one of them. Been strongly supporting your boy for ages. Ages. Somebody write Nasho in the damn chat, please. I don't ask y'all for much, man, but somebody please, 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 please. Um, shout out my man, Nasho Nabo. What does Nasho say? So God chose a nepotistic homewrecker and an adulterous lie to fight this case. Lady, you weren't ordained by God. You were <laughs> ordained by Satan. No, <laughs> not by Satan. <laughs> Nasho went hardcore. Natural elbow went hard. Go and say Satan in the house. <laughs> I was gonna say somebody write Satan, but don't do oh that. My, don't oh my gosh. <laughs> do that. Oh my gosh. Talk about talk about. And grandpa was like, oh, we're gonna get to the actual conflict. But first of all, why was y'all fucking at the dog at the dog? What is it? Dog Dogwood. <laughs> Why were y'all fucking? Grandpa wanted, he had some questions. He had some mm -hmm. shit to get off his chest. All right. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Grandpa. Shout out to that show, Dabo. This supporting your boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody wrote Lucifer. It's bad enough, man. When, I'll tell you guys, I've been on YouTube three years and my top, I have, y'all criticize me for everything up under the sun, everything. Um, but one of the, one of the most consistent, uh, one of the most consistent criticisms I get is because I say, God damn, right? So I'm using the Lord name in vain. There's a lot of Christians on YouTube, apparently. So I thought about that. I was like, you know, don't shout out Lucifer, right? <laughs> I'm not that much of a heathen. Okay, it's like, come on now. Come on, come on. So we need to shout out. But that show, boy, it, it can't be that the Lord would want Fanny to administer this Donald Trump case this way. This is not really the best way. All the lying, the perjury, the secrecy, the scandal. You know, this is not this is not really what the Lord wanted for us, right? If we can be honest. If we can be honest. So shout out to my man Nasho Nabo. E mira no más a part of that we got my man again dub right side. Yeah. Shout out to Dub Right Side. What does Dub say? Thank you, man. Y'all know Dub Right Side. Dub is supporting your boy. Came up the other day, didn't he? Wasn't he on the panel? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Dub Right Side. Says salute TLA and the beautiful AV to the seven. All this could have been avoided if Fanny told the truth from the beginning. 
but God chose you to do this, okay? You were standing right there in Big Bethel. All mm -hmm. you had to do was tell the truth. Dub right side is so right. Listen, guys, I don't I don't ever ask y'all to, to do anything, but somebody please write dub, dub right side in the chat. Thank dub you right so, right. so much. Thank you so, so much, Dub right side. Dub's absolutely right. If if they would have just told the truth, if Nathan would have told the truth, if Fanny would have told the truth, all of this would have been over. Yeah. Why are we still even fighting this? Yeah, it doesn't the crazy make... part. It's like uh so sorry to interrupt you, by the no, way. Um, the crazy part is everything that Ashley said in her testimony, like less than 48 hours ago. And that was seen across the world. Yes. So he has such a great point here. Yes. Everybody lying up in there. Nathan lying, Fanny lying. Let's not even talk about Terrence. No, okay. Let's not even talk about Terrence. You know, shit, it came out of damn near Terrence, damn near raping women out there. I'm like, shit, Terrence, like, God damn, and you're married? <laughs> and you're married? Allegedly. Allegedly. You know, he hasn't been arrested for anything. He hasn't been charged with anything. He hasn't been convicted of anything. So let's say that. This man is completely innocent of all charges. Completely. Now, he did leave $20,000, $30,000 in his escrow account that went directly to one of the victims allegedly and he admitted that the, the the money that he left in the escrow account went straight to one of the women but he hasn't been arrested hasn't been convicted so he's good he's good all right <laughs> thank you so so much dub right side and you're exactly right god really wanted would have wanted this case to be handled in such a different way this has really just been I'll be honest with you guys. I've, I've been here for 20 years. I was born and raised in Atlanta. And if you were born and raised in Atlanta, you know Atlanta has never been corrupt, corrupt. It's never been like a Chicago. It's never been like a New York with the mob and all that. Atlanta has been, it's been like corrupt with a, a, a small, a lowercase c. When I think of Chicago, Look at the stuff with the Tiffany Henyard shit. It's like, God damn. Atlanta's never been corrupt like that. But it's always been corrupt with a, a small C. And all, all of Atlanta's, we all known it. We didn't even talk about the... you. Everybody's talking about Fan, uh, Fannie Willis. None of y'all know about our previous DA. None of y'all know about Paul. Boy, I might have to do a whole live stream on Paul. Like... Y'all gonna be like, okay, y'all ninjas were crunk from the beginning. <laughs> All right. Never should have let y'all ninjas have the Olympics. <laughs> All right. Back in 1996, where I mean, it goes all the way back. Bill, uh, Bill Campbell? Y'all don't know about Bill Campbell, boy. Y'all don't know something about some of our mayors. So, the great thing about our corruption, though, is that number one is small, and number two, it's always been a secret. Everybody knows about the mob in New York. Everybody knows about the bullshit in Chicago, Detroit. None of y'all have known about our stuff. We were doing really good to keep our stuff in house. Two years ago, y'all ain't really know how Atlanta got down. But now Fanny is exposing all of this kind of like how we're corrupt, kind of showing our dirty laundry. So Dove right side is exactly right, man. Please don't bring up God because God did not want you to uh <laughs> to uh to handle the case this way. So somebody write Dove in the Dane chat, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dove. Thank you. All right, so uh let us keep it going here. Where were we? We were reading, is that right? Yeah, we're finishing up grandpa's his brief. All right. Do you, uh, do you want to keep it going here? Yeah. So Grandpa says, unlike the post-conviction Sixth Amendment ineffective assistance of counsel cases, if the dis assigned prosecutor has acquired a personal interest or a stake in a conviction, the trial court abuses its discretion in denying a motion to disqualify him. And the defendant is entitled to a new trial, even without a showing of prejudice. Thus, if the disqualifications motions are denied, an appellate court finds that the district attorney should have been disqualified, then any defendant convicted 
would be entitled to a new trial without a showing of prejudice. Mm. The, the state also argues that the only interest which is disqualifying is a personal interest in conviction. This ignores that a prosecutor's statutory duty of impartiality inheres in every official act they take, not just conviction. Okay. Yeah, I'll read all that. Okay. Keep going. All right. So he also talks about, yep, these are more cases he's citing. I think Grandpa had a lot of cases that she is talking about in those five categories because he seems to be defending his position. Look at Nichols. That's in 1916. Jesus, that's all. He said, here, Mr. Wade was paid over $650,000 over a two-year period, beginning long before the indictment and long before any conviction. And the district attorney received gifts from him during this period. She, therefore, had a personal interest in the case that was operative at the time of indictment. The state's suggestion that this does not matter because the interest must be in conviction alone, should be rejected because it is premised on a false notion that prosecutors have no duties of impartiality at any other time in the progress of a criminal case. Mm. Um, Here he says the state argues at page 14 that it has found no cases of disqualification based off of personal interests that do not involve a pecuniary, pecuniary interest, so money. In, convic- in conviction, the state has apparently failed to notice one of the principal authorities relied upon by the defendants. He's citing Lo- um, McLaughlin. In McLaughlin, there were not one but two non-pecuniary in- conflicts that required disqualification. The first was the conflict between the DA's duties as a witness and an advocate. And the second was his daughter's close relationship with the victim gave him a personal interest in the case. The state's argument about what Georgia law regards as disqualifying conflict of interest is without merit because it is contrary to binding Supreme Court authority. That's Mm. a good one. (laughs) Lastly, the state makes frequent reference to the DA's status as an an elected constitutional officer, the queen, referring to her as being elected 20 (laughs) times in the supplemental brief. The state suggests that her status as elected should make the court more reluctant to to disqualify her. In fact, however, Miss Willis's status as the elected DA subjects subjects her to an elevated, not a lesser standard of conduct, that of Caesar's wife. Interesting, interesting. Says impaired professional judgment as a result of an actual conflict. Uh, who is this? His grandpa, right? Yep. Says a lawyer's conflict of interest is not waivable and is disqual and is disqualifying when it impairs the lawyer's independent professional. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> He's like, Grandpa, like the, the beginning was good, but you've put uh, me to sleep, Grandpa. Yeah, Grandpa. Is. Okay, so yeah. it, it is. But shout out to Grandpa. Yeah. So what do y'all think, guys? These are these are pretty legalistic, right? These are pretty legalistic. They are fighting here. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the link, and I want a few of you guys to come up. Come up and tell everybody what you think. There's 8,000 people in here. Come tell 8,000 people what your views are. Now, there's two rules when you come up. Now, the first rule is you have to believe in your heart that even though you hit the link, you will not be called up. Uh, because most of you will not. Y'all see I'm running out of energy. And uh, we're just going to get a few of y'all's opinions, and then we're going to be out. Preference will be given to people who have not come up before, and also people who've done crazy support of the show. Absolutely, we want to get their opinion as well. Uh, The second rule is that you need to have your camera on so that we know who we are talking to. As y'all are coming in, want to give a big shout-out to... Danita, shout out to Danita. Thank you so much, Danita. Carl Deal says, new to the group, loving the content. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Danita, this is her first super chat. I love it. I love it when it is the first super chat. So thank you so much. Uh, I am going to read the ones that are 20 and up just to um, kind of get through them all. We got a lot of people blessing, though, a lot of people. 
Shout out to Lissandra. Shout out to Till Films. Till Films always supporting. Says uh, TLA, rr, TLA looking forward to another quality episode. What's up with the struggle streaming already? Let's start the show. 100%. Let's start the show. Uh, who else we got? I'm a, um, let's do this. Let's jump into some people here. Let us bring up our brother. We got the legal good. Hey. Got another attorney in the house in a blue suit. All right. <laughs> uh, What's going on, Lee? Man, thank you so much for coming up. Your, your support of the show has just been amazing. I really want to thank you, brother. And uh, you have your own YouTube channel as well, right? Tell these 8,000 people where they can where they can reach you and what your channel is about. I do. Um, it's at The Legal Good. And uh, basically, my channel is about all things legal. Right now, I'm doing uh, several things regarding Donald Trump. It has nothing to do with the Fannie Willis trial, but uh, some of his immunity uh, issues and things of that nature. Awesome. I like that tie, too. That's a real nice tie. Appreciate that, my yeah, wife. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to your wife, man. That's a real nice time. Also, listen, if you're doing Donald Trump stuff, there's no reason not to not to do some of this. There's a ton of interest in this, and everybody would like to know kind of your opinion on it. You are an attorney yourself, so I absolutely think you should jump on in this and uh, give some of your opinions on your, on your own channel. But since you are here, please give us your opinions as well over here. Y'all go check out my man. Go subscribe to him. Kind of what's your thoughts on this whole situation with Fanny, Nathan, and the uh, Donald one Donald J. Trump? So the problem I see here is that even though prosecutors have a, a, a heightened, you, you have to have a heightened showing with respect to prosecutors, the underlying issue is whether or not there's the appearance of impropriety. We have to have faith in our criminal justice system. You have to have faith in, in our justice system as a whole, but especially the criminal aspect of it. And as long as uh, Fannie and Nathan are allowed to, uh, to continue prosecuting this thing, um, there's going to be a whole swath of the country that isn't going to um, have faith that, the, the, that justice was actually done here, no matter what happens. And that's going to be a problem, uh, especially given the, the person who is the defendant in this case, and the fact that he's running for president again. Um, if he, at some point, is a, a not elected president, there could be a, a, a big problem if this is the reason. Um, so I, I think just for practical reasons, the and disqualification should happen. You think, okay, so that they would be disqualified, Nathan and Fanny. And then do you think another um, another county should pick this up or do you think the county should just kind of let it go away? Kind of what's your what's your take on that? So another I think another county should definitely pick it up. But as to whether or not another county should prosecute, that's up to the that that prosecutor. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but at least we know we have a disinterested official looking at this and deciding whether the allegations are something that can be prosecuted. Mm, mm, interesting. And do you think it would kind of be a miscarriage of justice if Donald Trump did, let's say, make some phone calls or do some type of actions that were interfering with the elections? And because of Fannie's and Nathan's indiscretions, you know, those those violations, those potential crimes go go. I guess they just go down the drain. Do you think that's the right result or uh, does that give you some pause or what do you think about that? So I don't think any, if, if anybody committed a crime, I think they should be held accountable for it. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather see continued faith in the justice system than to see uh, somebody prosecuted for a crime. So I'm not passing judgment on whether or not uh, Don, uh, President Trump did something wrong. Um, I'm passing judgment on the appearance of uh, Fanny and, and Nathan's impropriety with respect to this case. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether Donald Trump uh, uh, committed a crime, if we have to use Fanny and Nathan to prosecute him, then he should, he should not be prosecuted. If that is the requirement, then he shouldn't be prosecuted. A hundred percent, right? It's like 
no matter what anybody did, the, the prosecution kind of needs to be uh, above board, right? Because if the prosecution is is not above board, it kind of doesn't matter what the person did or didn't do, right? You, you're just going to get railroaded or, or, or ju the justice system is not going to work. So I, I completely agree with you on that point. You know, there were some issues about alleged perjury and lying. Um, what's your take, especially you being an attorney? So, you know, we 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 kind of have a special affinity to our bar cards, right? What's your what's your opinion on whether there should be sanctions given what's happened and and the extent of those sanctions to Nathan and Fanny? So th that's another another aspect that is important because the, the judge in this case has several possible remedies here, and one of them is 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 sanctioning. But even if he chooses to disqualify, he can still issue sanctions, right? Sanctions, I think, are the lowest possible uh, result here. And even if he chooses to disqualify Fannie, Fannie should definitely get sanctioned. Because mm. even though we, you know, you kind of, you kind of made light of uh, Grandpa's argument that she... <laughs> basically said you know she she uh permitted this this lie to go forth mm -hmm. um he he made a a good point you can't sit back and let somebody on your team lie under oath you can't do that um so maybe you need a special prosecutor for the special prosecutor <laughs> 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 we're, going, we're going deep in something right now, right? <laughs> uh, let, let the taxpayers fit that bill, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, let's be honest, it would be weird to have her prosecuting Nathan. Like, can we be honest? Right, right. You would you, I mean, you would so she dropped the, she dropped the case. So yeah, right. <laughs> <You're> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. So you're saying I'm making light of it, but it's really like, you know, she really would need a special prosecutor to certainly, she certainly. would not be the person to 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 kind of try to correct that necessarily herself, right? Right. You would right. need somebody that's independent, maybe somebody like a Cindy Yeager or somebody like that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's um it's super interesting. What do you think about Nathan? You know, I saw me and AV <laughs> cover the hearing, the ethics hearing that uh, Ashley Merchant did yesterday or the day before. And one of the things that came out, you know, was the mismanagement of mm -hmm. Nathan's IOLTA account. Oh, yeah. Apparently, he, you know, for, for everybody, an IOLTA account is just a, a trust account that attorneys have to have. And we keep our clients' money in the account. And so the key to remember, guys, is that our Ulta account is for clients' money. And then our operating account is for our money. But we're not allowed to put our money into uh, the client's trust account, into our Ulta accounts. And for some reason, the bars have, uh, very, they have a hard on for these Ulta accounts. You know, they could be strict about a lot of things. But one of the places that they're most strict on is the proper management of the IOLTA accounts. And it appears that Nathan was putting money or hiding money, his personal money, in his IOLTA accounts. And this is uh, apart from, you know, maybe the perjury that was going on. Uh, Nathan, as an officer of the court, an attorney and a judge. So, guys, we also have to remember that, you know, when when we cross examine you guys on the stand, y'all lie all the time. And usually perjury, you know, it's, it's, it's really not in play because so many people lie on the stand. Almost everybody lies if you leave them up there long enough or says something that's not true or, you know, get something mixed up. But y'all are just regular people. But imagine if you're an attorney, you know, you have a, a special candor to the court and then you're a judge on top of that. And then you're lying to the court or you're lying under oath. You know, some of his uh, documents that were submitted in his divorce were not accurate. You know, he put down that he only had $2,000 to his name when he was making $14,000 a month and this and that. You know, maybe some of that money was hidden in those same trust accounts. What sanctions do you think kind of globally would fit for someone like Nathan who has these various violation slash indiscretions so i'm i'm a florida attorney 
Mm -hmm. So I got to look at look at this through a Florida lens because I don't know what ethics opinions say up in Georgia. Mm -hmm. But down here, one of the big reasons that you have to keep these accounts separate. And and as a caveat, though, we are allowed to put operating account money into the trust account if the client has paid you by, so let's say, a check and they have commingled the uh, trust funds with the uh, operating funds, you can, you have to, at, as a matter of fact, temporarily, at least in Florida, put those operating funds into the IOTA account because you cannot ever put trust funds into your operating account. Right. Right. But you then have to go in and make the transfer to your operating account to, to, to parse, to pull those trust, those, those operating funds out. But and I would imagine that would all, it would also need to be like pretty much immediate, right? It's, can y'all just leave it in there? Yeah. Like, oh. no. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah. one of the big reasons for that is because a lot of, especially criminal defense attorneys, uh, were essentially laundering money for their criminal defendants by using their IOLTA account. So oh, they would, you really are in Florida. <laughs> they would, like, that, that, wow. The panhandle state. <laughs> wow, okay, you would be down there by Miami or something. That's, that's a new one on me. Wow, laundering money through your IOLTA account. Mm. Right. Man, y'all are dirty down there, man. That's that's a, that's a new one. So okay, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sanction, the sanction there is... is you're disbarred. A hundred percent. Yes. So, you know, what do you think should happen to Nathan with his violations of the um, IOLTA account, with his testimony in some of these hearings, testimony that looked to be, let's say, inaccurate? Um, you know, the the his answers in his divorce case, which were sworn talking about he never cheated on his wife, even though he's still married and was having sex with Fanny, you know, talking about he only had $2,000 to his name or whatever in his checking accounts. What's your, what's your, what's your take on that? Well, look, I can get disbarred if, if I have, if I'm too far in debt, right? So if, if ethics for an attorney can go that far, then lying to a tribunal uh, commingling your funds in your operating and, and trust account, all of these things that Nathan Wade allegedly did. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> there, there, there's really no choice but to seek to disbar him. Um, and I, can, I can't imagine, at least here in Florida, we also have the duty to self-report if we've committed an ethics violation. Mm. So we got to yeah. tell on ourselves, and he That's didn't do true. that. So that in itself is an ethics violation. So we're talking about multiple ethics violations here. And uh, I can't imagine that he's going to have his license very long. Yeah. And guys, there's really no word more scary to an attorney than disembarment. I know y'all hear us talking about it, this and that, but y'all really don't know. It's like, this is typically our only way to make money. You know, if you've been a lawyer for three years, well, you know, maybe you could do something else. But if you've been a lawyer as long as Nate, Nathan has, you know, I would imagine he's been a lawyer for at least 20 years. I think his his partner, Terrence, said he had been a lawyer. For, Terrence said that Terrence had been a lawyer for like 17 years or something like that. Once you're a lawyer for 17 years, you, you really don't know how to do anything else. And so if think about you... retirement. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It's that's a scary proposition to get a letter from a bar and you know you got a hearing and you know you got all these ethics violations and usually, you know, your your indiscretions would be private. If you messed up your IOLTA account, no one's going to know that but you and the client, you know, maybe a few other clients cuz your account's probably pretty messed up so, you know, maybe other clients are affected, but it's not going to be that the public knows. Even though these things are, you know, can be public, you can get a public reprimand. You can check on your state bar's website to see if an attorney's been uh, sanctioned or disbarred. But you know, no one checks. But Nathan's indiscretions have just been on full view uh, across the country, and certainly on YouTube on a daily basis. And so, there's going to be pressure even within the state bar to be like, "Hey, man, you don't want to say that we have to set an example." 
But if this dude doesn't get barred, we can't disbar anybody else. I mean, the the IOLTA account violations alone, the lying, he has these extra standards that he should meet being an attorney, being a judge himself. We talked about Fanny and the appearance of impropriety. What would be the appearance if Nathan were not sanctioned severely? Yeah. So there's a part of me, of course, all attorneys, man, you know, you're not going to really hear an attorney say, please disbar this guy because that's just, I mean, God, you know, it's like a cop telling on a cop, you know, <laughs> like, God, it, could you just know how important it is? But if we're going to be honest and truthful, you're just like, <sighs> doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. It doesn't. It doesn't. At any rate, listen, thank you so, so much to Legal Good for coming up. Please, guys, y'all go check out the Legal Good. Legal Good, man, just a recommendation. Do some do some of this content. Uh, people are blowing up over it. You're an attorney. You have specialized knowledge, specialized training. People would absolutely want to hear your opinion. You have not necessarily a better opinion than people, but a different opinion based on your 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 training and your experience and you know what you've lived as an attorney. And we need more attorneys on 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 this platform. There are relatively very few. So don't oh, yeah. just do Donald Trump stuff. Think I mean, if you're going to do that, do this, do some of this too, and you'll. You'll 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 see a lot of growth on your channel, and you'll see a lot of people rocking with you. I appreciate everything you've done, uh, Lee, and uh, I love the content. So keep it up. Thank you so much. So shout out to the Legal Good. If one of the mods could drop the Legal Good channel in the chat, thank you so much, brother, for coming up. You can come thank up. You and AB both. All Hi. right. Let us keep it going. Let us keep it going. Let's swing up. Um, Tamara, am I saying that correctly? Tamara? Correct. It's Tamara. It's Tamara. Tamara. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Tamara, for coming up. What, thank is you. Your, what is your take on this whole Nathan Wade, Fannie Willis, Donald Trump situation? Well, I'm the minority on here. I'm still Team Fannie. Um, team also, Fannie. All right. Fanny. Somebody. I'm Queen Madam Fannie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's funny, so I want to make sure I say her name right. Yeah, I put some respect on um, her today. I am still very much, um, because I feel like, one, there needs to be a little bit of grace. Uh, two, like you said, attorneys are fucking attorneys, okay? Period. They're doing that. I'm just keeping it honest and keeping it real. You know, I, I'm not going to say that they had a relationship prior to, but I will say that I can see how people, you know, you're working together, you know, she's running for DA, you know, this guy was, you know, a, a judge, you're like, wait, what do I do? What, you know, people get close. People are human. Okay. We're not talking about somebody grabbing somebody by the P, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're talking about people who are working together and they got close and here it is. Now, is it right that she sat up there if they had a relationship prior to, you know, I was like, damn, you know, I was rooting for her all the way. And then I was just like, girl, what did you, what are you doing? You making us all look bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's hard because I'm a doctor and it's like, you know, when you're in these professions, you know, it's like, Oh my God, are you serious right now? You know, the way she came in the court, you know, it's like, yeah, I was just like, please, can you think you about that? Down? I like can you bring it down a little bit, but <laughs> you know, when you're in, when that adrenaline is pumping and you're in your emotions and you're trying to defend yourself, and you know, she's like, you all are acting like I slept with him on the first night. That's not what went down, you know. But you don't spill the uh, the tea about what be going on. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe you see that yourself. Maybe some doctors with some nurses oh, or. Yeah. Well, I'm, on the, I'm on the psychology side. I mean, on the uh, science um, side, but Got you. I, at the end of the day, it's like you brought this case against him because you have proof, regardless of the fact Donald made the call. This is where it started. He made the call. And he, therefore, the secretary of what is it? The secretary, what's his name? Rossesburg, whatever his name is with the um, secretary of state. Mm -hmm. He's the one that divulged the information because he felt that what he was doing was improper. So if you're saying find me 11,000 votes, OK, well, how, how are you supposed to find it? Right. <laughs> you know, votes are in, how, where are they coming from? So on that behalf, yes, he should have been brought to court for that, for that. But it's 
I think they should just take Nathan off. I think she needs to offer an apology, you know, say she was in her emotions. But the reason why they're coming after her because she doing her job at the end of the day, look at how many people have fallen. So of course they're going to come after you. They're going to come after you because they're trying to get this case dropped. And you and I both know I'm in Douglas County next. Mm. To cop, okay. Yes. You and I both know that if it goes to cop, if it go to Gwinnett, if it go to Douglas, if it go to, um, oh, yeah, Forsyth County, <laughs> it has been dismissed. And, you know, I'm more of an independent, but at the end of the day, um, Nathan need to be off. Terrence need his ass whoop, and because <laughs> we wouldn't even be here. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if it weren't for Terrence. What a wait now, wait now, wait, 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 wait. Oh, now Terrence is over there trying to get the Pantene cookies, as you guys have been saying the whole time. Terrence, Terrence, Terrence I'm sorry. When you said Terrence, I was thinking about the. Uh, I was thinking about Nathan. Okay, yeah, Terrence is a piece of no, shit. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a- who needs? And I mean, friends, if you got enemies like that, I mean, talk about dry hating the whole time. Exactly. Like Don't what you. transpired between them that he that he felt um, again, wrong is wrong. I'm not saying that. But the fact that you felt that much to divulge that kind of information, and this is supposedly your boy, you say on the on the stand, well, we that's my friend. Oh God, I wouldn't want you as my friend. He literally said that on the stand. Yeah. Wow. How, how would you feel? Yeah, I would I'd be wanting to hurt him. And and to be fair, he might have received some threats because now his whole testimony is flipped from what he was telling Miss Pantene. But for, for her to say uh Pantene um merchant to say well he was concerned about how he was treating women girl bye he's sitting up here SA people okay mm-hmm. she did his wife right. so how was he so concerned about somebody else's wife and let's let's keep it straight oh girl cheated on Nathan with his best friend are you serious right so everybody in the bed doing something okay (laughs) everybody in the bed doing something but I do have to say I'm grateful for the um the show I've been you know I I can't dang work because you know you've been coming on I'm like dang it's five six (laughs) hours I bought your class today so I'm grateful you bought the course guys (laughs) you bought the course listen so many professionals are trying to get on YouTube it's like okay we've done this whole professional thing it was cool, right? Shout out to Fanny. That was cute, but now, like, let, let's go to get this buddy. Let me ask you before you go, though. I do think it's interesting. You're saying that you think that Nathan should be out, but are you saying that Fanny should still take the case? And if so, why should Nathan be out, but Fanny still be in? Well, it's like this. I think that from a standpoint of to appease, okay, since mm-hmm. you it's not qualified, but look at the work, what the work has been done. You know, Sydney Powell, you know, people were, hey, dry snitch say, hey, I, I'm going to turn it in. I'm going to, you know, turn, yeah, I'm going to give the evidence. I'm going to, whatever the case may be. Fanny was doing her job, but she had a team. So you can say what you want about Nathan that all he was doing was civil. But evidently, he knew something. Otherwise, Pantene wouldn't have been sitting up here with her shorts and her T-shirt and all the stuff rooting for him if he wasn't a good attorney, regardless of where it stands. You're saying that you have three levels of a, you know, where an attorney needs to be. But evidently, he was good at what he does. It, I mean, aren't you good at what you do, Let's Lee? Jump in, though. Let's jump in. Ashley was supporting Nathan to become a judge. Ashley was not supporting Nathan to become a special prosecutor. True that. Apparently, Nathan has only prosecuted misdemeanor cases. And so when you're saying, oh, well, Ashley herself was supporting Nathan, Ashley was not supporting Nathan to become a prosecutor, just a judge. And being a judge and a prosecutor, two different things. True. Right? True. It's hard to argue that Nathan is qualified to be a special prosecutor over an extremely complex RICO case when he's never even prosecuted a felony in his life. Right? Look, Fonny's can uh, be fair. Can you can you agree to that? I'm being f- fair. I personally think 
that she may pull through this. I don't, I don't know. I, my let me, let me pin you down. Is Nathan qualified to handle this uh, Rico case with Donald Trump or not? I'm I'm fifty fifty on that. All right. What's the fifty fifty? What's the fifty in support that he's qualified? Because he was born and funny. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, you telling the truth. You telling the truth. You telling the truth. I, mean, I think part of it is you're right. It wasn't for a prosecution. It, you know, I mean, it wasn't for district attorney or whatever. It was for him being a judge. But and he didn't even get it. So let's even say that. Like he say, he, he did not get the judgeship. He tried okay. multiple times to get the judgeship and never got it. Well, this is one of the reasons why I'm like, hey, somebody got to go. Is it gonna be me? Is it gonna be you? All right, but let's let's go back though. So is Nathan qualified? Based on what you're saying, I guess not. Oh, <laughs> you gotta pin these women down. Pin these women down. <laughs> I I personally I want Fawny to, you know, I want her to to come out of this. Is it because I'm a black woman, a professional black? Absolutely. That's part oh, of it. And I love it. Absolutely. It, it, That's part it, it, of it. If we're biased, if we're prejudiced, say it. I'm biased, man. Don't try to. I'm not prejudiced. Me. I'm not prejudiced, but yeah, I, I, I can say, say well, you know, we've all got biases, right? But if we're biased, right. say, hey, man, I'm a black woman. Fanny's a black woman. I don't care what she do. She needs to show her some grace. I'm like, I'm like, show her some grace. I, well, I'm saying this. Let the her grace her is me. because she is a bulldog. You and I both know what she did in investigating that case with the school system. Why did she get appointed to be the district attorney? Because she was good at what she does. So I, on that behalf, just some of the things I've seen her do, and I've been riding with her. I'm in Douglas County. I'm not even in Fulton. But I'm like, okay, the girl is good at what she does. So I'm like, okay, Nathan, you got to go because we ain't finished it up here and sacrifice Fanny for your BS. You know, I made sure I have my notes. Who, who chose Nathan? She did. She did. I mean, <laughs> come on. Where is the accountability? Right? Where is the responsibility? Why is okay. it? Okay. Well, since you're saying that, who told Donald Trump to call and ask for 11,000 votes? We can talk about that, but let's stay on topic. Y'all remember when I said 20 minutes ago that women don't try to take it, they'll go from point to point. They don't like when you pin them down. Sometimes you gotta grab a woman and you gotta pin her down. All right? You have an OP, okay. You gotta grab her by the wrist and then hold her down on that bed and pin her down. Listen, we can talk all about Trump, but let's talk about Fanny's decision-making. You're saying that Nathan needs to be sacrificed because Nathan did all these things, but there's only one person on this earth that chose Nathan. No, I mean, she should. I think that she should. I think you said something about that. That certain things happen. You can go to some classes or whatever it was. I was like, something needs to happen for sure. But I still don't think that she needs to be taken off of the case. But I think that Nathan should be removed, period. That's my that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it, and I'm not changing. Sure. Sticking to it, guys. Not <laughs> <it. laughs> I'm not. You know, so will, will you admit that you're kind of playing the race card a little bit, saying that you're a black woman, she's a black woman, so you're playing the race of your gender card, and you just said, I'm just gonna ride with Fanny because you know we're the same. And I'm playing the God card too. Then, if that's the case, he said the God card at the same time. Because let's be honest, we have every nationality on here. They doing the same thing. Let's be real. They for they for merchant. They for pop pop. They for the come, let's let's just keep it real. They're biased as well. So I'm not going to sit up here and say that I'm not being a little bit biased. I wanted to win. I wanted to pull through this. I wanted to show that you can turn something around, that you made a mistake, own up to it, and do your damn job. That's what I want to see. I want to see her own up, apologize, and do the job, period. And had they just straight up said, yeah, we boning, we, we wouldn't even be here right now. So let me ask you, if she, you wanted to apologize, which I think an, an apology would, would, would be helpful, to mm -hmm. the citizens of Fulton County. Correct. If, if she does not apologize, then would you want her to be out? No. 
I still wow. So it just don't even it, it don't even matter. It, it don't even matter. Like I still yeah. want to apologize though. I mean, look when if she don't apologize, it don't matter either way. I no, I still think that she. I mean, there is a level of arrogancy, but you got to have a level. I mean. Come on, Lee, you got a little bit of arrogancy, too. I mean, as an attorney, you got to have that confidence within yourself that you can get through. A.V. got swag confidence over there. OK, you got to have a level of confidence. So it's like, <laughs> look at the look at what she's been turning in. I mean, every day somebody um, um, putting something in because they're fighting back and forth. She's fighting for her livelihood. Now, let's not let's also keep it real, too, because if she lose this case, she is destroyed. True. And for them to sit up here and say that you, it was quite insulting to make it seem as if black folk, and it is a black thing, that we don't have cash. It was also insulting that Merchant was trying to sit up here and say, uh, well, they shouldn't be paid that kind of money. Was No, no, I'm not talking about Nathan. I'm talking about everybody as if no one should be paid a certain amount of money. That was quite insulting to me when she was bringing up that that triggered me, maybe because I'm just like, you can't dictate what somebody is worth in their pay. If they bid it for a certain amount and they agreed to the bid, that's what they agreed to. So the way she made it sound, I didn't particularly care for that portion, but it's quite interesting how Fulton County dropped the case because it wasn't in their jurisdiction. So that was quite interesting. So the question is, because she's a state elected official for Fulton County as a district attorney, what is the state going to do? That is the, that's the next question. Are they going to say, hey, let's ride it out? Or, are, I mean, or we'll wait after the case, then we discipline her? Or are they going to discipline her ahead of time? Or are they waiting to see what McAfee is going to do first then make their decision as to what they're going to do with Fonnie Wilson Willis. Mm. So shout out to the incredible fault. The incredible folks says yep. if if Ashley Merchant was a black woman, what would Tamara say? So what if it was black woman uh, Ashley Merchant versus black woman Fanny? You know, would that would that change your stance anyway, or kind of what would you think? That's a great question. Merchant's voice irked the hell out of me. I would be muting half the time when she was talking. I was just like. But what I will say is Merchant was great in her investigation work. I really enjoyed seeing her do the investigation work. It, I wasn't against Merchant in reference to how she handled her job. She did her thing. She used her feminine wood to get that information from Terrence and she milked it 1000%. So I was like, get it Merchant. Everything that she did, I felt that she was right because that was her position. That's the side that she was on. Hey, I'm representing my client. I am, you know, making sure that we win this case and I'm going to investigate and get everything that I can. Be quiet, Coco Chanel. I'm going to make sure that we get everything that we can for my client. So she did an excellent job as far as I'm concerned by defending her client. So th that that doesn't change how I felt about that. Her voice just irked me. But I ain't here for Merchant. I'm here for Fanny. I'm team right. What about this? What about this uh, opinion? Uh, Dr. Pat says Fanny is a disgrace to black women. Why is it? Why is it that? Isn't it better to support black women, but to support good ones, the ones that are above board, the ones that aren't lying? Like, why is it? We will all we will agree that there are some sir, there are some bad black people in the community. Is that right? Correct. Correct. So Absolutely. Should we should we try to just support? everybody in the black community or should we try to support the good ones all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm keep it a buck okay okay let's doctor go. or not or whatever the case may be i worked hard for that you worked hard for yours you know my brother's in jail to be quite honest okay mm -hmm. because he did something wrong okay so therefore he had to pay for it that and he understood that but when you say it's like no one, it's almost like a, the Chris Brown situation. Something that he did so long ago, and you're still trying to make him pay for it. You mean beating up Rihanna, beating up the woman? Well, she 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 beat him up. She spit in his face and she beat him up. So there's a whole there's a whole dynamics behind that. It wasn't just one-sided. Okay. She did first, he reacted, 
he took he went overboard. So <laughs> he went overboard. Right? He went overboard. Because <laughs> you know, but he, went I, overboard. he did. I mean, you know, men, women have to understand that you have to be careful. You can't put your hands on somebody and think it's not going to be a reaction. But again, what that's what we're gonna be talking about on Pussycat Talk podcast. But at the end of the day, Fani, she said, is a is a disgrace to black women. So that means all black women are a disgrace. So that means all of us have done something wrong that we have felt that was disgraceful to somebody else. So you're not going to give them grace. You're not going to say, okay, I can forgive you. This is about also forgiveness as well. People make mistakes. Do you sit up here and not give them grace? But that's why I said she honestly does need to apologize to the people who voted for her and say, I made a mistake, I had poor judgment, but I can do this job. And I think that if she came that way and not seem as, as Terrence said, oh, she arrogant, they're arrogant. If she came that way and apologized to the city, I mean, to the uh, Fulton County, then maybe she would come off a little bit different. Okay, you yeah, still you the stuff. Right. yeah, you still <laughs> sell the stuff. Look, we don't, we, we, we don't have to talk about this. We don't have to talk about this because even Rihanna stated that she spit on him, she kicked him, she punched him, and he didn't respond. And then he did it. She did it again, and he responded. They were driving. She almost got almost got him in the car. She said. She tried to kick me. I well, he details. I guess they got both sides. So it's interesting. Right. No, 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 she admitted to it. She she actually admitted to it. So and that's he went, that's little, he went he went a little overboard, right? Is that what you're saying? He did, it's like this. At the end of the day, you should not a, you shouldn't be hitting a woman regardless. But again, women have to also hold accountability. You can't think that you can put your hands on a man and it's not going to be a reaction. Sometimes men men have reflexes. And he's stronger than you. So why would you sit up there and put your hands on somebody anyway? All right. Shout out to Nashville Nambo. Nashville says, okay, are you willing to afford that same grace and forgiveness to one Donald J. Trump? Are you? I used to like Donald Trump beforehand, but I have an issue with how he did some things. Um, again, I'm more of an independent, so it's, it's, it, it is what it is. But I think some of the things that he did and how I felt like the race baiting that he did with the shoes and, you know, the are black you willing, and are you, willing, are you willing to afford him grace and forgiveness for your, for I did give him grace life. and then he messed up again. I'm sorry. I gave him grace. You gave but, him grace once and he messed up again, right? No, I gave him grace three times. Okay. You gave him grace three times. How many times has Fanny messed up? From what I see, this is the first time she messed up. How many times in this particular situation, the lying, all of the lies that she told. She told more than three lies, but you're going to give her more. You're going to give her grace more than three times, but you're only going to give Donald Trump three times for grace. Uh, democracy is different. Roe versus Wade is different than somebody boning somebody and not telling somebody they they, they boning somebody. <laughs> Roe versus Wade is different than you boning somebody. Democracy is different than you boning somebody. What about democracy, though? What what part does democracy play if she's the number one law enforcement person in the state and she's lying to the court? You don't think that that implies democracy there? Democracy is not implied in there? I'm not saying that it is not. And I'm not saying that it is. What I'm saying is... Well, no, 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 what other you, thing you, has she done outside of this? Give me another... Let me, ask you, let, me ask you, do you, let me ask you, do you think democracy is implied... When the number one state constitution elected official is lying to the court, do you think that democracy is implied there? Do you think democracy is implied? Oh, it sounds like you're answering your question Donald with a question. Trump. It sounds like you're answering your question with a question. I, I know to... because you're 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 you making her it's the apples question. And apples. She, doesn't, she doesn't want to answer the question. I'm not answering the question. She doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> National Devil. National, you should have been an attorney. She doesn't want to answer. She sounded like she sounded a little bit like Terrence Bradley. I don't recall. Oh no, I ain't lying like Terrence. Okay, I ain't stuff you telling like Terrence. I I don't do that. Terrence said that he didn't want to answer because everything was attorney-client privilege. And here you are. You're saying I don't want to answer. I don't want. I'm giving you my answer. I'm not saying I'm giving you my answer in reference to Donald J. Trump. 
Mm. That there are some things that he has done that is unforgi unforgivable. The mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade was the last draw for me. That's mm -hmm. me personally. Okay. That taking away women's right is too much. That Donald, was, Trump, Donald Trump pushed Donald Trump is the one who took away your rights. He took away Roe versus Wade, yes. Is Donald Trump on the Supreme Court? He selected the two people that went on there. He padded the court. Come on. Are you serious right now? I'm asking who made the decisions. I'm asking. That, that's all I'm asking. They made the decision based on him putting them in, putting them in office. Did Congress have a, did Congress have a decision or, or did mm -hmm. Congress have an influence? Absolutely. So Absolutely. Congress had an influence on who got on the Supreme Court. And then there are other members of the Trump Supreme the Court. Who you are blaming one person for real. Damn people. right I am. Y'all blaming Fonnie Willis. Y'all blaming Fonnie Willis. <laughs> You blame y'all blaming Fonnie Willis one person. Isn't well, that what you're doing? Well, Fonnie lied though to the court. That's all. Did Trump lie to the court? What's wrong with my? You're clear now. Oh, Did then. Trump lie to to Judge McAfee? Didn't Didn't Trump lie? To, I'm asking, did you, did Trump lie to judge to Judge McAfee? Didn't Trump lie and say he didn't say to, uh, to get him eleven thousand people? Didn't he lie? Listen, let's 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 when 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 we focus on Fanny, you immediately jump to Trump. You I'm know? giving you an example. Oh, I'm using Trump? an example. Well, what about Trump? When we talk about Fanny, well, what about Trump? Let's not talk about Fanny because what about Trump, right? <laughs> listen, I'm listen. giving you an example of if you're wanting me to give grace to someone else. Mm -hmm. Again, for me, it was the Roe versus Wade. That that was really the final straw for me, honestly. Um, that 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 was major <laughs> you know because mm -hmm. rape and all of that you know i've been raped so and i got pregnant from a rape so why would i want to have that's just my choice mm -hmm. and you're taking away my choice so that you know for all the women who deal with stuff like that or about to die that was my that was my last draw so to use that you know to say the djt no, but but the, you you would admit that there are there are millions and millions and millions of americans that are against abortion right and I respect their I respect their decision. That's their decision. Mm -hmm. It's their decision. Just like it's so my decision. I was just saying, so if there are millions and millions of Americans that are against that, and Donald Trump happens to be one of them, but Donald Trump is not on the Supreme Court. Donald they Trump pushed for it. Donald Trump is was was not a part of Congress. He was not a part of the legislature. He's he's a but a lot of millions of people push for it. So you're so let me just let me just say the one that got rid of Roe versus Ray. This is so, so so you would give Fannie Grace, but you would not give grace to the millions and millions of Americans who are against abortion. No, it's their decision, it's their body. I respect their decision, just like they need to respect people who want. To be pro-life so what so we were to talk about that so what you're saying is you want to be pro-life but you don't uh they didn't even take away they left it up to the states some call that democratic okay yeah. that's not the way it, it no no he's right he's right no. he's right don't no coins don't be giving him no coins no coins tomorrow I'm, I'm sorry you went through that that sounds yeah. like a very uh horrible experience so i could see why your personal experience sways your decision right um i do have a quick question for you though sure. because i've been listening to the dialogue right and y'all are both doing well in this debate. Um, <laughs> this question. Not a debate. We're just talking. This is not a yeah, debate. Yeah, of just course. Talking. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. But I did come across a clip while Fanny was running. Mm -hmm. And she she was talking about the her predecessor. And she had mentioned that she would never sleep with an employee in her office. Right. So for me, as I was doing research on this and that clip came up, I was just like, whoa, you know, so like it was quite a surprise to see that clip years ago and then to hear what's kind of happening now. And then, you know, they, they admitted Correct. that they had that relationship. So Correct. for me hearing that, that was a little tough. What do you think about, and I don't know if you've seen that clip, but what I do did. you think about, you know, that piece when it comes to, you know, supporting Fanny? As more things came out, um, I was just like, y'all should have just said what, what went down. You know, yeah. um, it was definitely a little difficult but is he a, an employee? 
he's a contractor. So, I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna use that. He's not an employee, he's a contractor. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that you should be messing around with people on a job because look at what it does. It causes situations, it never pans out. Anytime you mess with somebody in the workplace or even if you're contracted, it never works out. It's always some type of drama or situation that comes from it. And look at what's happening. Their lives are about to be destroyed. Everybody behind it because you couldn't, you, you lusted for each other. I mean, it's okay if you lusted for each other, but you know, and he didn't, you didn't appoint him, but now that you appointed him and it, all your business is out, you're being threatened and stuff, you know, those things are true. I mean, those things are valid. You know, you're concerned about your safety. You know, people are coming to your house. Those, you know, she knew that they were going to come after her if she took this case, but she didn't know how deep it was going to go. And, you know, Big boy sat up here and dropped all the information, hating, maybe because he wanted funny for himself. I don't know. Who knows what the real deal is? He was mad. You, because you just know that she is the number one queen and she deserves grace. Is that right? I don't care what you say. She deserves grace. She deserves grace. All right. Well, listen, thank you thank so you, much, Tamara, for coming up. Really appreciate it. Thank you, you. Thank you for the class. I'm excited about taking the class. Yes, ma'am. You can hit the link anytime. Shout out I'm to Tamara. I purchased it. No, hit the link to come like up. Like to come, come back. Up. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. <so much. laughs> no problem. All right. Shout out to Tamara. Thank you so much. All right, guys. That was Listen. We got some Fanny fans, all right? We got some Fanny fans in the oh cut. <laughs> Shout out to Nacho Nabo hitting her with the hard questions. Nacho should be an attorney. Somebody write Nacho in the <laughs> chat, man. Thank you so, so much, Nacho. Super, super supportive. So always, always supporting your boy. Always asking great questions, great commentary in the chat. Thank you so, so much, Nacho. And thank y'all for shouting my man out. Uh, he, he was asking some hardcore questions mm -hmm. in the chat. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Nacho. All right, let's keep it going. Let's see if we can find a different type of feminine energy here. Let's bring up Maria. And we're going to get Maria, and then we're going to get Laverne, and then we're going to get Brother Padat, then James. We're going to keep it going. All right, Maria. Hello, I needed, guys. I needed to bring up uh so but i know uh your girl is hard to follow the uh, tavara is hard to follow kind of what's your what's your take on all this and i don't know if you heard kind of what tomorrow was saying but her yeah. her kind of uh viewpoints as well kind of kind of what's, what's your take on this stuff all right so um the first thing is that this more this afternoon when i was driving back home i saw the car in front of me had a georgia fulton <laughs> Shout out to and i was Gaddy. like that's a sign. Maybe today I'm going to hear something about this case. And here we are. Here we um, are. I think that uh, what when um, Fanny tried to reply back, um, I think that she tried to put so many things there that uh, it was just to fill the holes. You know, just a lot of words, a lot of words, but like A, B, C other two attorneys they just went like two pages like let's go to point a b c d and that's it i don't have to say 20 times that i was elected i was selected because that actually doesn't mean anything when it comes to uh you know what what law that you really didn't follow um they obviously you know they probably selected you because they have some faith in on you in you but now when we see all this information, we really don't have the faith that we have. So now we have to see this with the new information, not the information that we had when you got selected. Um, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's like my point of view. I think that she is clearly not apologizing because clearly, she, yeah, clearly, like if not, she wouldn't even send this motion or, you know, how it's called. Um, regarding to Tam Tamara, that's her name. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, Tamara. Um, I, uh, understand her point of view because, you know, everybody has to have their point of view. Um, but I think that if we are going to be fair and we want to give grace, we have to see everything as a whole and not as a person. Mm. So I feel like, like you said, who, who, uh, con give the contract? to uh, Nathan, it was her. And that means that it's coming from the leader 
which is the one to set the example. Mm -hmm. So if I am doing bad and my my coworker who I'm training did something bad because I told them and I, or I guide them, I cannot just only say, hey, no, the employee is going to go and you're going to stay because I guess you are what? A black female that had a really good reputation and you were like in this type of, no. If it was because of that, say, oh no, let's keep all the immigrants because I'm Latina. No, that's not fair. We have to be fair because if we're not fair, then what's the meaning of, you know, uh, holding people accountable for that, their mistakes? Um, obviously, yeah, Nathan probably did worse because Nathan is like, doing stuff with his money and his accounts and all that, but she is not apologizing. She doesn't want to do that. She wants to keep fighting. She wants them to, to see her as somebody that, oh, I've been respected. I'm this person in the community, the number one uh, district attorney. No, we don't go by that anymore. Yeah, and she also there. used the word elected 20 times in her elected. document. Elected. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I was elected to do my job, but if I don't do my job right, you think I'm just going to, my boss yeah. is going to leave me there? Yeah. No, he's going to get rid of me and say, nobody, uh, like my boss says, everybody is re replaceable. Don't think that just because you are this person or you have this status, you're just going to be there forever. If you don't do your job right, you're out. Because then, it's a systemic problem. It comes from the top and then it goes down, down, down. So if she's not holding, if nobody holds her accountable, nobody, all the persecutors are gonna do whatever they want and nobody can say anything. And you mm -hmm. cannot, yeah, it's, it's like that. I'm sorry that she's in this situation, but that's her own fault. Because if you're making those statements like Amy said in those interviews saying, oh, I'm never gonna do that, never, no. Like in my country, they say, they say don't spit. Uh, to the ceiling because it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that she, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I respect Tamara, but she needs to go to the facts. She cannot just give her grace because she feels identified with her being a black woman. Because if yeah. And that's the thing, yeah. right? Because this is kind of what Steve said. I was talking about in terms of playing the race car. And this is what you hear a lot of people talk about in terms of identity politics, mm -hmm. that she's a black woman and I'm a black woman. So if she makes mistakes, I'm still going to support her. Yeah. Uh, why are you going to support her? Well, she's a woman and I'm a woman. She's black and I'm black. You know, she works here in Georgia. I live here in Georgia. You know, mm -hmm. she identifies as this. I identify as this. So I'm going to support her. Now, does she need to apologize? Yes. Well, what happens if she doesn't apologize? I still support her. And yeah, still my girl. That's exactly right. And so Nashville says, okay, well, what about Donald Trump? You know, are, are you going to extend yeah, the yeah. same amount of grace? Are you going to extend the same amount of forgiveness? Well, no. Now, why not? Well, he's not, you know, my identity. Right? He's not a, he's not a black woman, hasn't been through what I've been through, you know. And so it, it's, it's a lot of a lot of identity politics. And this is kind of what Steve Sadow was talking about with Fanny's uh, speech in the church. They call it the, the yeah. MLK speech. I, right. That's crazy. Like how you knowing the position that you have being an attorney and doing that, you are just going to go to church and you think nobody's going to like record you or think yeah. that that's messed up just because everybody there is black. That doesn't mean that they don't think maybe, well, maybe wait a minute, like what are you saying? Yeah. Um, but here's the other thing. It's like the impact. Yeah. So honestly, I'm kind of reflecting on the conversation just now with, with Tamara and Steve Sada was talking about the impact that um, the DA's church speech could have, right? And if that was just one person we just spoke to, not saying that she was in the church, it's, it's kind of an example of the power of a DA speech and how it can yeah. impact potential jury members, right? Yeah. And it's just interesting to kind of take that all in. Yeah, like you guys said, like you, when you do a grand jury or when you have a jury, it's mostly black people, you know, mm -hmm. in Georgia. So if we go by race, then, I mean, 
everybody there will be what all the criminals that are black will be in the streets because oh you know they're black no we have to see the what they did and go by that um i know that she supports her and you know that's not a problem because like i said everybody supports her stuff but you have to be fair you know if if nathan is going then she has to go because she was the boss a hundred percent hundred percent well listen Thank you so much, Maria. We yes. always appreciate your um, your perspective, and you're welcome to come up anytime. All right. I love Maria. coming here. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to Maria. Shout out to Maria. All right, guys. Let's get some masculine energy. <laughs> Bring here. them in. Bring uh, them in. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you know, I support her because she's my girl and she's black. Black girl magic. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to black girl magic. All right. Thank like, God, you know, hopefully let, let's bring a, let's bring some, a little bit more, a little toxic masculinity <laughs> up in here. And there is no one to introduce the toxic masculinity better than our man, Laverne, Laverne. Gibbs, right? <laughs> 20 year military. All right. Shout out to Laverne. Now, Laverne, you also, um, as a, a, in addition to being a, a great man, high value uh, veteran, you also have a YouTube channel, right? Shut out your YouTube channel real quick. Let them know where they can find you. Yes, um, it's American Icons Detailing of Central Texas. Awesome. So if one of the mods could drop my man's link uh, to his channel in the chat. And uh, so, yeah, Laverne, you know, what do you think about all this? You got Nathan Wade, you got Fanny, you got Donald Trump, you got the Black Girl Magic. A lot of people still supporting uh, Fanny, y'all saw uh, wigs and wine talking about, hey, man, what did she do? What did she lie about? It's a lot of people that are still rooting for Fanny down here in Atlanta. Kind of what's your take on the whole situation? Shut well, up. Well, first, um, poison. well mm -hmm. uh, first, great job with you and AV, you know, covering this. Y'all doing a really good job. And I've learned a lot, you know, with all of this law stuff. Um mm. But my my thing on this is when you're serving in those positions like Fanny is, you're held at a higher um, standard. So you're looked at to always do the right thing. And the, the other young lady before earlier, she was saying to give her a grace. Well, you know, you she should have been shown grace when she was a, a young attorney and learning, hey, you can't do this and you can't do that. It's just like in the military. When you go from private up to being to a sergeant, you know, you're giving some leniency to do certain things and get away with certain things. But once you get into that supervisory position or a position of where you have to have others under you, then you're held at a higher standard. And I think she is she should have been held to the higher standard. And some of the things that they did was blatantly wrong. Like, you know, um, Nathan going and just writing in hours and getting paid for it. Oh, and, yeah. The billables. You know. It's, it's a conflict of interest, too. You know, you, she's paying him more money than other people. I don't even think she should have been allowed to do that. It should have been some, someone else doing it. Mm. That's just my thought on, on, on this. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen to the case? Do you think that the, uh, the judge is going to find that there's a conflict and kick Fanny and, and Nathan off? Or do you think the judge is going to say that there is no conflict? and let the case continue. Kind of what's your take on it? I think that he's going to find it's a conflict and just say, hey, you guys can't do this case and just move it over to someone else and let them do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, if I was them, I would just hope, hey, we're not going to be able to do this case because I could see this maybe going down further and they're saying, hey, you know, we're going to disbar y'all and take, take your license and all that stuff away. That's where they don't want it to go. So right. I, me personally, if it was me, if I was Fanny, I would kind of I would be like, you know what? I'm I'm just going to step down, um, mm -hmm. knowing that they know what went on, and stop trying to fight this stuff. Yeah, and what do you think about all the lying with Nathan and Fanny, and then their bar licenses? Do you think they should get some type of punishment, some type of sanction uh, for what they've been what they've been doing? I, I don't think they should lose their license, but I think there should be some type of punishment, you know, because mm -hmm. like you said, once they lose their license, they're done. They might go. They might as well go to get a CDL and drive some damn trucks. Or something, <laughs> exactly. You know? or, or, exactly. Or, or, or Nate or Nate. Nate must be pretty damn good boy, giving that long stroke. So maybe he needs to go out to <laughs> some of them clubs out there in Atlanta. And right. Give out the long stroke. <laughs> That's exactly right. 
you know, because the the law license guys, it's really all that we have. It's really all we know how to do. So um, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. like really like in the military, we have like the top enlisted guy. You know, these guys can't do no wrong. So when I was at Fort Hood, we had the top enlisted guy that was over all of Fort Hood and he got caught with a DUI mm. and they made him retire. It was like, nope, you're done. Wow. And they, they just, they was like, no, you can no longer be in this position no more. Because, you know, if it would have been me getting a DUI, you know, they would, they would have crucified me. I'd have lost all my benefits and everything. So mm. that just goes to show, you know, when you're, when you're in those high positions, just like a preacher or, you know, a, a, a top police or whatever, you can, it's just certain things that you just can't do. Mm -hmm. you held it a higher, they held it a higher standard. Yeah, she's yeah. also running up for uh, re-election right now as well. It's all over the news. I just did a search. You know, she has some challengers for, you know, being the DA in Fulton County. There's a lot of people raising their hands and ready to go against her. Well, also, too, you know, unfortunately, because she's a woman, you know, you got a lot of men. It's like she don't belong in that position anyway. So mm -hmm. the, the DAC is already stack, stacked against her because she's a woman and she's black. So you mm -hmm. already know they don't they don't want her in that position. So you have to really be careful. Um, and I hope this is a lesson learned to other folks that's in positions of higher power that they'll just do the right thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Well, listen, thank you so, so much for coming up. Shout out to our man Laverne. If one of the thank monsters drop the link to his channel in the chat, strong brother, uh, military, 20 years in the game. Really appreciate all of your service, the sacrifices that you made for all of us. Shout out to Laverne. I appreciate you. Hey, again, good job with you and AV, man. I, I, I really enjoy um, what y'all doing. You know, I put my headphones on while I'm working all day and I listen to the whole thing. So keep wow. up the good work. I really appreciate you. And thank you for shouting me out, man. Thank you so much. No problem. Shout out to our man, Laverne. Thank you so much, Laverne. Really appreciate right. you coming up, brother. All right. Thank you, Laverne. Day. Bye. All right. All right. We are going. Uh, let me see here. Let me bring up. Uh, let me go out of order a little bit. Let me bring up Jenny V. Jenny V, can oh, you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? We can hear you. <laughs> All right. We try to. We try to. Uh, I have a nice mix of people up in here. So I wanted to jump in and get your your take on this. You know, what's your opinion on this whole Nathan Wade, Fannie Willis, Donald Trump, Tamara situation? You know, kind of what's your take on all this? Okay, so she lied, he lied, they got caught bumping uglies, they should have just admitted it. And something Nate the lawyer brought up the other day, isn't this her second time? being disqualified from a case yes yeah. so you're right uh shows a pattern mm -hmm. so, so you yeah. think sorry bye-bye you think she should be disqualified and nathan too absolutely and then they need to be investigated where did that mm -hmm. money go where did the money go right. Right? exactly yeah there's cash come on mm -hmm. and we have cash in our safe <laughs> <laughs> right right um, that anyone knows where I live. Right, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. Don't tell anybody. Um, and then at, once they are kicked off the case, do you think that the case should still go on to another county or do you think it should be dismissed? Kind of what's your take on that? I honestly don't know if another county is going to want to touch this. Agreed. They may look into it and say, no, there's not enough here. And how many other presidents have said, hey, this doesn't seem right. There's something going on. Look into this for me. Mm -hmm. He's not the only one. Wasn't it um, Bush and, and Gore? Al Gore. Gore. Mm -hmm. So it's happened before. How come he's being brought up on charges for it? It's a pattern. Everyone complains and bitches and whines. Hey, we lost. Look into it. And he's the only one being prosecuted. Why? 100%. Right. Yeah. 100%. Great question. Thank you so much, Jenny V, for coming up. Really appreciate it. You can hit the link anytime. Thank you. You guys have a happy Friday. Enjoy Thank that you. wine. Oh, yeah. Mega pint. 
Verified, <laughs> all right, <baby. laughs> I, I love it. it. Just don't go <laughs> sniffing the bottle. There That's you right. go. Right, there you go. <laughs> Jenny, shout out to Jenny V. She knows all about it. Thank you so much, Jenny V. Shout out to Mega Pint. All right. <laughs> let us keep it going. Let us bring up Brother Padat. Brother, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I think my face is all in the camera. I'm all over the place, man. How you guys doing? <laughs> We're doing good. We're doing good. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming up. What is your take on this whole situation here with um with uh Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade, and uh Donald Trump and 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 tomorrow? <laughs> Throw her in there. Okay. The first thing I will say is that I appreciate you, Lee. I've been following you from the jump. I've been following you from the giddy up, as they say. Mm. I've been following you from the giddy up. I've been following you, AV, since you first came onto the scene. Oh, I've followed both of you on Instagram. So I really appreciate you. Thank so you. So here's my take here. So I have a couple of, I have one, a couple of different takes, and I'm not going to take up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I have some issues or concerns with Fannie Willis going before the church and trying to bring the Christian church, the black church into it, bring Christianity, bring her faith into it. Here's why. And I'm going to do this one time, and I'm not going to ever do this again. The Bible says that God resists the proud, and he gives grace to the humble, right? Mm -hmm. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, a lot of people have been coming up here talking about, you know, you're not giving Fanny grace. You're not giving Nathan grace. You're not giving Terrence grace. Did they, did, did they earn the grace because of their humility, because mm -hmm. of their contrition? because of their, you know, uh, introspection. So I think that uh, I think that you have to give to receive. Now, that, they may sound kind of manipulative, but you have to give to receive. That's the first thing I will say. The second thing I will say is this, you know, and I think that you know this, Lee, I think you know this too, A.V., and, and everybody in the audience knows. There's this, there's this saying that we were all raised with, that when you're a Black person, and you may have heard this, you, someone may have already said this before, so if I'm repeating something that's been said before, please forgive me. Give me some grace. Mm -hmm. They say that when you black, you got to be twice as good. You got to be twice as good as the other person for you to get what you need to get for you to get half as much. Right. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. Here's the question I have. They talk about being twice as good. And then they have this trope about black excellence. So I want to ask, I'll ask you two, and I'll also ask your audience, when you look at everything that's been taking place in these disqualification hearings between Nathan, Terrence, and Fannie Willis, have you seen Black Excellence? Because what I've been seeing is, what I've been seeing, Lee, <laughs> AB, what I've been seeing is people looking the judge in the eye, right? Given a lot of things that you said on your on your previous stream that in most cases a judge wouldn't allow you to do. You mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to turn around and get and, and get lippy with the judge or be looking all in his face or whatnot. You don't even get and, out. Yeah, you don't be eyeballing the judge the way that they've been doing, right? You'll be eye, eyeballing them. That is that black excellence? Is all this is all this uh neck rolling and tongue smacking <laughs> and, 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 and that was and, cute. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and all this, you know, clicking your tongue and, and saying, you know, you you lying to me and girl and, and, and all this stuff. Is this black excellence? Mm. Is this black excellence? Because and I will tell you this, and I know I'm going on, but listen, A V Lee, I've done some things in my life. I've done some things in my life, you know, and it mostly revolves around a little bit of violence. So I've heard some people, and this, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I've heard some people, I've tuned some people up, you know. If I decided that I was going to run for a city council for Cincinnati, Ohio, I'm going to have to think to myself, somebody going to remember what PDAT did back in 1983. People, someone, someone is going to remember that I remember when PDAT knocked this dude's eye out of his socket mm. back in 1983. I remember when PDAT tried to run somebody over with a car. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Here's the point I'm trying to make. If we're in a position because th this is this is what really bothers me, you guys. No matter how you feel about Donald Trump, no matter how you feel, this was this was groundbreaking. She's 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 prosecuting a former president of the United States or attempting to prosecute a former re re president of the United States on RICO charges, bro. This was big, man. I mean, this was big. So if you if if, if the case is big, if the circumstances is big are big, then it is important for us. If I'm going to take on this endeavor, 
I need to be big. I need to be bigger than all of my detractors. I need to be bigger than all of my critics. I need to be bigger than all of my uh, interlocutors. I need to rise to the occasion, right? If the occasion is big, then personally and professionally, I need to be rising to that occasion. Meaning that if there's some, if, if there were some things that I know, because you're an attorney, AB, you're an attorney, you guys know that there are certain, you already know that there are certain attitudes and behaviors and conduct that you have to have in check, right? You gotta, you gotta rein that in. And we have to know, just like I talked about black excellence and they said that if we are, we have to be two or three times better than that, you ought to know that they're gonna come for you. They're gonna try to, they're gonna, they're gonna exhume all of your sins. They're going to exhume all of your folly. They're gonna try to exhume, they are going to come with you with everything that they got. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you respond? How do you respond? Are you trying to do impression management? The American Psychological Association calls it impression management, but the three of us, we're going to call it trying to save face. Are you trying to do an impression management? And if you are trying to do the type of impression management that Fanny is trying to do, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. Do you go out? Are you, are you humble? It's like, look, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm a woman. I got that. You know, I make mistakes. You know, I've done some things. You know, I, I probably didn't, you know, uh, dot, cross all my T's and dot all of my I's and whatnot, but I'm doing what I need to do. I'm doing the best that I can for the, for not just for the state of Georgia, but for all, all Americans. And so if you approach it in an adversarial hostile way, then they're going to continue to do it because you, you all know, and I'll land with this. Every time she files something, what do they do? They come back and file something again. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're, they are not, they, I, and, and I, I hate to say this, until she falls back, they're not going to cut her any slack. No. She's not going to get the, she, she is not going to get the kind of grace that we would typically bestow upon someone that we find to be impressionable and favorable in our sight. People will criticize that as calling it respectability politics. You can call it what you want. There are just some times where you got to just, Fall back, man. Fall back. <laughs> I hear you. Let Fall me ask back. you. Let me ask you. Big shout out. Big shout out to LT Harris, of course, and big shout out to Ed Clark. And Ed Clark says, "Now listen, listen. Now, Fanny made a mistake. All right. And while accountability for Fanny is necessary, we must consider whether it's fair or is it constructive." to disrupt or discontinue or dismiss her livelihood entirely because of this one incident. You know, I think everybody is under the impression that if Fanny gets dropped off from this man, it's a wrap for her. Two people have come for her position just today. There's ethics uh, committees being formed against her. Like the heat is on. So Ed is saying, listen, she made a mistake, but shouldn't, if, if she gets kicked off the case, What's her livelihood going to be like? Maybe we should leave her on because we don't want to disrupt the way she's she's earning a living. You know, what do you what do you think about this this comment here? OK, so I personally am not I don't I don't think that she should be I think that she should be disqualified. I think that her and Nathan should both be disqualified. Now, as far as all this other stuff about her losing her license and being, you know, and being uh, uh, ran out the Confederacy with a yellow stripe down her back, I'm not necessarily, I, I, don't, I don't believe that she should be, I, I don't believe in humiliating and disgracing someone like that. But I think that, like I said, rising to the occasion, Fanny, you had your shot. We were relying on you. For, the, for, for those people who are anti-Trumpers, for those people who are concerned about what Donald Trump has been doing to this country or whatnot, we were relying on her, Elite, AV. She was, to some degree, people were hoping that she was going to be like our Elliot Ness, right? Finally going to get Capone, right? Elliot Ness. But here's the difference between Fannie Willis and Elliot Ness. Elliot Ness was above reproach, bro. Mm. He was above reproach. They, they couldn't, they, they had nothing, they had nothing on them. When you come in with all this stuff and you're not able to dutifully refute especially that cell phone evidence. All she had to do is take, and just with the cell phone stuff, she could have, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna, uh, uh, this is not a, this is not, I'm not trying to, you know, go squirrel on you, 
download all my cell phone messages. Y'all look through my messages. Did it look like me and Nate was on, on some hanky panky? Just read them, just read, just go through. All she had to do is download them and say, read our messages. Does this look like some hanky panky or does it look like we were standing on business? Mm. That shut a whole bunch of people up. But again, he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And so, and if we're lesser than him, man, y'all know good and well people ain't giving her grace. Yeah. Especially people on the other side. And 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 by and, and and this is not about whether or not she was qualified or whether she was any good as an attorney. Man, she was elected as the DA for Fulton County, bro. She was elected. She was elected. So somebody thought there were a bot, there was a body of people who believed that she had the qualifications, she had the skill, she had the goods to uh, to uh, dutifully rep- uh, represent that sovereign, you know, that that the sovereign state of Georgia and their county. Somebody thought that she was good enough to do it. But the last thing I'm going to say is this. Sometimes you just don't know. You don't know what people are doing, lead, until you find out. Mm. So nobody knew. So you're saying, you know, you think they're not qualified. You don't know what she's been doing. Well, there was no way we were going to know. No. The only time you know, and I'm going to land with this, is when the moment of truth comes. And so when we're going to, and when we have an endeavor that we're, we're supposed to rise to this occasion, we will only know what we're made of when the moment of truth comes. And she had, and this was the moment of truth. She could have got, she, I mean, and her, I mean, unless she doesn't get disqualified, she could have got this dude. Everybody was, everybody was waiting on someone to get him. You know, Letitia doing her thing up in New York, but this was our chance. I mean, for, for people who, who, who want to see him go down, this was your chance. Mm. Why, 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 why are you coming to the table messy? Why are you coming to the table with, with, with dirt on your hands and all kind of fool, foolishness and garbage? Because you know that if they see daylight in, your, in the line, they're going to take that hole and they're going to take you, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna go for six. And that's what they're doing with her, man. They saw daylight in the line of scrimmage. They're going for six, man. They're throwing the whole book at her. All and so right. that's really all I got, man. Well, listen, shout out to Brother PDAT. I'm sorry, am I saying that right? PDAT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the brother, man. A lot of people loving, loving what you were saying. You were cooking up here. Thank you so much for coming up. You can come up anytime, brother. All right. Bye, PDAT. I love you, AB. Shout out to the brother. All right. Let us keep it going. Uh, Let me bring up Chris and I'm going to bring up James right after. And we got a lot of other people back here in the chat. We got Chris. How are you doing, brother? What's up, guys? Yeah, how are you? Good, 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 good. So what do you think about all of this, uh, these new filings and basically in general, the whole situation here with with Nathan, Fanny and uh, one Donald Trump? I think that the new filings are just apparent in their shortcomings. The first sentence is all I really needed to hear uh, from uh, from what you guys call, I'm not sure his name, is it grandpa, grandfather? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if he is stating as a lawyer that Fanny can confirm he perjured and is lying, that's enough. Like you don't really need to move forward from that in my opinion and because he he's saying that they're breaking all these rules uh, i think that we just need to really the way that you win how, how do we win from this scenario right how do we make the justice system look better than what it is currently showing the people is you really this is all in the taxpayer's money so after seeing that release I think that the way that you win in the people's eyes and you don't walk away from the situation, having the people think that they don't have any more faith in the justice system is you need to stop the current spending and what the current uh, Atlanta taxpayers are paying for. So what that means is you really need to hold them accountable whether or not she's arguing just because there are no prior cases it doesn't mean that you didn't break the law on all of these accounts perjury your, the, the the divorce the escrow the and because you can't hold terrence as repercussions and you can't even hold technically the case that ashley's 
that Ashley's client is. And you can't hold Donald Trump in the case after it if you have a current unethical DA. I hear right. you. Let me jump in, Chris. It seems like the the chat is saying that your voice is kind of putting them to sleep. I'm sure what you're saying is right, <laughs> but your voice is so <laughs> monotone, they're kind of going to sleep. So I'm going to rotate the panel. But thank you so much for coming up. You can hit the link anytime. All right. Bye, Shout guys. out to Chris. Bye, Chris. All right. Y'all are like Apollo. Uh, what is it? <laughs> um, the Showtime. Show yeah. Apollo. I mean, Y'all mm -hmm. are gay. Like, oh, <laughs> next caller. Next caller. <laughs> going to sleep. Okay. <laughs> Y'all been blessed with uh, Tamara. Y'all been blessed with Brother Bidet. Y'all been blessed with some energy. Chris, come in here. Well, yeah, wait, wait, wait. I do all I had to say. Y'all were like, okay, get the brother out of here. All right, let's keep it going. <laughs> let's keep it going. Let's bring up our man, James. We got James. How are you doing, brother? Wow. That's all I can say about that last one. Y'all y'all tough in the crowd over there. Good they tough. They tough. They tough. First of hey. all, shout out to Burn Thrust. Said, didn't Fanny name her phone Gorilla Grip P Mouth? I thought I saw a video. Maybe it was a, a TikTok on it. But I don't know if it was confirmed, whether it was real or whether it was fake. Do y'all know if it was real or if that was just a skit or something? I don't I don't remember that being if said in court or anything. Yeah, it's floating around there. There was some like investigator, and, and I, I don't know because I saw that somebody else said that it came from a different case. So we'll see what chat says. But I don't know. I, th I thought, yeah, I thought it was fake. Okay, y'all are saying it's not real. I didn't think okay. it was real either. Okay. But thank you so much, Burn Thrust. I appreciate that. All right, and we got our man James. Yes, sir, James. Uh, what did you? What do you think about this whole situation? Um, uh, this whole situation with Fanny. Nathan and um, and Donald Trump. Kind of, what's your take on all of this? Well, my take on it is just like the other gentleman who was in the military, um, held to a high standard. That's anybody mm -hmm. who has a license. Anybody who has a license is held to a high standard. That's from doctors, lawyers, dentists. You know, dentist from dentistry. Everybody held to a high standard because they are licensed in the state of Georgia, right? I'm gonna tell you a story. I'm, I'm gonna keep it short. Had a, uh, a uh, I was in the military as well had a guy who was over the credit card in, in our unit, spending everything but what he's supposed to be spending it on, buying mm -hmm. Christmas, going on trips, and he got caught. Fraud, waste, and abuse. Now, I don't know what type of standard the Georgia has on that end, but for them paying Nathan $700,000, $700,000? Mm -hmm. I know Lee, Lee and Avery, I know you love would love seven hundred thousand dollars just for <laughs> some, some block timing. Mm -hmm. My wife, my wife used to work for the state, so she was when she heard that she's like, "Oh no!" Right, oh, and no. it wasn't That's... descriptive. He was just like, "Oh yeah, twenty thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, two thousand dollars." And it's not the only place they. It's probably not the only place he did it as well. He was in Cobb County, and him and old girl was overpaying him five hundred mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. five hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. For another for another case. So this is not something new that they've been doing. They just don't pass the buck down the line to fool them because they have more money there. Yeah. And she's benefiting from it all. So I say she has to be held to a high standard. I don't care. Nothing about no grace. She has to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. She got she gotta go. Because if she if, if she does not go, now they give free reign to anybody else who falls behind her. They can just do whatever they want to and not be held accountable. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to say someone needs to be made an example of, but I, know, I'm not, I but understand if, that. But no, I I'm agreeing with you. But if like they right. keep her on, like what does that say to everybody else? You know, right, right. And if, if and if a ex and if a ex president has to be held at a high standard, why can't the DA be held at that same standard as well? If if you saying Trump messed up, okay, cool, cool, Trump messed up. But if Fannie is the top person in the city. And she messed up numerous of times. It's not just one time she messed up and didn't come back. Okay, cool. We were sleeping together. Okay, cool. Y'all caught us. She still lied. And Terrence, Terrence, giving all the information to everybody. That guy right there, man. Oh my God, he's the the biggest rep. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's bad. Terrence, Terrence. It, this, we, we wouldn't probably be sitting here if it weren't for him. But we here, and they all have to be held accountable. Should they lose their licenses? I think they should lose their license. Mm. With it, uh, if 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 a fireman, I was to be a fireman in here in County Georgia. I'm right, right, like you would say, right from the, right down the damn street, born and raised in Atlanta, mm -hmm. next to here where I'm from. 
if I did something as a fireman and I'm licensed or EMT and I'm licensed through the state and I mess around and I do something that's horrendous, I'm losing my license and I may even go to jail. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So if she's saying that she's above the law, pretty much, she don't trample over all of Georgia's statutes or what to do or what not to do. But she's saying she's been elected and now she's pretty much saying that she's above the law and she can't be touched. Mm-hmm. And if you allow that standard to go forward, then who's to say what she can and what, what she cannot do? So that's, that's my take on it. So I hear you. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming up. <laughs> Shout out to James and the fit lawyer ATL agrees with you. Laura, who's also here in Atlanta, says he is right. You have to be certified before you are even clear to take the bar. Certified fit is 100% true. We are definitely held to a higher standard. So shout out to James. He is absolutely right. And the lawyers are co-signing him. Thank you so much, brother. You are welcome to come up anytime. Shout out to our man, uh, James. Shout out to Fit Lawyer ATL. We have a special person in the chat. Shout out to Fanny Gorilla Grill. (laughs) Fanny Gorilla Grill. She's in the chat. Somebody write UG said Lee contested is real, boo. Oh my God. (laughs) She said, I can test it. I can test the gorilla grill. (laughs) Oh shit. (laughs) And it's Friday. God hell, Fanny. Don't make me get in my car, go right down the street. Shout out to the Fanny Willis who is in the chat. Fanny, we pull it for you, Fanny. Some of us, some of us are not. Yeah, uh, you might have to decide who is who. Let us keep it going. Let us bring up Sir Kenneth Wood. Sir Kenneth Wood, how are you doing, brother? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you so much for coming up. What is your take on mm-hmm. this whole situation here with uh, Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade, and Donald Trump? I feel like I've heard, well, that Tamara lady, first of all, she was super racist, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> One human race. Like, okay, here, here, here's, 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 at least she admitted it. Here's, here's how I see it. Fanny Willis is supposed... Fanny Willis is the, the head honcho in Atlanta that is locking people up, right? She's the DA. She is the spear of the justice system in Atlanta. And if she has the appearance of being, um, if she has the appearance of not having morals, of not having ethics, I know that um, the criminal justice system can kind of have a a bad connotation to it as it is. But with something like this, I mean, you're you're dealing with people's lives, and to me, that takes it to a whole nother level. I mean, I, I think that. I know I've heard you say that lawyers are kind of held to a higher standard, but I think that something that is amplified even more is if you are a DA and you are tasked with putting people in prison, you know, for life potentially. I mean, the stakes are too high. And I think that too many people's lives can be affected by that. And everybody wants to have faith and assurance in the the system. If, if, if what Donald Trump did was so egregious, the the evidence is so apparent, so anyone else could try it. I mean, um, Governor Kemp could give it to another um, district that maybe, um, you know, that maybe voiced that they would pursue it. And if if the evidence is there, if, if all of those things are truly there, as I've heard some people say, then it doesn't have to be Fannie Willis pursuing the charges. But she has to be impeccable. Her record has to be impeccable because, um, or not her particularly, but just the, the nature of that office of any count. So I know that I just kind of <laughs> threw a lot on you there, but no, you're right. No, you're you're right. Fine. We appreciate your perspective. What do you think is going to happen with this, with this case? What do you think the judge is going to do? Do you think the judge is going to dismiss uh, Fanny and Nathan from the case, disqualify them and kick them off? Or did you did you hear his interview from yesterday on the radio station? I'm not in Atlanta, but it was on one of the Atlanta radio stations. Did you happen to hear that? 
Are you saying that the judge gave an interview? He, he had he had an interview, and I tuned into it because I follow uh, Phil Holloway on Twitter, and he's been covering a lot of stuff oh, with this. Oh, he has, he has. I think um, I saw um, something like I think he might have went to the ethics thing yesterday, and that's whose Twitter oh, I was following too. There is no yeah, way he, that this judge he, gave an interview on this case. It wasn't an interview about the. It was it was with a local. If you look up, if you look it up, I'm sure you could find it. I don't know what the radio station is, but it was a two minute, three minute interview with a local Atlanta radio station, and he didn't talk anything about this case. It was more him talking about the fact that there was um he was now running up against somebody, the guy mm -hmm. for. For the, the the guy even asked him like what what he asked some things about the case and and McAfee was like I can't go into that. Oh, okay, I was about but to it, say like there's no yeah, way yeah, yeah. after you do that. Um, mm -hmm. the reason I asked about that was because in the in that interview and it's only like a three minute interview. <clears throat> in that interview, the the guy the 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 guy that was holding the radio show asked him when the um when he would have his decision. And he said that he McAfee stated that he gave two weeks and he's potentially using all of that time. He, he indicated that he's got a lot of in whatever the whatever the document that he's drafting on it. I don't know what it's called, but he was indicating that there was a lot of thought and time having to go into it. Um, and so I'm just really speculating based on what I heard I, from the get. I mean, my opinion is I think she should be out. I think that based on what he said there. It just, I kind of, um, again, total speculation. I feel like he is writing out all of his reasons for um, kicking her off. That's, mm -hmm. that's just how I'm interpreting it. Um, but that's what I think. I think he will. I, I don't know that. Um, I don't know what happens with this particular case. I, I, if, if he doesn't, I, I think there can be an appeals process. I don't know. Um, from the public perspective, I don't know that this case isn't tainted with this office on it, but, um, interesting. All right. Well, I mean, what? Thank you so much, Kenneth, for yeah. coming up. You can hit the link anytime. <laughs> Love to have your perspective on here. So really appreciate your time and coming up. All Thank right. You. Shout Thanks, out to sir, Kenneth Woods. Thank you so much. Shout out to Kay. What does Kay say? Says Fanny Willis does not need anyone to show her grace. She prosecutes people for doing wrong. So what makes her special? She's saying they are attacking them because they are black. But what about she's attacking them because they are white and Republican, all right? And again, we have these identity politics. Mm -hmm. You're, I'm black, I'm a woman, you're white, you're a man, you hate me. Church, they're only doing this because we're black. They're only attacking us because we're black. They don't understand us. It's a black thing. We keep cash in the house, and it's a black thing. Don't understand it. Just accept it. Accept it because it's a black thing. But I'm telling you, it's a black thing. So don't just just say yes. <laughs> just say yes. Shout out to shout out to Kay Willa. Really appreciate that. You got any cash apps you want to shout out before we continue? Yes, there are a ton and here. And while you are pulling yours up, let me shout out to D. D wants to remain anonymous, but I'll just say D, thank you so much. Says thanks again for the insights, the knowledge, and content. Thank you so, so much. Says please give $20 uh, and kudos to AV. Thank you so much. Listen. Do not send me money for AV because my accountant hates it. Y'all are fucking up my whole thing. Y'all see AV's uh, cash app right here. Please send all of AV's money to AV because it gets all messed up with my accountant and bookkeeping. But thank you so, so much, D. And anybody who wants to bless AV with some support, uh, you can hit her at the cash app. And again, thank you, D. I really, really appreciate it. But when people send me money, give some to this person, give some to that person, it, it messes up my accounting. All right. My accounting is already screwed up. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, A.V., you had some people as well? Yes. Um, first one, I want to shout out Betty Spaghetti. I caught on. Thank you for changing your profile picture. I caught it. Uh, she sends $20. She says putting in work with TLA during Women's History Month. Happy Women's History Month, y'all. <laughs> Happy <you> Fanny <laughs> Willis Month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Thank you so much, Betty Spaghetti. Um, that was really sweet of you. Shout oh, did I catch that one? Did I send it twice? Sorry, guys. Here we go. Let me go to the app itself. All right, caught that one. Dub Right Side. He sends fifty dollars. Thank you so much, Dub Right Side. I think you dropped a pretty generous super chat here on the stream too. So it's good to see you on my side. He thank says, you. "Keep up the great work, Dub Right Side." Thank you. That is super, super sweet of you. Really appreciate it. Fifty dollars is super generous. Can't thank you enough for that. Thank you so much. Shout out to Carlos Fernandez. He sends $25 and six Cape Verdean flags. Thank you, brother. It's always good to see another Cape Verdean over here on this side. Half of these people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's really, really good to see you, Carlos. I really appreciate the cash app. Shout out to the Fit Lawyer ATL. She also sends me $50. The she fit says, lawyer. Shout out to the Fit Lawyer ATL. Yeah, she says, I love watching you and TLA. Thank you so much, the Fit Lawyer. And I, I like the comment that you just dropped a little, uh, a few minutes ago. I think you mentioned something about character and fitness. And that was such a great point because all attorneys, even to qualify for taking the bar exam, you need to pass a character and fitness Um a character and fitness screen. So that was really, really a good point. Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to Sandy who sends $10. She says, I'm naming my migraine Tamara. <laughs> 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 Love you. <That's> <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> um, and then lastly here, shout out to Augustine. He sends $3. He says, salute. Love to you and TLA from the $3 ninjas. The three dollar digits shout thank out. Thank you so much, Augustine. Thank you. And that's so all I got. I'm all caught up. Awesome. And again, shout out to Fanny Willis in the chat. What does Fanny Willis say? <laughs> Read this with AV. What did you say? <laughs> this one says, Happy Me Month. That was cute. <laughs> that was cute. All right. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Fanny. Shout out to Tamara. Tamara's in the back, guys. I would pull her up. There's a lot of other oh. people that haven't said anything, but if y'all want me to pull Tamara back up, maybe she wants to apologize. <laughs> Who thinks Tamara wants to apologize? <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, let's keep it going here. Let us bring us Miss Judith. Miss Judith, how are you doing? Awesome. All right, Judith, you need to um, Judith, mute. you you need to uh, mute you mute the TV. All right, so I got you muted here. So, all right, can you can you hear me? Can you hear us, Judith? All right, <laughs> Judith ain't ready. <laughs> what is going on with Judith? Somebody take grandmama phone from her, man. Shout out to Judith. We I don't think Judith knows what's going on, so we're gonna sit her out. We're gonna sit her out. Shout out to Judith. <laughs> Judith was going to take off her shirt or something. She didn't know that she was on damn camera, all right? <laughs> and I'm trying to bring up a mix of people, men, women, black, white. I'm trying to bring up a mix, but Judith's fucking up the rotation. All right, let's bring up the mix true. Let's bring up the mix true. How are you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, TLA, man? It's been hard to get in touch with you. I feel some colorism going on, you know? Dude, hey, you you're, all right, you're mixed. So we're bringing you up. We, we got you in the mix, okay? Damn, man, hard to get on here. Anyway, I just want to say it's, it's, it's pretty apparent that Fanny Panny and Nathan, Nathan uh, got paid, you know what I'm saying, been into some BS, man. First of all, they've been screwing before, during, and after. And I think they're just hating on current President Donald Trump. Mm. And they're trying to bring him down. And I think that uh, Fanny need to go. And they mm -hmm. keep talking about, oh, well, if you black, it's even harder when you black. You got to be double good. Well, Trump must be the blackest man on earth because look how they came after him. Everybody black, white, Latino, everything. And honestly, I think the judge is gonna rule, and uh, I think he gonna rule in um, Pantene's favor mm. because how can you not without losing integrity? What do you think the optics are? You think it look better for him to say, "Okay, Fanny, you can stay on the case," 
or you think it looks better for him to say, Fanny, Nathan, you got to go. We got to take this out of Fulton County and maybe send it somewhere else. Well, it's interesting, you know, because Fulton, Fulton County is the right county for this case. It's the county. It's the biggest county. It has the most money. And it's pretty liberal, considering that it's in Georgia. So this, this judge, he knows Fanny. He's contributed to Fanny's uh, election. He $150, worked. that little bit of pocket change, right? It's a little bit. It's a little bit. But there's a lot of judges he didn't give a penny to. Okay. And he also worked with Fanny. Right. And you guys have to understand. He worked with Fanny or he was working with Fanny. You know what I'm saying? No, right, 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 you know? <laughs> I right. think Fanny might like that dog meat. Oh, 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 yeah. I, I, I think Fanny and Tamara with them identity politics, I think they stay in the race. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I, this judge, I will tell you, is not really worried about what people in California think about him. This judge is not worried about what people in New York feel what about. What about him. what the people? What do the people in Atlanta want? You in the ATL right now? What Listen, do they I'll want? be honest. You see what you see? How Tamra is? Tamra is not the only one, man. man. You're right. ATL ghetto as hell. Yeah, you right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we right. need to we need to remember that this judge has something very important. He has a mortgage to pay. He yep. has a mortgage yep. to pay. So he's not worried about how people in Washington State view him or people in Florida. He's like, man, I need to get reelected to pay this mortgage. So the, question, opti though. the optics for him, you had asked about the optics and how he views them. And what I'm trying to explain to you is that he has a different take on it than the rest of the nation because he needs his job. He, he wants to stay a judge and he knows the people that put him there. Right. So, you know, if you if you get put in a position by liberals, you know, do you have to play ball? Why wasn't this a fair case? Could this have been a fair case with something mm -hmm. this big with the president? I mean, because he's a, a resident of Florida and they saying he committing crimes over in Georgia. Couldn't the feds have picked this case up if it was something really serious, if something was really there, he's trying to interfere with the election? Well, I'll tell you that the feds have a right to pick cases up, but also the state has a right. Sometimes the state picks them up. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes the fed picks cases up and sometimes they don't. Sometimes the feds and the state want to pick up the same case at the same time and they fight over the case. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, this, the, the feds didn't want to pick this one up or haven't picked it up yet. But Fannie's been running with it, you know, yeah. so maybe the feds are like, man, we'll see what Fannie does with it. But. Apparently she's fucking it up. <laughs> but can I can I ask you one more thing, man? Because they mm -hmm. was talking about the vacation and oh, uh, you know the average family the average family of folks spent thirty seven hundred dollars on vacation. I don't know where the average family is in the U S. Because I don't know nobody spending no money on no vacation. Period. But what about all the other stuff that adds up? All the Ubers, all the hotels and stuff like that that Ashley Merchant was talking about. It added I mean, up to 20K. Where's the cash? Why are they not looking for the money more? Is that a totally separate issue that they'd have to pick up later on? But I think that that's pretty interesting in itself. Where is where is all the cash? Where's the money at? She got a lean out on her house, but she going on vacation. He talking about, oh, she making $200,000. Oh, this little $3,000 vacation, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you got a lean out. So what are you doing going out no, and I'll tell you, let me tell you right now let me tell you right now I, i'm a 20-year uh, attorney and i've seen so many uh divorce filings when you file for divorce in georgia you have to fill out what's called a DERFA. it's a domestic relations financial affidavit and what i see all the time is that people have an income the how let's say the husband has an income of eight thousand dollars a month and he's spending twelve thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. the wife has an income of six thousand dollars a month and she's spending nine thousand dollars a month. I mean, these these families here in Georgia, really all across the nation, they're up to their eyeballs in credit card debt. And so to say, oh well, you know, Fannie had a a, a a tax lien on her house. That means she's broke. I mean, people have <laughs> credit card debt. They have liens. They have um, they have judgments against them, and they still go on vacation. They still go to Disney World. If you go down to Disney World and pull the credit of all the people that are down there, I'm sure they got, you know, 40, 60, 80, $100,000 in debt. 
So I think people are misinterpreting that point that you're making about that little four thousand dollar tax lien. Four thousand dollar debt ain't stopping nobody. It ain't yeah. stopping nobody from doing nothing. Uh, if we're yeah. gonna be honest, this is just the American way. The American way is buy now and pay later. All right, you're gonna pay it later. And and we Americans are extremely comfortable with the debt. If you look at our national debt and the trillions of dollars mm. that are racking up, like that ain't that ain't nothing to us. You know, we we don't lose any sleep over it. So, um, but I really appreciate you coming up, brother. Uh, you can come up anytime. Really liked your opinions on this, and you had a lot of questions for us that we love to answer. So uh, you can come up anytime. All right, shout out. All right, Lee, you got to get more people in the middle race in here, man. I Where y'all at? Listen, so I, I stop can't draft y'all. Stop being so black and stop being so white. I can't draft y'all. Y'all got to hit the link. Now you're acting up. Y'all got to hit the <laughs> link. He mixed truth is saying, hey, where y'all mix people at? All right, y'all need to hit the link. Represent the mixed people. All right, let's get some more identity politics up in this all bitch. Right, all right, <laughs> where the mixed people at? All right, <laughs> shout out to the mixed truth. Thank you so much for coming up, Pip. <laughs> Where the mixed people at? Where the Asians? Let's go to another. Let's go to Judah. <laughs> <We got> you. <laughs> okay. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm with we you got... this time. Okay, I'm good. This time. I apologize. I just got off work, and I'm an executive chef for Google, so I'm tired today. But I we have been it. watching you. You are my first membership out of twenty some years. I've been watching YouTube. Thank you, Judith. But <laughs> my take on this, right, is going to be that, you know, I could understand them giving her some type of leniency mm -hmm. or whatever if this wasn't a consistent thing. But she knew from the beginning that she was doing wrong. And just like a criminal that she has probably prosecuted in the past, both mm -hmm. of them, is that, okay, you go in front of the judge. If you are, like, you know, your first time, they give you a little slap on the wrist. OK, but if it's the second time, you're going to jail. And mm -hmm. so this is something that she did continuously, knowing that this was not supposed to be done. Like they were not supposed to have an affair anyway. And mm -hmm. while he was married, I don't know what the what the law is as far as um, attorneys, but I do know in the military, you can go to jail for adultery, for sleeping with another man's wife or vice versa. <laughs> So, you know, I think that she, you know, like the other gentleman said, her going after Donald Trump, she should have made sure that all her skeletons were thrown out of the closet yeah. and, you know, basically closed the door on him because now she's in a situation to where like Donald Trump can walk behind this and they're going to, and his attorneys, Ashley, she is no joke. I've been watching her and she has got into Fanny's, you know, behind like many a times caught her in lies you know now she's got terrence on her side and like you said he's not getting nothing out of the bargain except a whole bunch of you know crap thrown at him but i don't believe that she deserves to have any type of leniency she was about to destroy the ex president of the United States. Did she care about where that was going to put him financially, where that was going to put his kids financially? But now she's asking for, you know, the judge to give her the same leniency she wasn't able to give Donald Trump. Mm. And that's just how I feel about it. I don't think that it's a, you know, she's trying to go from a racist point, but it's not racist. It's the law that you that you went to school for that you learned about that you know through all the years that you've been a lawyer all the way up to being a DA you know that your actions were not suitable to take on any case period you're breaking mm -hmm. the law you were breaking the law and you can't go after somebody else when you're breaking the law and expect some type of leniency that you weren't able to give the next person. To me, it's like, why did you go so hard on this case? And, you know, you had so many things following behind you. And then what it looks like is that you and um, Mr. Wade got together and came up with a story, thought it was going to stick. It didn't stick because you didn't sell all your air holes like you did on another criminal case. So mm. both of you are sitting there and you both told the same lie, but you don't know how to cover the lie. So she's caught 
and she deserves to get what she got. And that's all I want to say. All right. Well, there's <laughs> Judith. We got her. Go, Thank you so much. I'm um, glad you came back up and uh, really appreciate your perspective. You can come up anytime. All right. Thank you. Shout Good out to Judith. Judith. Shout out to Judith. Thank you so much. Shout out to David, uh, becoming a new member. Also, Laguna Berry, a new member as well. All right, let us keep it going. Let us bring up Aloha from Alfred. Aloha, how are oh, you hi. doing? Hi, doing well. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for yeah. coming up. What is your take on this whole situation here with Fanny, Nathan, Donald Trump? What's your What's your take on all this? Yeah, I think that uh, President Trump is being uh, unfairly targeted. I think it's a actual, a lot of it is uh, po politically motivated. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just, I absolutely disagree with your other guest that you had earlier. Tamara? Um, Tamara, Tam Tam yeah. I, mm -hmm. I just think that uh, just in terms of standards, you know, there's, that's an important element as far as standards and conduct, especially to hold uh, a constitutional position uh, such as that, so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Can't argue with that. <laughs> Short yeah. and sweet. All right. Well, yeah. listen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Did you have something no. else? That was pretty much it. No, that, that's basically it. I, I just think that it's, uh, I think Fannie Willis and uh, Nathan Wade should be taken off the case. I think they should be disqualified. Uh, there's just so much evidence that's, uh, that's against them. I think that uh, Judge McAfee, uh, he's going to have to make some very hard decisions and kind of take a really bold stance. Um, I know it's not going to be easy because, as you mentioned, both you, you uh, Lead and AV have mentioned, I mean, this is also his livelihood on the line, too, for, for that, for his first opportunity. I mean, he's not going to be reelected. This is his first chance to be elected into uh into that position in, in that judgeship um in the biggest county in in atlanta so uh, a lot rides on his decision i know it's going to be difficult because there's a uh, you know there there's a lot that will go against him especially look at who his opponent is that just cut really stepped forward and he was it seems like he was a an, an 11th hour uh, candidate that uh, that's going in opposition of him for this the judgeship position that uh, Judge McAfee would like to uh, hold on to, you know. Mm -hmm. So we we'll see, but I think that um, I don't know. I I hope he he does uh, do the right thing, and I I feel the right thing for him to do is to dismiss both of them. Uh, and to, uh, you know, I, I don't think that he's going to completely dismiss the case. I think that I agree with both of you in that I think it, it would be reassigned elsewhere if another county would take it up. But I just don't think that uh, uh, Fanny and uh, uh, Nathan Wade uh, conducted themselves in an honorable way. I think it's a disgrace to the office, uh, to the Fulton County District Office. I think that there's, uh, in my opinion, there's, um, you know, a kind of a fraud against the court for their conduct and trying to cover it all up. And just this, this constant evidence just, just trickling in like little, but it's just every <laughs> day. It's just, it's embarrassing. And it's, this is something that's seen, this is, this is a global thing. I mean, it's, it's being seen globally. So yeah. it's just, a, it's very unfortunate. Uh, that mm -hmm. that type of spotlight, you know, you certainly want to shine a positive spotlight on the community there in Fulton and, you know, beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, and all the wonderful people there. But I mean, I just feel her her behaviors and her actions, the the choices, the poor choices that she made, um, just it, you know, there there's just so much that that she's done. I feel she should be disqualified and and removed from this case. Nathan Wade certainly. And it's not going to end there. They have this, the U.S. Senate, the whistleblower uh, mm -hmm. matter. That's that's uh, they've they've uh, subpoenaed for or requested for documents regarding uh, this matter. I mean, and then there's also the Georgia Senate inquiries that's going to continue. It's not going to end there. 
Uh, I, I read somewhere that I think uh, the Georgia Senate is actually going to attempt to subpoena Fann Fannie Willis if she doesn't voluntarily come forward and just kind of answer for for uh, all of these uh, questions that have that have come up, but I don't think it's going to end. That I just think that I think you know this too, uh, lead both of you as attorneys, right? Uh, one of the first things you do is uh, don't dig deeper. If you if you find yourself in a hole, don't dig deeper. And I just feel she should have resigned. And it, it just continues to just all this pushback from. The DA's office, uh, because again, you have you know, she's filed another motion, a last minute motion. I think yeah. she she kind of feels. I think she senses there. She and the office senses the the writings on the wall. I agree that uh, Judge McAfee may very well lean towards dismissing her, but again, politically, that's that's the that's why we're all kind of holding on with bated breath right now. Yeah, yeah, it's so. going to be super interesting. So thank yes. you so much, Alfred. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Alfred, no problem. You can come up anytime. Thank, thank you. you for your perspective on this. Take care. Bye, Alfred. A very informed perspective. Shout out to Keita G. Keita says, if the judge dismisses Fanny from the case, he has to be careful and thoughtful in how he drafts his opinion so as to not inadvertently affect past and present cases brought by Fanny's office. Yes, I think... There was an issue with that saying that Fanny, um, you know, she was not really feeling the 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 cell phone data and how it wasn't reliable and this and that. Mm -hmm. Turns out she is actively using the cell phone data as we speak. So that is so true. And let us take let's take a quick look at this, guys. And again, we kind of mentioned this before. This is our girl Fanny right here. Shout out to Keto G. Now, let me move this banner so we can see her. This is our girl in all of her glory. Now, this was when I guess they had that second hearing and she didn't testify, but she came in and she was listening to her uh, employee argue on her behalf. And she was not pleased. And she, I think she had two uh, post-its sent up to him, right? But it, it talks like about <laughs> mm -hmm, Fulton County Prosecutor Fannie Willis and Judge in the Trump 2020 election case, draw primary challengers. So now they've got competition. It says, um, a progressive Democrat and a Republican who briefly worked in Trump's administration entered the Fulton County District Attorney's race on Friday in an attempt to oust Fannie Willis, who has been the subject of scrutiny and embarrassing public testimony and is awaiting the judge's decision on whether she'll be removed from the case or not. So you have a Democrat and a Republican who have tossed their hat in the ring to run against Fannie Willis, says attorney Christian Smith, who ran against Fannie four years ago, is challenging her in the May Democratic primary election. So this election is coming up, guys, in a few months. Yeah. Fannie is fighting for her career right now. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Courtney Kramer, who said she interned in the White House counsel's office under Trump for three months, was the only Republican to qualify by the noon Friday deadline. The general election is in November. Meanwhile, so you have two people running against Fannie right now, and it looks like the first elections will be in a couple of months in May. Also, the judge... Fulton County Superior Court Judge McAfee, Scott McAfee, who was presiding over the election case, drew two challengers from his nonpartisan race in May. Roberto, Roberto, uh, Robert Patillo, a civil rights attorney, and Tiffany Johnson, a staff attorney for another Fulton County mm -hmm. judge. So the judge himself, his uh, livelihood as a judge is at stake says, while the races like these rarely attract national attention, the intense scrutiny on the 2020 Donald Trump election case has pushed them into the spotlight. Willis obtained an indictment against Trump and 18 others, accusing them of illegally trying to overturn his election loss to Democrat Joe Biden in the state. But those charges have been overshadowed for the last two months by a focus 
on the romantic relationship Willis had with a special prosecutor, one Nathan Way. Willis and Y. Smith, who both worked in the Fulton County District Attorney's Office under then corrupt mm -hmm. District Attorney Paul Howard, challenged their former boss in the Democratic primaries in 2020. Willis beat Howard in a runoff and ran unopposed in the November general election. All right, just the day after she took office, Trump made a rampling <coughs> on January 2nd, 2021. Trump made a rambling phone call to Secretary Brad, uh, urging top or urging Georgia's top election officials, a fellow Republican, to help find 11,780 votes needed to overturn his narrow loss to Biden. The following month, Fannie announced her investigation into possible attempts to influence the Georgia general election. Trump and his allies have decried the investigation and resulting indictments as politically motivated. Criticism. <clears throat> Those criticisms have only increased as intimate details of Fannie's romance with Nathan have come out in recently court in recent court filings and dramatic hearings. Some progressive Democrats have also criticized Willis over the election case, racketeering, sha la 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 la. All right, so the point is, guys, that. Um, both Fanny and Nathan have two challengers for their spot. So people see, they see weakness. They see weakness in, in their position. And this, you know, guys, these damn judges don't really make a lot. Fanny makes more than the damn judge. Right. I mean, this judge easily make it. What's he making? Like 135, 150. Mm -hmm. Fanny testified that she is making 200. Um, so Fanny actually would be taking a pay cut. Let's just say he she wants what Judge McAfee has. Uh, she wanted the the judgeship. She didn't get it. Uh, but now she's fighting for her life in 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 this election that's coming up. The first of which is in May. And you got to ask yourself, you know, do you want do you want to be Look at the judge, for example. Would you want to be this judge? Now, I think the average, the average person in America makes fifty five thousand dollars a year. What's fifty five thousand dollars a year? How much is that a month? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not. It's not a ton of money, especially when you figure these mortgage rates and all this and all that. And I remember when I got on YouTube, man, people used to tell me, "Did you get it?" Yep, it's about forty five hundred. Forty five hundred a month, guys. Put in what your mortgage payment is. What's your mortgage payment? My shit's like fifty eight hundred. That's my mortgage payment. So my mortgage payment is more than the set than than that person's whole salary. I would die. I couldn't. I couldn't do fifty five thousand a year. Somebody put mortgage, Lacey's mortgage payment is 3800 Melissa, Melissa, 1200 Shit, I need to move in with Melissa. <laughs> uh, Taboo, seventeen twenty eight. Deborah, 500 Okay, Deborah lives in a crack house. <laughs> $500 a month? All right, where the hell are you living? Uh, 50, I saw 50 uh, or 5000 3500 All right, so... Uh, Eclectic says 2K. So y'all, actually, y'all are not bad. Y'all are around the, um, it's really anywhere from like 1,500 to, to, to 3,500 is what I'm seeing. So guys, I mean, can you really make it? Imagine you were making $4,000 a month. Would you be able to live? Right. If you were making $4,000 a month. People ask me when I used to, when I, they don't ask me this anymore, but they used to ask me when I started on YouTube, they were like, oh, you know. You've got a lot of good ideals. You got a lot of good knowledge. Why don't you become a judge? Like you don't get the fuck out of here talking about <laughs> why I don't become a damn judge. It's such a hard job. Mm, now it's a government job, but you got a lot of scrutiny. Uh, people are always appealing your cases. 
There's a lot of pressure to move uh, all of your cases in your docket. It's not fun. And especially people who ask me this, they don't understand, you know, the money that I make here on YouTube. Guys, you know, if you are 35 years or older, you would think, oh, I need to be in the profession. I need to I need to be a judge or I need to do this. I need to do that. But no, you, your, your last thought would kind of be social media. But I'm here to tell you as someone who is 47 years old that social media changed my life. And it's not just because of the money. It's because of the freedom. If you're Judge McAfee, you don't have freedom. Judge McAfee right now is in a murder trial. Who wants to spend their life doing murder trials? Right? Why not spend your life doing this? Right? People used to ask me, why don't you become an attorney? I don't know if y'all are not an attorney or judge. Like, let me show you guys how much um, I make on here. And this isn't to brag or anything. This is just to let you know to give transparency. And just to be like, hey, man, maybe I can do this, too. You know, I made a course on how to live stream, guys. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was the number 17th live streamer in the United States of America. Listen to what I'm telling you. There were only 16, 16 channels in the United States of America that received more Super Chats than me. Only 16. And those 16 do not tell you how to do what we do. There's only <laughs> the, the number one person in the nation who teaches you how to live stream is me. <laughs> You're looking at him. You're looking at him, right? And it's it's made so much of a difference in, in my life. You look at this. This is a, a video that I made for, for you guys, uh, for the people in the course. And it just talks about how much money. That, that that I make. You guys know it. I have a course, not this course, but the last course, right? So let's look at my earnings for the last course. And you can see the filter here from January 1st to June 30th, 16,000. If, if we go back, you can see that for half of the year, guys, for half of the year, I made uh, $116,000 for half of the year. Now, this is just on the YouTube. Some of y'all are like, oh, well, you know, how much money do YouTubers make? Mm. I'm showing you. I'm showing you. And what I'm telling you is if you're 35 years or older, you have this opportunity as well. No one's going to tell you to become a YouTuber, but look at how much money I make. And $6. So that's what I made for the first half of this year. This is for half of the year. Some of y'all are going to be like $116,000. That, that's, not, that's not bad for a year. This is half of the year, guys. Not only do, but this is not all the money. You got to have $116,000 plus I have a course. All right. This is the money that I make for half of the year for the course. My earnings for this course were $154,000 for half of the year. Half of it. Why? Because I'm 35 years or older and people want to listen to my perspective. Some of y'all have come up in great perspectives. Y'all have said that shit for free. <laughs> y'all said it for free. <laughs> y'all didn't even get paid. Right. Why not start a channel? And like I did, like AV did, just just come up here and start your own shit. Mm -hmm. 154,000. And that goes on top of the 116,000. Look at my face. I'm a happy black man. I did <laughs> politics. Plus, I got I'm on Rumble uh, making minimum 9,500 uh, for that. So once you take in the the six, the 116,000 on YouTube, the 154,000. Uh, for the course and the, the 57 for locals, guys, for half of the year, it's $327,000. Mm, mm, mm. I don't even have any kids. It's just me. For half of the year, $327,000, guys. And this ain't even all the money, right? Why? Because if you're a YouTuber, you get uh, cash apps, right? You get cash apps. You get PayPal. Shout out to D. Gave me $60 on the PayPal. You do consultations. Guys, I don't really promote this too much. I do consultations. If you have questions about uh, divorce, if you have questions about your kids, about marriage, so many people book me. You could book me on theleadattorney.com. And you talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. We could do it over the telephone or we could do video just like this, a Zoom call, me and you. 
And uh, if y'all don't know who I am, Mucho Gusto, I am the lead attorney, 20 year attorney right here in Atlanta, Georgia, specialized for the majority of those years in divorce work. So, so many men contact me and women too. Hey, this is going on in my marriage. You've been doing this for 20 years. What have you seen? Can we get past this? Should I keep fighting for my marriage? Should I just divorce? If I do divorce, what should I do? What should I file? What should I prepare? How much money am I going to have to pay in alimony and all this other stuff? What do you think? What have you seen over your two decades? Right? But those, those consultations are expensive. None of those are counted. The sponsorships, the brand deals are not counted. So imagine making, guys, this, this 327 right here, that's for half of the year. So you take all of what I made and then drop it down by half. And then a little bit less because, you know, it's not all the cash apps and the consoles. 327000 Guys, if you dropped it again, this is for half the year. Listen to what I'm telling you. 327 for half of the year. You have to half it again to get what the judge made the whole year. To get what Judge McAfee made the whole year, you have to drop my half of my income down by half again. What does that mean? That means the judge made less than a quarter of what I made. Less than a quarter. The judge right now is in a murder trial. Who do you think is more stressed? As I get older, guys, I really see that the purpose of life is to be happy. We could talk about God and pleasing God. We could talk about raising these kids. At the end of the day, if you go 60 years and you're not happy, you've lived a, a terrible life. I'll say it. That's not the way you should have lived your life. I was unhappy for so many years. I did not realize what freedom meant. And not just financial freedom. Attorneys make money. But we don't have freedom. I can, I can go to the damn, I can go to South Africa tonight. All I do is buy a ticket. You see how much money I make. You don't think I can buy a ticket and get a hotel down there? It's freedom. Some of you guys are so stressed out, and I feel you because I was stressed. Some of you guys are worried. Some of you guys' jobs are affecting your relationship with your wives, affecting your relationships with your husbands, affecting your relationships with your kids. I have found happiness for the first time in my life. And I've been happy for a good four years. And it's a happiness that I've never known since I got on YouTube. So <laughs> I made a course about it, about how to live stream. And again, I am the number one live streaming teacher in the nation. Now, all these other courses cost $2,500 and they're four hours long. Four hours, $2,500. How much is my course? Like $550. But there is a sale running now. It's like 35% off or something like that. What's the what's the coupon code? Fanny. Fanny. <laughs> if you want $200 off, use the Q code Fanny. That means you can pick up the course for like 350 bucks. 350. You say, well, Lee, you know, these other courses, they're four hours long. Are your, your course four hours long too? No. My course is 18 hours long. 18 hours long. I put the whole thing in your mouth. I really want you to learn this stuff. All right. And apart from it being 350 bucks, if you use the code Fanny, and apart from being 18 hours, and apart from being the number one course on Teachable, and apart from being it being uh, uh, administered to you by the number one live streaming teacher in the nation, here's the best part. 14-day money-back guarantee. 350 bucks. You have nothing to lose. If you don't like it, just email me and say, hey, man, I ain't like it. You ain't got to give me no excuse. You ain't got to give me no justification. You ain't got to give me no reason. Just say, I didn't like it. Email you right back. Boom. There's your full refund. Not a 50% refund. Not a 75% refund. Not a 99% refund. 100% refund. No questions asked. And the kicker is, here's how you know it's a good course. How do you know it's a good course? How do you know it's a great course? This right here. Guys, I'm black. <laughs> I'm black. If my And I've sold over a thousand of these courses. If my courses were bad, you would have heard about it. 
You would have heard people in my community make videos. All oh, the lead attorney is a grifter. The lead attorney is a thief. He's a grifter. He's selling all this snake oil. Guys, you have not heard one negative thing about my course. Not one. Everybody loves my course. And if you don't, just email and say, I didn't like it. Bam, there's your money back in full. So go ahead. Y'all see how much money I make. I'm, try I'm not trying to hit y'all over the head with $2,500. I can't spend the money that I got, to be honest. I ain't got no kids. Go ahead and try it if you're not happy. If you're happy, don't buy the course. Jesus Christ, don't buy the course. Keep doing what you're doing if you're happy. But if you feel like something is in your life is missing and you feel like you want to make a change and you're 35 years or older, try it. The link is in the description, guys. It's the first link. Just try it. Money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose. 350 bucks if you use the code. All right? Try it. Also, you can gift it. If you've got a son or a daughter, if you've got a friend, a cousin, gift them. You've got a husband or wife. Gift them the course. So many of these courses sell as gift. There's a little checkbox that you check for gift. Bam, just check it. It's all you got to do. It would, if someone would have gifted me this course, it would have been the best gift I would have received in my life because you see how much money I make from this. You see it. All right. So check out the course, guys. If you're not happy, you need to change something or you will never be happy. The only way to change something is to change something. That's the only way to change something. And $350 is a very minimal change, if we're going to be honest. All right. Let us keep it going. Let us keep it going. Let us bring up Derek. Derek Smith, how are you doing, brother? How are you? Lead attorney. AP to the seventh. Good to see Hi. you. Good to uh, see you. Uh, yes. Kind of what is your take on this whole Fanny situation here? Well, um, here's the thing. Both Fanny and Trump are elected. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't get that. What They didn't get there. You know, the straight and narrow, they know how to sidestep a landmine or two. They know how to kind of maneuver. You know, the best and brightest don't always make the top officials. So we, we got to remember, you know, they, they learn how to sidestep a landmine or two. So the, the, the problem, and this is an unpopular opinion about the whole case, is that it doesn't matter what you believe. It matters what you can prove. A hundred percent. So the problem is, is that, yeah, it looks bad. It looks like people and people perjure themselves all the time on the stand. But if you can't prove that Fanny got a direct benefit, you know, it's just conjecture. It's just speculation. Well, you know, Nathan Wade, he paid for this. There's no paper trail. No paper trail. What do you got? It's just your word. They said they paid it in cash. There's nothing that says they can't prove they didn't pay it, pay it in cash. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the what's the argument? So uh, I, I know it's very unpopular opinion. Most people have made their mind up. But I mean, if you just look at the, the pure facts on it, it's hard to prove where the money went, if the money was ever given as a gift. And, that, and that's the basis. You know, this, it's the appearance, possibly, of impropriety. You know, the judge has a hard task up ahead of him because, to be honest, the, if, if they're looking just to disqualify based upon what's occurred, you know, you could remove Nathan Wade. I think that's probably the one no one's going to have an issue with, you know, remove Nathan Wade. Uh, but as far as uh, Fanny, the, you, I don't think anybody should lose a license except for Terrence. Yeah, good Lord. He should lose his license, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Jeez. Nathan, but Nathan and Fanny, you know, just because you say something that's, you know, you can't prove it's true or not true that you can't lose your whole license or your whole livelihood over something like that. They should do it the same way they do Trump. Just give it a significant, hefty financial fine. Mm. You know, so it, 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 could, it could be crippling. It could be, you know, monumental. But don't don't take away their license. You send a message and say, hey, maybe we'll suspend you for like a year. And, you know, you have to pay back two hundred thousand dollars, you know, but be fair. Be fair about the whole thing. But they can't get slaps on the wrist. Unfortunately, it's too public. Too public. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so what do you think is going to happen to the case in general? Uh, do you think uh, they're going to get disqualified or what do you think the judge is going to do? Is the judge going to keep them on it? So here's the problem with it. I think 
the case technically has nothing to do with why they're here now, to, to be honest. It's the impropriety. So the case was going on fine before any before Terrence snitched. And, and people seem to forget that. So the the problem is, is that Trump wins either way. You know, if if she gets them, if Fannie gets demolished in public opinion and they remove the case, he wins. If they don't remove the case and they just move to somebody else and they dismiss it, still wins. So mm -hmm. it really doesn't it really it, it, it doesn't really matter, uh, to be honest, to, the, the best outcome would be, hey, to, re to remove all impropriety, we we'll just move it to someplace else and, you know, kind of wash your hands of it. And somebody says, yeah, we're going to run with it or not. I mean, that's that's kind of like that, that, to get rid of the stench around it. That's what that's probably what the judge has to do at this point. Interesting. Yeah, we'll see what the judge does. Everybody's going to be waiting. You know, there was speculation that the judge set out the the drafting of his order for two weeks to kind of um, not allow people to enter the race, knowing what he had ruled in the case. But now two people have already come against him. So. We'll see if we get the order earlier now. There's no real reason to wait. So thank you so much for coming up, Derek. Really appreciate it. You can hit the link anytime, brother. Thank you. Hi, AV, you're the best. Oh, shout <laughs> thank out you. to Derek. Shout out to Kimberly C., who has become a new member. Thank you, Kimberly C. And shout out to Dub. Thank you so much, Dub. Dub, right. What does he say? Says, what about Fanny threatening Terrence? Could mm -hmm. that be considered witness tampering? And with all the snitching Terrence doing, still didn't get to test them double E's, okay? <laughs> he probably looking for a Trump cabinet position right now. Yeah, man. He <laughs> Terrence is the most down bad person in this whole situation. You are exactly right. You are exactly right. Um, shout out to, uh, to Linda. Linda Robertson says, I enjoy your show. Y'all are too funny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Linda. We got Avris. Avris says again. Thank you so much. Avris says, why don't they argue political gain more? Regardless of the trial outcome, she's SCOTUS if Biden wins because she brought this case. All the more reason to hire the BF campaign is the goal, not conviction. All right. Man, wouldn't that wouldn't that be crazy <laughs> if um, if Biden put uh, if Biden put Fanny up for the for the Supreme Court of the United uh, States? It would be nuts. That would be insanity. Yes. Um, shout out to Julie O. Uh, Julie, shout out Julie O. Man, Julie O. Is kind of aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of aggressive, but thank you so much for for uh, supporting. Do you got any uh, cash apps in there? I do. Shout out to Sierra. She sends fifty dollars. Sierra, thank you. No comment, yeah. no question. Pure love of the game, Sierra. That is super generous. Thank you so much. I always appreciate the support. And earlier, lead when you were talking about your course, mm -hmm. I saw a few people ask um, if I've taken it. I've taken both of them, guys. Like oh. I would not have learned anything about YouTube without this guy right here. So you're in really, really good hands. And I think, do you, are you still running the bundle where they can buy both? Yeah, so we have the bundle, guys. So the bundle, you get to double up. You get a little bit of a double dip because you got the beginner's course and the advanced course. The bundle, you get both courses for a discount. And then if you use the Fanny discount, man, you're, you're, you're stealing from me a little bit. Right? <laughs> you're stealing. You're robbing me. All right. So you can do the bundle deal and put the $200 discount on top of that. And you really want both because you're not going to be ready for the advanced course when you buy the beginner's course. You need to get all the beginner's course first. But the advanced course is really where I teach you how to get, you know, all of the money. All of it. Um, and, you know, shout out to Rick James, for example. Rick James says, surprise, you haven't been covered on Vlad. This is what y'all don't know, man. I've worked with the best. I've worked with the biggest. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all are just finding me. I've been on Vlad TV twice. Vlad got about yeah. 50 episodes cut up of me on there. Mm -hmm. I've been more work with uh, Vlad, worked with uh, Corey Holcomb. Lord knows I've worked with uh, Kevin Samuels. Um. Abbott and Preach, Destiny, some of the biggest people on YouTube, guys. So y'all are looking at somebody who's been around the block. I know some of y'all are just finding me. 
But y'all don't know I've been in the game a while and um, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm pretty good. And it's super helpful when I have a co-host like this who has helped me tremendously along the way. So y'all go um, subscribe to her as well. But yes, you can use the bundle. The bundle is cheaper if, as, than, if, than if you buy both uh, courses separately and you can put the $200 discount on top of the bundle. So thank you so much for that, guys. And y'all are snapping up the courses. Big shout out to Avery. Shout out to Avery S. Just bought the course. Thank you so much, Avery. And shout out to Bajja. I hope I'm saying that right. Shout out to Bajja. Bajja as well just bought the course. Thank you so much, Bajja T. And also Avery S. More than 1,000 courses sold, guys. Go ahead and snap it up while the fanny thing is still active. All right. Um, shout out to Shantae. He says, love your channel. AV is a cutie pie, man. Y'all be loving AV. <laughs> have Portuguese, have black, man. Y'all could not get enough of this light skin. Girl, shout out to AV. Uh, not only beauty, however, also an extreme amount of brains. Excellent content creator in her own right. Huge banking executive. Your girl get paid, all right? She is high <laughs> value. She don't even want to say it, man. She don't even want to say it. She got a whole life outside of this, all right? She is high power. She don't ever tell y'all, but she's a super, super high power. Shout out to Coffee Black for becoming a member. All right, guys, we've been on this damn thing four and a half hours. Shout out to everybody in the back. I uh, really appreciate y'all coming up. Uh, let me bring up Tamara for tomorrow for the last word. Y'all doing us so damn dirty in there. All right. Tomorrow. Am I saying it right? Tomorrow? It's tomorrow. It's migraine tomorrow. Okay. Migraine tomorrow. Oh. All right. Migraine tomorrow. <laughs> you know, did you want to uh, give a quick response, you know, to anybody in the chat? Did they have a good question for you or anything? Or did you see anything interesting? Well, as my son says, haters going to hate, but potatoes going to potate. Okay, but no, um, no. <laughs> All right. All right. We but, uh, um, I'm gonna stay. I would, you know, I mean, I had supporters on here as well. Ed, you know, the other gentlemen. I mean, they basically felt the same way I did. It's like Nathan needs to go, give Fanny, you know, the chance, but she definitely needs to still apologize. It's tomorrow, <laughs> but um. Yeah, somebody would say I was looking at the comment, but no, I, I still stand by not prejudice. So I think someone said prejudice, a racist, and I'm I'm definitely not racist. You know, we our family is a melting pot, and and I love people, but at the end of the day, like you said, at the end at the end of the day, people are still looking, you know, for people that are like them. It's like okay, who can who are you attracted to? Who do you resonate with? That's what the election is all about. Do you resonate with Trump or do you resonate with Biden? It's who you are attracted to. But at the end of the day, I'm going to stand where I stand. No angry black woman here. I am going to definitely continue to keep supporting. And if she, if it gets to the point where she doesn't apologize, like I said, I would prefer her to, to apologize. And if she doesn't, again, I said before, her ego, her arrogance, I hope that she, if she don't apologize. It don't matter. You still rocking with her. Just say it. I said what I said earlier. You say that again. I said it earlier. I'm still going to rock with Fanny because at the end, why would I be a fair weather person? Why? You don't have to be a fair weather person. You could just realize that you don't have to ride with everybody if they're on some BS. You don't have to ride. I'll be honest with you guys. You don't have to ride with your best friends if you see them on some BS. You don't have to ride with family members. There are times, guys, and I can tell you this is a 20-year attorney. There are times when you need to turn your back on family. True that. You know, it, 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 well, well, if you say true that, you know, well, the, sometimes you have to turn your back on Fanny. If you have to turn your back on family, sometimes you have to turn your back on Fanny. All right. That's all I was saying. Are you, and you are, so are you saying you're turning your back on it? On Fanny? Yeah. 
Listen, I don't want to support anybody. First of all, I don't know if I had my ever back like away from her. Like I'm just trying to support people who do right. That's all I can do on this earth. All right. Okay. If, you're, if you're not doing right, especially in such a powerful position, she is the number one law enforcement elected person in the state. So I again, don't so be she, grace. She, you're, you're th- if a person admits that they're wrong, if a person apologizes and said, look, I messed up, but I am still the person for the job. If a person cannot, if you, that means nobody can be forgiven. Nobody she gets not asked for an apology. She hasn't apologized. That again says she needs to apologize. You, she I'm, will not apologize tomorrow. When do you, when will you get that? She will not apologize. You saw how she was on the stand. She is one. She's getting ready. She's up for an election. She's going to have to apologize in order to save her job. Period. Now, whether it's a sincere apology or. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. All right. <laughs> now, you know, she's going to have to apologize if she wants to keep her job. She's going to have to if she wants to. Would you accept an apology from her if you knew it wasn't sincere? No, I wouldn't accept the apology if it wasn't sincere. Okay, so you wouldn't accept the apology if she wasn't sincere, but if she doesn't apologize, you're still going to support her anyways. I want to have a conversation. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much, Tamara, for coming out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, thank you, guys. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Fanny Gorilla Grip Willis says, Thank you. The reel is back tomorrow. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Guys, thank you guys so much, man. We got John. Thank you so much, John, giving a super generous, super sticker here. Thank you. We got uh, Adewale. I hope I'm saying that right. Adewale says, you, uh, you don't know who to trust. Your worst enemy, Trump, could be your best friend, and your best friend, Fanny, could be your worst enemy. Some will eat and drink with you. Only your friend, Terrence, <laughs> know your secret so he could reveal it. Exactly right. Nathan, it came out at the dang hearing that Nathan and Fan, Nathan, Nathan and Terrence were best friends. Guys, sometimes you have to turn your back on your best friends. You see them doing bullshit. You just can't rock with anybody unconditionally. Now, maybe, you know, if you got a six-year-old or somebody, you got a child, that's different. But somebody 45 years old, man, somebody like like Fanny, 52 years old, why do you need to tolerate the bullshit? Why does anybody need to ride with Fanny unconditionally right. other than, let's say, her father? You know, you were elected here to do a job. When is a company ever roll with an employee unconditionally? Fuck around on a company. They'll fire you faster than your head will spin. Yeah. These companies are ruthless. All these layoffs going on. Right. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you so mm-hmm. much, Adewale. Super, super generous of you. Shout out to the man, the little gaming channel. <laughs> Thank you so much, little gaming channel. It says, Tamara, stop. Stop it. It's not like Fanny stole a candy bar and she was hungry. Why did you take the pound cake? <laughs> Shout out to Bill Cosby. She's the top law enforcement officer. She should never cross the line. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, that's really a great way to end on, guys. I mean, if you if you're the, if you're the number one person, the buck stops with you. At the end of the day, the buck stops with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to MK becoming a new member. Becoming a new member. Uh, what does Fanny say? Fanny say uh, 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 an apology. What is tomorrow talking about? An apology. Apologize these huevos, cabron. <laughs> tu madre. Una disculpa? <laughs> yo? ¿Quién? Yo? Yo me voy a disculpar. ¿Para qué? Yo no hice nada. Me están atacando a mí. ¿Por qué? Por negra. Por mujer. Oh. ¿Eh? Por negra. Soy negra. Y es por eso que me están atacando. Es racismo, chingada madre. Racismo. Disculpas. Mis huevos. 
That's what Fanny is saying. Mis huevos. My fucking balls. <laughs> huevos means eggs, but it also means ball cuts. <laughs> Shout out to, oh my God, we got Rich Turner in the house. We got Rich Turner. Shout out to Rich Turner. What does my man say? If one of the mods could drop the link to Rich Turner's channel in the chat. Y'all know Rich Turner. Excellent content creator. High value man and just an excellent, excellent person. Excellent person. Away from all of these identity politics. Shout out to my man, Wrench Turner. Hit your boy with the $100 spot. God. Oh, my God. Shout out to my man, Wrench. What does he say? He said, hold on, Lee. Now I took the course too, brother. I took the course too. It's legit as fuck. Hey. hey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rich. Somebody write WT in the damn chat. Somebody write WT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rich Turner. Y'all don't know how strong this brother is. Shout out to my man, Wrench, boy. Excellent brother. Excellent content creator. Always supporting me. Always supporting AV. And not only does he support us, but he's an excellent content creator himself. He is. Again, if one of the mods could drop the link to my man's channel in the chat. Thank y'all so much for shouting out my man, Wrench. 5,000 people in here. <laughs> I want everybody to know how strong and high value the Wrench Turner is. Shout out to my man, Wrench Turner. Thank you so much, brother. Do you got any other uh, cash shops, anything, or are you caught up? I am. I have one here from Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie says, congrats on 19K. Don't stop climbing. And Ronnie oh, you said- you got 19,000 subs? Yeah, a few minutes ago. Gee, God <laughs> damn. We've been putting in work. We've been putting in work. Jesus, you just had like 10 a month ago. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I've been working really hard, working hard with you. Um, You're putting killing a lot it on of your content own channel out. as well. Yeah, and this week I think we did three or four videos. So we're getting it done. So thank you guys for the support. And Ronnie, thank you for that. That was really sweet of you. And I appreciate that it was 19 dollars for 19k <laughs> shout out man shout out thank you so much big shout out to kim shout out to the beautiful kim l just bought the course thank you kim shout out to frank frank r just bought the course shout out to frank shout out to thomas thomas e just bought the course thomas e the second that's lineage that's a heritage that's tradition <laughs> Shout out to Thomas E. The second, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Thomas. Shout out to Gregory. Gregory B. bought both courses. Gregory B. bought that bundle. Gregory B. bought that bundle. All right. <laughs> and use the code Fanny. Everybody is using the code Fanny, guys. Thank you so much. Y'all are snapping it up. Y'all see Wrench down here. Wrench is backing up the course. He's cooperating. Thank you so much. Shout out to Christopher. Christopher says, shout out to my wife and the chorus. All right, he's in here with the chorus. Shout out to Christopher as just his wife just bought the chorus. Shout out to Basha. Thank you so much. And shout out to Warner. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really want to thank everybody in the chat. Uh, Y'all have been killing the game. Big thank you to everybody who left Super Chats. Um, I appreciate and we appreciate me and AB, even the ones that are a dollar ninety-nine cents. However, there are a few of y'all who step way out, one of which is right here. Shout out to Wrench Turner, hundred dollars. Big shout out to, to the other ones as well who just went above and beyond. Shout out to ATL and Christy. Shout out to No No Welcome. Danita, Danita Caldeal. All right, shout out to Jim. Ed Clark, y'all saw Ed in there standing up for Fanny, a little bit of supporting your boy, Dub Right Side. All right, Dub Right Side was in there. Now show, now show, now show. 
Uh, y'all see him in the banner right there, stream sponsor. Shout out to LT Harris, the the fit lawyer ATL chiming in, mm-hmm. giving us great commentary. Taylor by nature. He usually come up. Shout out to Taylor by nature. Of course, TLGC, the little gaming channel, always supporting your boy. Not only in streams, he's sponsored whole series. Shout out to Joe Ethereal as well. HVM on deck was a stream sponsor, as well as, of course, my co-host. Somebody write AV to the seven. Somebody write AV, man. Not only is she co-hosting, she's sponsoring. She's doing it all. All right. Thank you so, so much, AV to the seventh, as well as HVM on deck. And a special, 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 special shout out, of course, and I mentioned them before. Let me mention them again to the co-sponsors, Nasho Nabo and the official co- the official sponsor, the light skinned attorney. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Shout out to Nasho, HBM on deck, and the light skin attorney. Thank you so much, guys. We are just trying to follow this for you. Thank you to everybody in the back. We are going to end the, the stream, though. Please come back at, a, at, a, at another time. And again, just cannot tell you how thankful we are. AV, shout yourself out quickly. Let them know where they can find you. Yeah, you guys can find me here at AV to the seventh power on YouTube at the handle below. You can find me also on Instagram at AV7 official. A hundred. I was about to say dot com. I don't know why. Official.com. I'm tired. <laughs> Also, let me get the few cash out. Shout out to Angela. That was loud. Angela sends me $5 on the cash app. Thank you so much. Lisa, Lisa Matt talks. Lisa Maddox says, man, Fanny lying. Fanny is lying. Thank you so much. Shout out to Charles. Charles M sends me a dollar. Says for retainer. All right. Charles got something to tell me. Shout out to, uh, shout out to CN. Shout out to CN. Thank you so much. Says team Maybelline. <laughs> But FTD and FJB, all right. CN ain't messing with neither one of them. Neither one of them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Warren as well, sliding in with the membership. So thank you guys so much. Now, I know we have talked all about these these cases. Me and AV have gone over these motions, these filings with you. Please remember that none of this is legal advice. I am not your attorney. I am the lead attorney, and I'm here to help you lawyer up. All right. Big shout out to uh, AV, of course, and (laughs) high value man on deck, Nacho Nabo, and the light skin attorney. Shout out to the light skin attorney. See you guys next week.